This man is a pervert. He asked the girl to his room and then pressed her onto the bed. The girl's face flushed red from his actions. Her heart beat rapidly. The surprise kiss made her unable to react. Their lips and tongues entwined, inseparable, immediately after. He started to remove her clothes, making her scared and scream loudly. The terrified scream broke the silence of the night. The pitiful girl's name is Liu Duo. In her previous life, she suffered from a strange disease that led to her unfortunate death. When she woke up, she unexpectedly discovered that she had transmigrated to ancient times. After that, she was sold by her grandmother as a child bride to the four Ye brothers. Liu Duo didn't want to accept this reality, so she secretly ran away into the mountains. But everywhere she went, the villagers were looking for her, causing her to be surrounded by despair and helplessness. But just then, the surroundings were suddenly lit up by firelight. In the end, she was still discovered. This man is the third of the four Ye brothers. Being caught naturally meant being punished. Third young master heavily pushed Liu Duo to the ground. She trembled and squatted in the corner of the room. The four people in front of her were the four Ye brothers, and she had the status of a child bride to their four brothers. The eldest brother's name is Ye Yang Mature. A man of few words likes to hunt. The second brother's name is Ye Liu. His personality is unrestrained, facetious, flirts without shame. The fourth brother's name is Ye Ling, innocent kind, the type of cute puppy. Only the third brother Ye Mo has a hot temper. As soon as he rushed over, he pressed Liu Duo under him, stared at her with fierce eyes, then began to take off her clothes. Looking at Liu Duo, who was panicking and scared, Yemo thought to himself, let's see if you dare to run away again. The next day, as soon as it was dawn, fourth brother gently called Liu Duo to get up for breakfast. But when he saw the bright spring scenery in front of her chest, fourth brother was very surprised. He didn't expect Liu Duo to sleep naked. Immediately, fourth brother's face turned red. At his age, he had never seen such a sight. His hands trembled, and he accidentally dropped the bowl in his hand. When Liu Duo was dressed and came out, fourth brother came to call her for breakfast again. Just then, Liu Duo suddenly had a bad stomachache. Seeing this fourth brother, was extremely frightened and hurriedly asked her what was wrong, but Liu Duo was in so much pain that she couldn't speak and immediately went to the outhouse. Fourth brother saw that she didn't come out for a long time and thought that she had fallen into the outhouse pit, so he anxiously ran over and knocked on the door. Liu Duo asked him to find a woman to come and help her. She was in a hurry, but fourth brother said, I can't leave. Third brother told me to come and look after you. Liu Duo had no choice but to tell him that her aunt had come to visit. Hearing this fourth brother was very surprised. Your aunt, when did she arrive? Looking at this idiot, Liu Duo said angrily, I have my period. Hearing this, Yiling immediately blushed. I see, and immediately ran away. Looking at his back as he walked away, Liu Duo thought to herself, ancient people are also silly and cute. A moment later, Ye Ling brought something, saying that he had borrowed it from Third Ant. It was the first time Liu Duo had seen ancient sanitary pads. She hesitated for a long time before figuring out how to use it. When she came out of the outhouse, her legs were numb, and in her carelessness she accidentally tripped over the door frame. Fortunately, fourth brother was quick-witted and immediately helped her into his arms. It was the first time she had seen fourth brother at such a close distance. He was unexpectedly quite handsome, and his personality was also gentle. After that, fourth brother said he would take her to breakfast, but when they they entered the room in Naim. She looked at the mottled walls and thought to herself, this house is so poor. Fourth brother brought her breakfast and said that she had fainted from fear last night, so third brother had taken off her clothes. Lu Duo thought to herself, no wonder she was naked when she woke up this morning. But when she looked at the breakfast in the bowl, she stirred it for a while but found no food, only water. Forget it, I'll just eat it. After that, she asked fourth brother to take her for a walk after she had finished her breakfast. Just then, third brother ran over and carried Lu Duo on his shoulder and angrily spanked her. You want to run away again? You must not know how to write the word formidable. Liu Duo was frightened by him and immediately said, I have my period, don't mess with me. Third brother is handsome, but he is also a violent maniac. Fortunately, fourth brother spoke up for her, so she was able to avoid a disaster. Fourth brother put her down, but accidentally caused Liu Duo's clothes to slip down. The spring scenery in front of her chest was revealed. Third brother blushed immediately, and his heart pounded violently. Liu Duo noticed that third brother's eyes were a little strange, and immediately scolded him for being a lecher. After that, the three of them started to have breakfast. Fourth brother considerately picked up food for her. Liu Duo searched the bowl for a long time, 
and only found two pieces of vegetables. She thought to herself that this family is so poor. It seems that the urgent task at hand is to help these brothers get rich and out of poverty. As a modern person who has traveled back to ancient times, how can Lu Duo eat such simple food? She sighed. Hearing the sound, third brother immediately became angry. If you can eat it, eat it. If you can't eat it, get lost. Unexpectedly, third brother scolded her. Liu Duo was stunned on the spot. If the tigress doesn't roar, do you think I'm Hello Kitty? Immediately, third brother's face darkened, thinking to himself, a man should not argue with a woman. He angrily carried his hoe and went out to work. Soon it was evening. Just as Liu Duo was about to take off her clothes to go to bed, third brother came in without knocking. Seeing that she was almost seen naked, Liu Duo was very flustered. Third brother said, it's not like I haven't seen it before. Last night, I was the one who took off your clothes. After that, he prepared to wash her face. Liu Duo blushed and wanted to wash her face herself. But third brother suddenly put down the foot bath, then used his hand to lift Liu Duo's chin. At this moment, the overbearing third brother suddenly became more gentle than ever before. He spoke in a soft and gentle voice. Can't you be a little more obedient? Seeing him like this, Liu Duo's face flushed, thinking to herself that third brother is quite handsome when he's not arguing with her. Immediately afterwards, third brother approached Liu Duo. He said that there were only two rooms in the house. Last night, you slept with me tonight. It's fourth brother's turn. He said this, but his actions became more and more daring. Seeing that third brother was too evil, Liu Duo immediately pushed him away. She said in a wrong tone, Why can't I sleep alone? The corner of third brother's mouth curled into a smile. Have you forgotten that you were sold here? Your existence is to serve our four brothers. Hearing this, a look of panic crossed Liu Duo's young face. Then third brother threatened her again. If you still want to run away, I will really break your legs. Seeing that third brother always used violence to threaten her, Li Duo threw a pillow at him and asked him to get out quickly. Fourth brother was a shy boy and knocked on the door before entering the room. When he entered, he saw Li Duo sitting on the bed in a daze. Her immature face was flushed. Unexpectedly, this silly fourth brother was preparing to sleep on the floor and said that because he had just gone to the toilet, he smelled bad and was afraid that she would hate him. Hearing this, Li Duo thought for a while. In her previous life, she was also gossiped about by her classmates all day long because she smelled bad. Thinking of this, she suddenly hugged fourth brother. Two of them were really alike. Fourth brother's heart skipped a beat when he was touched by the soft thing behind him. Seeing that he didn't say anything for a long time, Li Duo suddenly realized something, and she immediately stepped back in embarrassment. Immediately, fourth brother suddenly became dispirited. After that, the two of them started to go to sleep. Fourth brother had no experience with this. He was so nervous that he couldn't sleep. Liu Duo on the other side was also nervously waiting. After waiting for a while, she finally fell asleep. While she was sleeping, the bed suddenly shook violently. Liu Duo was very surprised. She wondered if fourth brother was masturbating. The next morning, a man's hand reached out to tease Liu Duo. This man was the second brother of the Yi family. At this time, Liu Duo was still dreaming. She thought her mother was calling her to wake up and immediately hugged second brother's hand to her chest. Second brother was stunned by her action. Obviously she was so young, but the feeling in his hand was really hard to describe in words. After that, second brother teased Liu Duo again and said in a teasing tone, it's time to wake up my lazy little pig. Liu Duo opened her eyes and saw second brother's handsome face right in front of her. This scene made her blush. After waking up, she left the room. Suddenly she heard a noise coming from somewhere and looked down. Unexpectedly, Ye Yang had returned from hunting. The villagers all came to him to buy wild geese. Liu Duo's eyes were fixed on Big Brother. Her face suddenly flushed. She thought to herself, the Yi family's genes are so strong. If this person were born in modern times, even G Dragon would be defeated. Today was Thursday. Ye Lang had to deliver meat to his grandmother's house. He asked Liu Duo if she wanted to go with him. Hearing this, Liu Duo was naturally very happy. Finally, she could see the outside world. Because in her previous life, she had always been lying in a hospital bed, and before she could go out to see the world, she had died of illness. Under the warm sunlight, a flower bloomed as if it were smiling. Lu Duo picked it and put it in her hair. She ran briskly across the field, 
Following the direction of the warm spring breeze, her young face was full of joy and delight. Seeing this scene, fourth brother suddenly blushed, couldn't help but be stunned. Such a dazzling young girl. Was she really the Lu Duo he knew at the beginning? In a moment, Lu Duo suddenly grabbed fourth brother's hand, pulling him to run across the field. At this time, they ran past two elderly ants in the opposite direction. Seeing them, an ant couldn't help but point and point behind their backs. The baseless guesses of the elders were clearly heard by fourth brother. He was worried that if the two of them continued to hold hands, it would not be good for her reputation. So he told Lu Duo not to hold his hand anymore. But as a girl who had traveled through time from modern times, Liu Duo naturally didn't pay attention to the gossip behind the backs of these ancient people. Anyway, no matter what they said, she wouldn't lose a piece of meat. Hearing her answer, fourth brother couldn't help but be stunned. He didn't know why Duo Er had changed so much overnight, but he liked the current her very much. After a long while, the two of them finally arrived at the third aunt's house, just as she was feeding the chickens. Liu Duo had never seen chicks before, so she immediately bent down to carefully observe these round-headed animals. Seeing her like this, the third aunt smiled. Why does this little girl look like she has never seen the world? After that, fourth brother gave the pork to the third aunt. The third aunt, with a kind face, refused for a while, but how could she win against the young man? After that, Ye Lang and Liu Duo bid farewell to the third aunt, because he still had to teach Liu Duo how to farm. On the way, fourth brother told her, brothers of the Yi family were very grateful to the third aunt. If it weren't for her help, perhaps the four brothers would have died of poverty long ago. Liu Duo hoped that fourth brother would forget the past, and also said that we can also raise chicks. The implication is that while there is life, there is hope. Hearing her words, fourth brother laughed happily, but at this moment, Liu Duo seemed to hear third brother's voice, so she turned her head to look Kange. Sure enough, third brother had just finished farming and was on his way home. But wait a minute, why was there a girl next to him? Was third brother dating her? At this moment, the girl stood beside Yemo with a shy face. Unexpectedly, immediately afterwards, she suddenly rushed into third brother's arms, her face as red as a jujube, looking as if she couldn't wait to marry third brother immediately. Next, she put on a pitiful expression, pretending to have sprained her ankle. She grabbed the hem of third brother's clothes, pulling up her skirt and wanting him to see her wound. She thought to herself, relying on her beauty, third brother would definitely fall for her. Unexpectedly, Yemo didn't care about her at all. He just said indifferently, I'm just playing with you. At this moment, Lu Duo was still jealous of third brother. She asked fourth brother who the girl was. Fourth brother replied, that's Li Chun Mai. She's Aunt Li's niece. Hearing this answer, Lu Duo was very sad. She grabbed fourth brother's arm and wanted to be comforted. Seeing the actions of the two of them, third brother immediately flew into a rage in broad daylight. What kind of decency is this? Immediately afterwards, third brother immediately rushed forward to separate the two. Liu Duo muttered. He himself was hugging and cuddling other girls and still had the face to turn around and tell her off. Next second, she pulled fourth brother and ran away, making third brother extremely angry. He immediately chased after them. Witnessing this scene, Li Chen Mai was dumbfounded on the spot. She cried out loud for third brother not to go, as if she was crying for her father and mother. Coincidentally, at this moment, she tripped over something and fell to the ground in a very embarrassing way. A surge of hatred suddenly arose in her heart. Li Chen Mai coldly looked at Liu Duo's back and thought to herself that she would definitely make her look good. At this moment, the three of them had already started farming. Liu Duo pulled out a weed. Fourth brother immediately praised her for being good. He also whispered, why don't you rest for a while? Don't get tired, being cared for by him. Lu Duo blushed. I'm very happy working with fourth brother. Seeing her immature face covered in mud, fourth brother gently wiped Duo Er's face. This scene was just seen by third brother. He thought to himself, Lu Duo always smiled at fourth brother, but always looked at him with an unhappy face. The more he thought about it, the angrier he got. He said angrily, she's not a young lady from a rich family. Why is she so tired immediately? Thousands of thoughts flashed through Liu Duo's mind. It seemed like this third brother was mentally ill. She didn't provoke him. Liu Duo said angrily, I'm not doing it anymore. You can do it yourself. Seeing Liu Duo leave, third brother immediately pulled her back. He grabbed Liu Duo's little hand and scolded her sternly. Her hand was so painful from being grabbed by him, she scolded third brother for forgetting to take his medicine before leaving the house today. At this moment, fourth brother ran over to mediate. He distressedly rubbed Liu Duo 
Luo's little hand, looking at the red handprint on her hand, third brother immediately felt remorseful. In the evening, looking at the marks on her hand, Lu Duo sat on the bed aggrieved and thought to herself that third brother was a violent madman. Early the next morning, as soon as Lu Duo woke up, she saw second brother standing beside her. He had heard about what happened yesterday, so he came to ask about little Duo Duo. But Liu Duo was still very angry and didn't bother to pay attention to him. Seeing this, second brother chuckled. He suddenly hugged Liu Duo from behind and said to her in a casual and teasing tone, Little Duo Duo second brother is so wronged. It's obvious that the person who made you angry is not me. Not receiving a response from Liu Duo, second brother moved closer to Liu Duo's face, intending to kiss her on the face. At this moment, Liu Duo suddenly reacted. She forcefully pushed second brother away, but he lifted her chin and looked straight at her with affectionate eyes. Looking into second brother's lecherous eyes, Liu Duo suddenly blushed and muttered the words, Hooligan. In the blink of an eye, second brother's surprise kiss made Liu Duo so surprised that she couldn't react in time. But at the same time, she reacted in time and pushed second brother away from her because this was her first kiss. Second brother sat on the floor with an evil smile. Little Duo Duo is really too cute. Second brother couldn't help it for a moment. Then he leaned over to her again and asked her who she liked among the four brothers. Liu Duo thought to herself, could she want all four of them? At noon, fourth brother brought over lunch, thoughtfully. Liu Duo was secretly happy. Finally, she didn't have to drink porridge anymore. But while she was eating, someone suddenly gave her a piece of braised pork. Liu Duo looked up and was immediately filled with doubt. She unexpectedly saw third brother's face blushing. His eyes were shining brightly, and his expression was as if he was trying to avoid Liu Duo's gaze. Liu Duo thought to herself this. Third brother is quite sensible. He knows how to coax me. Today is Thursday. It's Ye Ling's turn to wash the dishes. Liu Duo wanted to help him wash the dishes, but he refused without hesitation. At this moment, second brother approached and spoke to her in a teasing tone. Little Duo Duo is full of energy. How about second brother takes you to beat up third brother? As soon as he finished speaking, he grabbed Liu Duo's hand and hugged her. His sudden movement made her blush. She thought to herself, why does second brother always get physical? Then second brother took out a chicken feather and said, you understand. A moment later, a frightened scream suddenly sounded from the kitchen, causing the two brothers who were washing dishes to be stunned. At this moment, third brother's face was flushed red and sweat was pouring down like he was taking a shower. It turned out that he was tied tightly to a chair and second brother was using a chicken feather to tickle the soles of his feet. Second brother said to Liu Duo, who was standing beside him with a smile, Little Duo, Duo, do you want to play a little? Liu Duo thought to herself this. Second brother is so cunning. Seeing that Liu Duo was about to tickle him, third brother was so frightened that he immediately said that he would apologize to her for what happened yesterday. Second brother showed a look of dissatisfaction. You surrendered so quickly, what a pity. Immediately, third brother bowed his head and apologized to Liu Duo. Seeing this, Liu Duo couldn't help but be surprised. She didn't expect third brother to really apologize to her. But don't think that an apology will be enough. Third brother immediately became angry. Are you two playing with me? What do I have to do for you to forgive me? Luduo's small face blushed. I want to take a bath. You can heat up some hot water and I will forgive you. Just then, second brother hugged Lu Duo and said, Little Duo Duo, I also want to take a bath. Let's take a bath together. Lu Duo thought to herself, This second brother is so shameless. So she threw a punch and sent second brother flying away. It was already dark and the hot water was ready, but Lu Duo stood still. There was no shower gel in ancient times. Could it be that she could only use water? When Lu Duo was about to take off her clothes, a knock on the door suddenly sounded, making her stunned. She subconsciously Consciously covered her chest with her hand. Liu Duo opened the door and saw Ye Yang. She immediately blushed because eldest brother was not only handsome but also had a great body. But eldest brother didn't say anything but just took out a green object. Looking at the object in his hand, Liu Duo couldn't help but be puzzled. Eldest brother said calmly, slowly saying the three words, hibiscus leaves. Liu Duo still didn't understand after hearing it. After all, she had traveled here from the modern world. Eldest brother continued to say the two words, wash hair. Liu Duo was speechless, she thought to herself. Why does he have to be so tiring when he talks? She looked at the hibiscus leaves in his hand and asked, Eldest brother how to use it. Eldest brother also told her how to use it. Seeing his serious expression, Liu Duo couldn't help but laugh. Eldest brother is so cute. 
But eldest brother suddenly stopped talking. Lu Duo smiled shyly and thought to herself, Don't tell me this. Eldest brother has forgotten his lines. Immediately afterwards, eldest brother opened the door and rushed in, which surprised Lu Duo. He directly pulled Lu Duo into the room and showed her how to use the hibiscus leaves. Seeing eldest brother rub out the foam, Liu Duo's eyes widened. It was so amazing. A moment later, eldest brother told her to bend over, meaning, you know what, and then he started to wash Liu Duo's hair. Unexpectedly, eldest brother with his handsome and resolute face was so gentle. Liu Duo was a little embarrassed after all this was the first time she had ever had any contact with him. But eldest brother replied gently, I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to explain clearly, so I decided to wash it for you. Today is Monday. It's also eldest brother's turn to act. Liu Duo's eyes were fixed on eldest brother. She thought to herself, eldest brother is obviously so handsome, but he's always so taciturn. I have to change him. Then she started to chat with eldest brother. She asked him a series of questions about hunting. Unexpectedly, eldest brother completely ignored her and immediately lay down to sleep. Witnessing this scene, Liu Duo muttered, could it be that eldest brother finds her annoying? In the blink of an eye, it was already midnight. Liu Duo suddenly woke up because she was too cold. It was obviously spring, but unexpectedly it was so cold at night. She turned to her side and understood. It turned out that the person who was warming her bed was gone. Liu Duo immediately went out to look for Ye Yang. As soon as she went out the door, she saw eldest brother taking a cold shower. Under the gentle moonlight, his ten abdominal muscles were unusually dazzling. Liu Duo didn't understand his actions at all. She only saw eldest brother move his thin lips slightly. He said the two words, calm down. On his resolute face, there was a hint of blush. At first, Liu Duo was quite puzzled about the two words, calm down. But when she suddenly understood her small face turned red for a moment, she immediately ran back to her room in embarrassment. The next morning, Lu Duo was sleeping soundly. She looked like she was dreaming of eating braised pig's trotters. Ye Yang considerately covered her with a quilt and left the room. In front were second brother and fourth brother, who were walking towards him. Second brother smiled wickedly and put his arm around eldest brother's shoulder, asking him if he slept well last night. As soon as he heard this question, eldest brother's face immediately turned red. Second brother saw this expression and thought that he was sexually frustrated. Fourth brother told eldest brother that the house had run out of rice. Eldest brother replied, then I'll go to town and buy some rice. Just then, Lu Duo rubbed her eyes and walked out in her nightgown. She said that she also wanted to go to town. The three brothers saw this scene, all of them blushed. At the same time, third brother ran over in a huff and refused to let her go because he was worried that she would run away. Second brother told her not to pay any attention to third brother. If you call me second brother husband, I'll let you go. Liu Duo said that she was too lazy to pay attention to them. Just then, eldest brother spoke in a domineering voice. Little Duo Duo, come into town with me. Hearing this, Liu Duo was overjoyed. She looked at eldest brother with great admiration in her big and lovely eyes. A moment later, Liu Duo was skipping along the path. The spring breeze gently brushed against her cheeks. The birds sang sweetly and the flowers gave off a fragrant scent all around. Everything was so beautiful. But 10 minutes later, it seemed that everything was not so beautiful anymore. 30 minutes later, Liu Duo began to doubt whether her legs were still her own. She thought to herself, why is it so far? She might as well ask eldest brother how much longer they had to go. Hearing the answer, Liu Duo's legs went weak and she sat down on the ground. She told eldest brother that she was about to collapse. Immediately, eldest brother knelt down on one knee, preparing to carry her. Liu Duo blushed with embarrassment and thought, eldest brother is so kind. Her eyes fell on eldest brother's broad shoulders, which were like the Pacific Ocean. A sense of security enveloped her. And so, eldest brother carried little duo, duo, along the path through the fields, which was full of romance and warmth. A long time later, the two of them finally arrived at Ping An Town. Not only did they sell walnut cakes here, but they also sold sponge cakes. Looking at the bustling and prosperous town before her, Liu Duo couldn't help but be amazed. Just then a horse-drawn carriage sped past, accompanied by a shout, the young lady's horse-drawn carriage is coming. Quickly get out of the way. This horse-drawn carriage almost crashed into our little duo duo. She stared at the horse-drawn carriage, secretly scolding them for being in such a hurry to reincarnate. The horse-drawn carriage stopped not far away. A young woman got out of the carriage with the help of a servant girl. Then she went straight into the clothing store. Through the two young women who were talking next to her, Liu Duo learned that she was the young lady of the Cheng family, who came every few days to order new clothes. Moreover, 
The main store of this clothing store was in the capital. Hearing this, Lu Duo didn't know what to say. It turned out that there were already chain stores in ancient times. Afterwards, the two siblings went into a rice shop, looking at the jars of rice on the ground. Liu Duo was very surprised that there were so many different types of rice in this era. Then, she picked up a handful of northeast rice. Looking at the plump, white grains of rice in her hand, Liu Duo thought to herself that it had been a long time since she had eaten such good rice. She turned to eldest brother and asked if she could buy a few caddies of northeast rice. At the same time, Time, the shop assistant was sitting next door yawning, looking at little Duo Duo with an impatient look in his eyes, which implied that this rice was not cheap. Just then, eldest brother suddenly appeared behind the shop assistant, speaking in a low seductive voice. The shop assistant turned around and met eldest brother's sharp, cold and murderous gaze. He almost peed his pants in fear. Feeling as if he was about to be killed by the young swordsman's gaze, he hurriedly ran away. A moment later, his father, who was also the owner of the shop, carried him out, forcing him to apologize to the two of them. Seeing this scene, Liu Duo couldn't help but laugh out loud, expressing that she agreed to forgive him. After buying the rice, the two of them went outside. Little Duo Duo walked beside eldest brother, feeling an unparalleled sense of security. But just thinking about having to walk eight miles home, she immediately became depressed. Eldest brother seemed to see through Liu Duo's thoughts. He resolutely took her hand. Eldest brother will take you home in an ox cart. Suddenly being held by his big hand, Liu Duo's face suddenly turned red. And at this moment, moment under a cherry blossom tree, third brother was on his way home after finishing work in the fields. Fourth brother brought mung bean tea to third brother. Third brother drank it all in one go, the expression on his face gradually becoming unsightly. Why is it so hard to drink? Fourth brother replied. It was made by third aunt. Just thinking about third aunt's help to their family, fourth brother immediately changed his tune. A long time later, the two siblings sat and listened to the ox cart coming here. Fourth brother was overjoyed to see them, while third brother only glanced at them, not feeling happy at all. Fourth brother ran over and carefully helped Lu Duo down from the cart. Looking at the ground beneath her feet, it felt good to have her feet on the ground. Because the ox cart had been very bumpy just now, her butt was in agony. Just then, a loud noise suddenly caught the attention of the two of them. They saw third brother angrily asking eldest brother, why is there a bag of refined rice? Eldest brother was too lazy to pay attention to him. He just slowly said three words. Little Duo Duo ate it. Hearing this third brother became even more angry. What's the point of buying refined rice for her to eat? She's just a woman who knows nothing but spending money. And at this moment, little Duo Duo, who was standing next to them, eavesdropping, suddenly, suddenly felt a hand on her shoulder. Second brother hugged her into his arms and made a shushing gesture at Yemo, then said, little Duo Duo, don't be afraid. Second brother has your back. Duo Duo can eat whatever she wants. Eldest brother and fourth brother also nodded in agreement. Seeing how they were spoiling Liu Duo, third brother was so angry that his whole body was trembling. He picked up his hoe and walked out of the house. Soon it was evening. Duo Duo looked out the door in a daze, thinking to herself that third brother still hadn't come home. She couldn't help but worry. Liu Duo asked eldest brother, where could third brother have gone? At the same time, fourth brother patted her shoulder and told her not to worry. Third brother will come back on his own once he's cooled down. Just then, little Duo Duo was suddenly picked up by Ye Liu. He said again in a teasing tone, let's go back to the room, little Duo Duo. Liu Duo immediately blushed. It turned out that today was Tuesday, which meant it was second brother's turn to sleep with her. After that, Ye Liu carried Liu Duo back to her room. Under the crescent moon, beside the cherry blossom tree, the flickering candle made everything seem ambiguous. In the blink of an eye, the next morning had arrived. Eldest brother put on his gear and prepared to go hunting. Liu Duo chased after him and said, you forgot to bring your punishment. Looking at eldest brother's back, Liu Duo fell into deep thought. She thought to herself that eldest brother really had it hard. Then she ran to Ye Yang, asking him where second brother and fourth brother had gone. Eldest brother said that they were washing clothes by the river, then took Liu Duo's little hand and led her forward. She saw that fourth brother was washing clothes. Seeing the two of them coming, he immediately raised his hand to greet them. Fourth brother asked them what they were doing here. Eldest brother said that little Duo Duo was afraid to stay home alone. 
then turned around and prepared to go into the mountains to hunt. Looking at eldest brother's lonely back, Lu Duo always felt like something was missing in her heart. She suddenly called out to eldest brother to stop and ran up behind him. Eldest brother looked at her indifferently, feeling puzzled. Lu Duo took his big hand, looked at him with sparkling eyes and said softly, you must come back safe. Hearing this eldest brother gently stroked Lu Duo's head, only replying to her with a single word, yes, he also looked at her with a smile in his eyes. But but soon after he turned and left, looking at his back, Lu Duo slowly realized that eldest brother had smiled just now. His smile was so beautiful. Thinking of eldest brother going into the mountains alone to hunt, to support the family of five. Thinking of the packs of wolves that were more ferocious than wild wolves in the deep mountains. Lu Duo couldn't help but worry about eldest brother's safety. She could only pray silently for his safety. And at this moment, a man put his hand on her shoulder. She turned around and saw that it was the flirtatious second brother. Although he looked a bit weak, he cared a lot about little Duo Duo. At the same time, fourth brother also comforted her not to worry. He told her that the wild wolves in front of eldest brother were just ants. Hearing this Lu Duo's face suddenly turned red. She didn't expect eldest brother to be so powerful. Then she rolled up her sleeves, wanting to wash clothes with her brothers. While wringing the clothes, she suddenly stopped because she heard three women gossiping about her. The woman in the green scarf said that Lu Duo was really a shameless woman. The woman with freckles said that she must have gotten some benefits and was reluctant to leave. Then, the three of them laughed out loud. Hearing this, Lu Duo was furious. But on second thought, the lives of these women were nothing but a bit of fun. She didn't have to get angry with herself. But Ye Lu Lu Duo's second brother couldn't listen anymore. He said, I don't know why I keep hearing old hens cluck 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 lately. It really is annoying. The women were furious when they heard themselves being called old hens. She scolded second brother for being poor, deserved to not be able to find a wife. Then she turned her attack on Liu Duo, calling her a shameless woman. Liu Duo was furious. It was true that if a tiger didn't roar, it would be mistaken for Hello Kitty. Liu Duo crossed her arms in front of her chest, called the women over, leaving them dumbfounded. Liu Duo put her hands on her hips and scolded them. You can't eat strawberries, so you say they're sour. I'm in a daze all day long. Life is very comfortable. If you have the ability, you should also find four handsome men for yourself. I'm afraid they won't even want them if you offer them on a silver platter. The women were shocked. They didn't expect this woman to be so fierce. Immediately afterwards, they ran away for their lives. Witnessing this scene, fourth brother looked at Lu Duo with eyes of admiration. At the same time, second brother leaned close to Lu Duo's face and stroked her lewdly. In the future, second brother will definitely not disappoint you. His gesture made Lu Duo blush and angrily pinched second brother's hand and told fourth brother not to learn second brother's bad habits. Lu Duo had just finished drying the clothes when suddenly third brother appeared behind her. This violent and straight man wanted to get close to her in broad daylight. Lu Duo blushed and used her small fists to beat his chest. Third brother had no choice but to hold her back to the room. He couldn't wait a moment longer. He slammed the door shut and threw Lu Duo heavily on the bed. Lu Duo was terrified and kept screaming, just as she was about to sit up. Third brother immediately used his thick arm to press her down. He stared at her with a face full of anger, calling her a scoundrel who ruined their brotherly relationship. Lu Duo was very sad. She had been worried about him all night. But as soon as he came back, he did this kind of thing. She also angrily said, I will earn back the silver I used to buy the refined rice yesterday. Brother, let me go. A bag of refined rice can be exchanged for 10 bags of rough rice. Third brother, of course, didn't think she had such great ability, so he decided to vent his anger on her. Second brother pushed the door open and saw this scene and immediately told third brother to stop. At this moment, the expression on Ye Liu's face was difficult to read. The corners of his mouth curled into a fake smile. He immediately picked up the clothes that Li Chenmei had given Ye Mo to wear, raised his fist that was enough to kill an elephant, with a fierce look that would make a tiger run away, and punched Ye Mo straight in the face. At this time, fourth brother also stood in front of Liu Duo, gently comforting her not to be afraid he and second brother would protect her. In the blink of an eye, it was lunchtime. At this time, Lu Duo was walking into third brother's room to call him for dinner. She thought to herself, although second brother told her not to call third brother, she couldn't let him starve. Seeing that third brother didn't pay any attention to her, she resolutely pushed the door open 
and went in, only to see third brother lying on the bed with his face covered in bruises. Seeing him like this, Lu Duo was very surprised, thinking to herself that second brother's strike was too heavy. If he left a scar on this handsome face, it wouldn't be fun anymore. This time, she saw the Yunnan ointment next to him and decided to apply the ointment for him herself. Third brother was furious when he heard this. I was beaten like this, isn't it? Because of you. Why are you pretending to be kind now? Lu Duo was too lazy to pay attention to him. She took the ointment and pressed it hard on third brother's face. Third brother immediately sat up in pain and couldn't help asking if she wanted to murder him. But after calming down, third brother still accepted Lu Duo's application of the ointment, looking at Xiao Duo Duo, who was gentle in front of him. He couldn't help but wonder. Obviously, he treated her so badly. Why was she still willing to call him for dinner and apply ointment for him? Thinking of this, third brother's face suddenly turned red. A moment later, when second brother and fourth brother had finished eating, Lu Duo slowly led third brother over. Second brother looked at third brother with unfriendly eyes. Why is there a pig's head next to you? Lu Duo was speechless thinking to herself that this pig's head wasn't beaten by you. At this time, second brother's eyes were still a little harsh. In the future, if you bully Xiao Duo, Duo again, get out of the house and live alone. Those words pierced through his body and directly attacked third brother's heart. In the past, it was clearly said that brothers should love each other. Now they broke their oath just because of a woman. At the same time, fourth brother ran over to mediate, telling him to apologize to second brother quickly, and also telling him to promise that he would never bully Xiao Duo Duo again. But as a straight steel man, Third brother naturally refused to bow his head to second brother. Lu Duo glanced at third brother, seeing that he was silent and didn't say anything. She suddenly felt that the atmosphere was very awkward. It was time for her to make a move. So, Lu Duo opened her big round lovely eyes, ran to second brother's side with a shy look, asked him if he wanted to exercise after eating. Second brother hadn't had time to answer. She resolutely took his hand and ran outside. Third brother and fourth brother were stunned when they saw this. At this moment, the two of them were walking on a small path in the middle of the field. Liu Duo stood beside the handsome second brother and couldn't help but blush. Suddenly, second brother put his arm on her beautiful shoulder. He leaned over and looked at her with affectionate eyes. You asked me out here alone, what do you want to do? His thin lips were pressed against Liu Duo's ear, speaking in a gentle and tender voice. He told her second brother is very easy to talk to. Immediately afterwards, he began to take off his clothes, expressing that she could do whatever she wanted to him, and he would not resist. Seeing this, Lu Duo couldn't help but sigh. Second brother, you are so lecherous. Second brother said there's no one around anyway. Lu Duo suddenly thought of something. She might as well take this opportunity to tell second brother about her idea of making money to buy rice. Afterwards, Lu Duo expressed her thoughts, and at the same time asked him if he agreed with her. Hearing this second brother was very happy. Of course I will support Xiao Duo. Lu Duo said, I plan to go to town to find someone to cooperate with. I provide the idea, and she does the work. After all, it's so dangerous in the mountains. We can't let big brother take risks all the time. Then she looked at second brother with clear eyes. Can I start acting tomorrow? Looking at her like this, second brother couldn't help but be stunned. This scene, this atmosphere, made second brother truly happy from the bottom of his heart. He didn't expect that Liu Duo had really cared about their brothers, so he hugged her tightly in his arms. But Liu Duo saw that second brother was moving his hands and feet again, and immediately pushed him away. The next day came quickly. They arrived at a clothing store in town. Liu Duo looked up and thought to herself that the road to getting rich and escaping poverty would start from this moment. So she led second brother and third brother into the clothing store. Liu Duo looked at the handsome second brother beside her. Her face suddenly turned red. Then she turned to look at third brother with an expression of disgust, silently scolding him for being a follower. So she secretly reminded second brother to keep an eye on third brother and don't let him go crazy outside. But as soon as third brother entered the door, he started to get angry. He thought to himself, don't tell me this woman who only knows how to spend money recklessly wants to buy clothes. Seeing this second brother couldn't help but laugh, saying, fourth brother, I know what you're thinking. Then second brother stared at him with a vicious look. You better be honest. Seeing this third brother immediately obeyed. He didn't want to be beaten. At this moment, Liu Duo touched the cloth in front of her. She thought to herself that the material on the first floor was too ordinary. It seemed that the top grade cloth was upstairs. So she decided to go upstairs and have a look. Just then, a voice asked Liu Duo to stop 
only to see a woman say in a disdainful voice, telling her that the cloth upstairs was all expensive. Hearing this, Luduo immediately became angry. Was that person looking down on her? Couldn't she even look? The woman laughed. If you can't afford it, then don't look. But at this moment, a gentle voice attracted her attention. She turned around and saw the handsome second brother. Her face immediately flushed. Second brother put on a gentle and affectionate face and even winked at her. The woman was immediately smitten. She had never met anyone so handsome in her life. Seeing this scene, Lu Duo couldn't help but admire him. She didn't expect that this person would use the beautiful man trick. So Lu Duo successfully went upstairs. In front of her were all exquisite fabrics. Seeing such good fabric, Lu Duo's eyes lit up. But at this moment, second brother put his arm around her shoulder in an ambiguous way. Second brother brought me up here. Shouldn't you reward me? Lu Duo immediately became angry when she heard this. I haven't settled with you yet. You winked at another woman today. When you get back tonight, you'll kneel on the washboard and wash your hands. Just then a soft and low voice sounded. A woman dressed in gorgeous clothes walked over. Her face was very kind, and she didn't show any disdain for them. Perhaps it was possible to negotiate with her. Lu Duo lowered her head in embarrassment. I'm not here to buy clothes. I'm here to find you to cooperate. After that, she began to show her talent. As a modern person who had traveled here, her creativity was naturally far beyond that of these ancient people. Under her skillful hands, the gorgeous little dress on the little white rabbit made it even more beautiful. The shop assistants saw this and couldn't help but cover their mouths and exclaim, it's so cute. The proprietress also fell into contemplation. She thought to herself that this woman was amazing. She was about to take the paper to have a closer look, but Liu Duo of course knew her intention. She would never let her take it. Liu Duo stood up beside her. I don't like beating around the bush. I can provide creative ideas, and your shop can provide silver and cloth, and we can cooperate for a long time. The proprietress was happy to hear this. After all, it was a win-win situation. She introduced herself modestly. I am Qin Feng, you can also call me Xiao Fang. Lu Duo also introduced herself. I am Lu Duo. This is my family, Ye Liu. Hearing this second brother was very moved. He didn't expect that Xiao Duo Duo would directly call him family. Then he held Lu Duo's small hand tightly. It seemed that she had accepted them. At the same time, third brother who was waiting downstairs was starting to get impatient. He thought to himself how many clothes clothes did this woman who only knew how to spend money want to buy. But at this moment, second brother patted him on the shoulder with a smile and told him to go upstairs with him. Third brother dodged. I don't have any money to buy clothes for her. Then he said angrily, don't tell me that Lu Duo caused trouble up there and needs me to go up and solve it. Only to see second brother grab third brother's pig ear and with a giggle dragged him upstairs. At this moment, Lu Duo was negotiating the cooperation. Second brother said to Lu Duo he had studied before and could let him see the cooperation agreement to help her. Hearing this, Lu Duo was very surprised. It turned out that the old Lu Duo was illiterate. Then I will pretend not to know. Then she gave the contract to third brother with a look of disgust. Third brother thought to himself, let me see what this woman who only knows how to spend money can cooperate with others. But when he saw the contract written to divide the profits in a ratio of 20-80, Liu Duo is the one who gets 80. He was immediately dumbfounded. The way he looked at Liu Duo had also changed. Liu Duo urged him to look quickly. She was still waiting to sign it. Suddenly, Liu Duo covered her mouth tightly and coughed twice, almost slipping up. How could an illiterate person know how to sign? Thinking about how she would have to pretend to be a useless person, Liu Duo immediately felt helpless and only heard third brother say indifferently, there is nothing wrong with this agreement, but it would be more appropriate to write down the selling price. Looking at third brother who was serious in front of her, Liu Duo thought to herself that she didn't expect this violent and brutal guy to be quite smart. So the proprietress came forward to express that she had made a slight mistake just now and would now add the selling price. Then the three of them were about to say goodbye. Sister Fang, I'll have to trouble you with the following matters. But as they were about to leave, Sister Fang called them to stop. She expressed, thank you for cooperating with me. You can choose any set of clothes here. I'll give it to you. So Lu Duo chose a set of clothes and went to change it immediately. When she came out after changing her clothes, a second brother call sounded. Second brother turned his head and saw Lu Duo twirling around in a circle, making the skirt flare out. The elegant blue sky water dress gave people a feeling of flying like a fairy. Liu Duo liked it so much that she couldn't close her mouth from laughing. At this moment, second brother gently stroked her head and said, 
Wait until elder brother earns money, and I will buy you seven dresses to wear alternately. But seeing this scene, third brother, who was standing beside him, couldn't help but feel sour. How much money can you earn as a sissy like you? Hearing this, Lu Duo naturally wanted to scold third brother, who told him to bully her all the time. Then they entered the town. Second brother took out his secret fund that he had kept for 18 years and gave it to Lu Duo, and also said that he wanted to go to the port to find a temporary job. Lu Duo didn't expect him to do this because they would get the money from Sister Fang in a few days. But second brother stroked her head, his eyes filled with a smile. He said, that's the money Xiao Duo Duo earned. Second brother is still young. It's a pity not to go out and earn money. Then he instructed third brother to take care of Xiao Duo. Duo, third brother agreed impatiently. Looking at second brother's departing back, Lu Duo suddenly fell into deep thought. But when she looked at second brother's secret fund that had been kept for 18 years, she couldn't help but laugh with delight. Seeing the amount of money inside, Lu Duo was overjoyed. She didn't expect that there would be 30 silver dollars in her member. This was enough to buy three dresses, including the shipping fee. At this moment, third brother said to her fiercely, their family has no money. Fourth brother still has to buy medicine. Hearing third brother say this Lu Duo immediately became furious. She immediately flicked her sleeves and left. She thought to herself, if you don't let me spend it, I will spend it even more. As a straight steel man, third brother didn't know where he had offended her. At this moment, Lu Duo squeezed into the very lively market. When she heard a peddler's cry, she immediately raised her head and saw a young man selling hairpins. She approached, looked at the wooden hairpin on the stall. She didn't expect it to be quite unique. Then she picked one and asked the young man how much it was. He said it was not expensive, only five bows. At this moment, Lu Duo found that the young man used a wooden hairpin to tie his hair. She also wanted to buy some for her brothers. But after looking at it for a while, her mind wandered away, which made the young man embarrassed. He thought to himself, don't tell me this woman has taken a fancy to me. But at this moment, third brother found that Liu Duo was staring at another man. His face immediately turned black with anger. He directly rushed over and pulled her hand hard. The force was so strong that Xiao Duo Duo cried out in pain. Third brother scolded her as he walked, saying that she had no shame. She dared to stare at a strange man right in front of him. She really didn't know how to abide by the rules of women. Liu Duo's hand was in pain from being held by him. Her face showed a look of distress, so she struggled hard to break free from third brother's hand and at the same time scolded him. You are really crazy, who says you can't look at others, and does looking mean that you don't abide by the rules of women? Besides, I was only looking at the wooden hairpin on his head. The sound of the quarrel attracted the attention of a group of gossiping people. Seeing that she had lost face on the street, Lu Duo became even more angry. She told third brother not not to follow her anymore. Third brother was both angry and puzzled. He asked her where she was going and then quickly chased after her. Lu Duo went wherever he went. Seeing that she couldn't get rid of third brother, Lu Duo suddenly thought of a plan. She suddenly ran at full speed. Third brother didn't have time to react. He stood there in a daze for exactly three seconds and then immediately ran after Lu Duo. Lu Duo ran with all her might. Third brother chased after her easily. After a while, neither of them could run anymore. They stood still and gasped for breath. Just then a cry attracted their attention. Someone was shouting, Strongman Du and Beautiful Lu are fighting. Go and have a look. So Lu Duo grabbed a young man and asked who Beautiful Lu was. He said Beautiful Lu was Ye Lu. She had a face like a woman. She was very beautiful. Hearing this, Lu Duo was surprised. Could it be that second brother was fighting with someone? At this moment, second brother raised his big fist and knocked a strong man to the ground. The strong man had a very loud name, Wang Xiao Thui. At this moment, he was lying on the ground crying for help. Just then, Lu Duo ran over and found that second brother was fighting. She immediately stopped his fist from swinging down and said, Don't fight anymore. So second brother decided to spare Wang Xiao Thui's life. Then he pulled Lu Duo and was about to go home. But at the same time, Wang Xiao Thui shouted, Is she the child bride that our Liu Er raised since she was a child? Hearing this, Lu Duo stood there in a daze. She didn't expect him to dare to call second brother Lu Er. Second brother also turned around and replied to him in a threatening tone. Wang Xiao Thui tried saying that again. Seeing that second brother was getting angry again, Lu Duo quickly soothed his emotions. Then she walked up to Wang Xiao Thui with a smile. 
I am the child bride of the Yi family. Is there a problem? Wang Xiaothui touched his swollen face and replied, I want to see what you look like. Are you worthy of Liu er? Hearing this, Liu Duo still smiled and asked him, So what do you think now? But Wang Xiaothui had just said three words. I think Liu Duo unexpectedly scolded him. Who do you think you are? Whether I am worthy of him or not has nothing to do with you. If you like men, go and find someone else. Don't bother my second brother. Witnessing this scene, the gossiping people around were all amazed. Second brother also admired her very much. After a while, the three siblings were on their way home. At this moment, Liu Duo rubbed her sore calves, thinking to herself, when will we finally get home? She was about to collapse. Seeing this second brother was also embarrassed. Because of him, she missed the ox cart. So second brother walked up to Liu Duo, bent down and prepared to carry her home, and at the same time expressed, second brother's strong back can definitely make you comfortable and satisfied. Hearing this Liu Duo was helpless. This can also be considered strong and sturdy. It's really hard to bear to strike down my brother. But now that second brother wants to carry her like this, she had no choice but to reluctantly agree with him. Third brother stood by and saw this scene, and his heart was filled with jealousy. At this moment, Liu Duo asked second brother, what happened between him and Wang Xiaothui? Why did the two of them fight? Second brother said that every time he went to town, Wang Xiaothui would pester him relentlessly, so he beat him up, and at the same time praised Xiao Duo Duo for being very mighty today, helping Gega solve the problem. Hearing this, Lu Duo was embarrassed, thinking to herself that it was all because of her beauty. It was because second brother was too handsome. Not only did women like him, but men also loved him. In a blink of an eye, the next day came, Fourth brother sat alone under the cherry blossom tree in the courtyard, holding the clothes that had been patched hundreds of times and began to sew them again. Just then, Lu Duo walked up to fourth brother and asked, Fourth brother, you know how to sew clothes. Then she sat down beside him with her chin in her hands, thinking to herself that fourth brother was really amazing. Fourth brother said while sewing the clothes, this set of clothes of third brother was torn by Li Chen Mai. Sewing it up a bit, it can still be worn. At the same time, he said to Lu Duo, although third brother's temper is not good, he's not a bad person. Don't be angry with him all the time. Seeing that fourth brother was so understanding, Lu Duo thought to herself that she would forgive third brother for now. But at the same time, she was also puzzled. She didn't expect that third brother who had studied would have such a bad temper. Fourth brother said, Third brother is the only one of the four brothers in the family who has ever studied. Seeing the curious look on Liu Duo's face, fourth brother calmly replied at that time. Eldest brother had no money to go to school. Second brother was like a woman. So third brother had to go to school, and I couldn't go because of my poor health. If it weren't for the fact that I often get sick, the family wouldn't be so poor. Hearing this, the expression on Liu Duo's face gradually became sad. For so many years, it must have been hard on fourth brother's heart. Liu Duo suddenly stood up. She gently hugged fourth brother's face. She felt very sorry for fourth brother's situation. She didn't want this weak and handsome young man to suffer for any more. She slowly approached him, pressed her warm and soft lips against fourth brother's forehead. Immediately, fourth brother's face turned red. His breath became hot. He held Lu Duo's hands tightly and looked straight into her big eyes. The atmosphere around them suddenly became quiet. Then fourth brother gently closed his eyes, feeling the faint fragrance on Lu Duo's body. He moved closer to her lips. But just as their lips were about to touch, second brother suddenly appeared in front of them with a smile on his face, which made Lu Duo Duo and Ye Ling blush with embarrassment. They didn't dare to turn around. At this moment, Lu Duo rubbed her hot face, thinking to herself why did she do that. She wondered how she would face fourth brother in the future. But fourth brother was very clever. He told second brother that they were discussing their studies. It wasn't what he thought. Hearing this second brother smiled slyly. Do you think I'm an idiot? Then, he put his arm around Xiao Duo Duo's shoulder and used his slender jade-like hand to support her small face. Then he nibbled on her earlobe. This action made Lu Duo lose her soul. Her body felt like an electric current was running through it. Seeing Lu Duo so embarrassed, second brother said, weren't you very bold with fourth brother just now? Then he gently tapped Lu Duo on the forehead and pushed her against the wall, speaking in a seductive and teasing tone. Fourth brother is still here, so I'll let you go this time. Next time it won't be so simple. But having said that, why did Xiao Duo Duo start to care about third brother? As soon as he mentioned that violent madman, Liu Duo's expression changed immediately. I just want to understand you brothers better. So second brother asked Liu Duo to sit down and drink tea and began to tell her about the Ye family in the past. 
Ten years ago, Father Ye took eldest brother into the mountains to hunt when they suddenly had an accident. Eldest brother ran home covered in blood, begging his second and third uncles to save his father, but they were indifferent. Even grandmother didn't care, they even said, if you want to blame someone, blame your father. It was fate. Later, it was the third uncle's family who helped them find their father, but by the time they found him, it was too late to save him. Three days after father died, the uncles urged grandmother to divide the family property. Father's death was a huge blow to mother, and grandmother treated our family like that. In a fit of anger, mother passed away. Hearing this Lu Duo was also very angry. What kind of family is this? The eldest son had just died, and they wanted to divide the family property, and they even angered his wife to death. But second brother said indifferently, we brothers were just naive children. We didn't earn much money. Moreover, eldest brother needed to get married. Seeing that the expenses were increasing, grandmother hurriedly kicked us out of the house. Speaking of this, second brother suddenly became angry. If we had listened to me and divided the family property earlier, perhaps things would be different now. As soon as he finished speaking, second brother suddenly vented his anger and resentment, crushing the cup into pieces. The delicate palm of his hand was also cut by the sharp fragments. Seeing this Lu Duo was terrified. She carried a basin of clean water, wetted a towel, and carefully wiped second brother's palm, at the same time blaming him second brother. No matter how angry you are, you shouldn't hurt yourself. You're no different from your mother. Looking at the innocent and lovely Xiao Duo Duo in front of him, second brother couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva. He had originally planned to spare her today, but Liu Duo's gentleness at this moment had ignited the fire in his heart. So he took out a bag of eggs and told fourth brother to boil them for Lu Duo to eat. Fourth brother was innocent and naturally didn't know that second brother had other intentions. As soon as he left second brother, immediately lifted Lu Duo's chin, looking straight into her eyes with affectionate eyes and whispered softly in her ear, now it's just the two of us, what should we do? Hearing this, Lu Duo's face flushed. She stood up shyly and motioned that she had to go pour water. But before she could take half a step, second brother pulled her soft hand back and hugged her and sat her on his lap. You tease the fire in me, but you want to run away and refuse to take responsibility. Lu Duo blushed with shame and said, I didn't tease you, but as she was struggling, Ye Lu directly used his lips to block her mouth. Immediately Lu Duo's body softened. Her heartbeat became more and more intense. If you want to see the following content type 1, if you don't want to see it, we'll skip it. A moment later, Liu Duo was kissed to the point of breathlessness. She opened her mouth and gasped for air. Ye Liu told her to relax because the more she resisted, the more men liked it. Ye Lu gently cupped Lu Duo's crimson face, looked at her with deep affection, and said, Xiao Duo Duo's second brother is not someone else. He is your future husband. Lu Duo understood that second brother loved her very much. He cared about her. Moreover, she was no longer a naive little girl. She resolutely stopped being shy and placed her smooth, jade-like hand on his warm shoulder. At this moment, words were superfluous. She was immersed in the passionate kiss. She felt like she was suffocating, but she still wanted Wanted more, along with the tight hug. A moment later, Lu Duo still couldn't bear it anymore. She gasped for breath. Ye Lu also showed a look of not having kissed enough. He closed his eyes and savored the warmth left on his lips just now. As for Lu Duo, she rubbed her crimson face, feeling like she had been tricked by him. She was no longer like herself. It was noon very quickly. Third brother came home after working in the fields. Then the four of them began to eat lunch. Fourth brother brought Lu Duo a plate of fried eggs. Looking at the only fried egg on the table, Liu Duo couldn't help but fall into contemplation. She thought of her wealthy family in her previous life, although it could be said that she ate well and dressed well, but she was very lonely. But now, although life was very difficult, but with them by her side, she was very happy. So Liu Duo divided the eggs into four portions, at the same time saying that she was a good girl. Not eating the delicious food alone, at the same time, she also shared the refined rice in her bowl with her brothers. Seeing this fourth brother was very surprised he hurriedly told her to stop. Liu Duo didn't pay attention to him, saying I absolutely will not eat more than what is mine. Second brother said calmly, this is Xiao Duo Duo's kindness, don't let her down. At the same time, he looked at Liu Duo with smiling eyes, expressing that Xiao Duo Duo's love was delicious. At the same time, Liu Duo served third brother a portion. Seeing this third brother was stunned. He sat motionless for a long while and didn't dare to accept it. Liu Duo held it for too long and her arm got tired, seeing that she was about to get angry. Third brother immediately took the 
bowl of rice from her. Third brother stared at the bowl of rice in his hand, thinking to himself that she was clearly a woman who only knew how to spend money recklessly. Why did she share it with them? But looking at the gentle and warm Liu Duo in front of him, third brother's face suddenly showed a look of guilt. Could it be that he had wronged her? At this time, Liu Duo asked them what they would do in the afternoon. She thought to herself, there was no TV to watch in ancient times. It wouldn't be bad to help them with their work. Third brother said that he would go to the fields to mow the grass in a while, because rice had to be planted in March. Hearing this, Liu Duo immediately said that she also wanted to go. At the same time, second brother also wanted to go with a wicked smile. Hearing this, Liu Duo couldn't help but be surprised. Then she said, while eating your hand is injured, it's better not to go. But second brother leaned over to her ear and whispered, even if second brother only uses one hand, he can still satisfy you. Hearing this, Liu Duo immediately blushed, and you be more serious. In the afternoon, the four of them were on their way to the fields. They coincidentally met Li Chun Mai, coming from the opposite direction. Seeing third brother, she immediately raised her hand to greet them and said coquettishly, I have to go to the fields too. Can we go together? Third brother just frowned slightly and said a cold, um, the colder third brother was the more Li Chun Mai liked to cling to him. Looking at the woman in front of her, Liu Duo thought, isn't this Li Chun Mai who was clinging to third brother last time? A moment later, Later, they arrived at the fields, but looking at the mud under her feet, Liu Duo thought to herself, if she stepped on it, now it would definitely be covered in mud. But she had to try to change herself after all. So she lifted her skirt and tremblingly stretched out her little foot. But before she could touch the water, she saw five leeches swimming in the water. That black animal made her feel sick. Sitting down on the spot, third brother gently caught two leeches. He asked her if she had never seen a leech before. This thing sucks human blood, but it doesn't die. Then he he held them out in front of Lu Duo for her to see. Lu Duo was so scared that she waved her arms and legs. In the end, she didn't go down to the fields because she was afraid of being sucked by leeches. But she was also worried that her brothers would be sucked by leeches. So she shouted to them to be careful not to be bitten by leeches. At the same time, Li Chun Mai heard the sound and turned around to look, finding that Lu Duo was not working. She asked third brother why Lu Duo was not helping. Third brother didn't answer. Li Chun Mai said again, that outfit of hers must be very expensive. She really is a spendthrift. Seeing that third brother was not paying attention to her, she was very helpless. But thinking about it again, third brother's attitude clearly meant that he didn't want to mention Liu Duo. Liu Duo was lazy and extravagant. Third brother must really dislike her. The more she thought about it, the more excited she became. It seemed that she still had hope. Second brother and fourth brother were pulling grass with all their might. Their backs were about to break. Liu Duo was sitting on the bank, making faces at them. It was obvious that she was very bored. So second brother told fourth brother to go and play with Xiao Duo Duo. A moment later, Liu Duo scooped up a ladle of spring water and poured it on fourth brother's feet to help him wash them. Then she expressed that she wanted to massage fourth brother. The innocent fourth brother was about to open his mouth to refuse when Liu Duo grabbed his shoulders, and then she forced him to sit down on the ground. She told him don't move. My skills are very good, I can make you very comfortable. But when fourth brother looked up, his eyes were drawn to the two white breasts in front of Lu Duo's chest. Half an hour later, he suddenly heard a voice. Don't think about anything else. This sentence interrupted fourth brother's train of thought, but he still couldn't help but blush. Then Lu Duo began to massage him. Fourth brother blushed uncontrollably, but after adapting, he was very grateful to Liu Duo. At this time, Lu Duo asked fourth brother, will you sell these harvested rice fields? But then again, the family clearly had rice, but no rice to eat. It must be for sale. Fourth brother replied slowly, the money from selling the rice will be used to buy medicine and uncooked rice. But this time we will leave half for Duo Air to eat. Hearing this, Lu Duo felt a surge of emotion in her heart. She hugged fourth brother tightly. The thought of making money became even stronger in her mind. She swore that she would definitely make sure that her brothers would eat well and dress well, and she would also build a big house for each of them. Hearing this, fourth brother smiled brightly, no matter what the outcome, but this sentiment alone was enough to make people feel warm and comforted. After that, the two of them sat on the grass with their knees bent and talked. Lu Duo asked fourth brother why he treated her so well. 
Fourth brother replied honestly, because you don't despise our poor family. Moreover, Duo Air is the most beautiful girl I have ever met. After speaking for a while, his face began to turn red again, seeing fourth brother being so cute. Liu Duo couldn't help but feel her heart skip a beat. So she moved closer to fourth brother, looking at him with affectionate eyes. Seeing Liu Duo getting closer and closer to him, his face flushed, and he only heard Liu Duo say shyly, so does fourth brother like Liu Duo. Hearing this fourth brother's face became even hotter, his heart pounding in his chest. But at the same time, a bone-piercing pain suddenly appeared in his chest. Fourth brother clutched at his heart, gasping for breath. Seeing this, Liu Duo was very panicked. Looking at fourth brother's extremely painful appearance, she wondered if fourth brother had a heart condition. So she called out to second brother for help. Second brother, of course, knew about fourth brother's condition, but all he could do was pray. A long while later, fourth brother lay unconscious on the bed. Liu Duo stood by the side, her face full of worry and sadness. Seeing this second brother gently stroked her head, fourth brother has taken emergency medicine, there is no major problem for the time being. At this moment, third brother suddenly pushed the door open and entered, followed by Dr. Li. After taking Ye Ling's pulse, he said fortunately he took the medicine in time. I will prescribe a few more doses of medicine for Ye Ling. If you cook the medicine for Ye Ling to drink, there will be no major problems. At the same time, he also worriedly advised, Ye Ling's heart condition cannot be agitated, cannot do heavy work. Why did you let him commit it? The faces of the three people standing next to him gradually darkened. The three of them had not yet had time to reply. Dr. Lee immediately left on the pretext of being busy with work. At this moment, a feeling of shame rose in Liu Duo's heart. If it weren't for her fourth brother, wouldn't have had a relapse. Nit Suddenly, third brother grabbed Liu Duo's little hand and unceremoniously pulled her out of the room. Faced with third brother's fierce questioning, a look of fear appeared in Liu Duo's eyes. She replied, I didn't mean to. I just asked him a question. Hearing this, third brother immediately shouted angrily, ask what? But when Liu Duo said she asked fourth brother if he liked her, third brother immediately fell silent. The conversation between the two of them happened to be overheard by Li Chun, Mai who was standing behind the tree. Li Chun Mai is a fake girl. Seemingly having discovered some movement behind her, Ye Mo and Lu Duo immediately looked back and found Li Chun Mai walking slowly towards them. She said she came to visit fourth brother. Lu Duo thought to herself, why is this girl Mai here? I wonder if she heard our conversation just now. After that, third brother led Li Chun Mai into the room. When she passed by Lu Duo, she deliberately bumped into her and at the same time snorted coldly. Next, she put on a shy face and leaned close to third brother, telling him not to be angry with Lu Duo and hurt his body, and at the same time rubbing her large breasts against him. Witnessing this scene, Lu Duo appeared calm, but in her heart she was already furious, so she fiercely grabbed Li Chen Mai's hand. In pain, Li Chen Mai immediately cried out. Lu Duo asked her, what did you mean by doing that just now? Are you provoking me? Unexpectedly, Li Chen Mai turned directly to third brother, her face showing a pitiful expression, begging third brother to stand up for her. Seeing this Lu Duo became even more angry, thinking to herself that this Li Chen Mai really knows how to pretend. She continued to say fiercely, fourth brother is fine now, there is no need for you to pretend to care. Hearing this, Li Chen Mai's eyes showed a look of sadness. Are you chasing me away? At the same time, third brother turned directly to Liu Duo in anger. You harmed fourth brother and caused him to relapse. Now you want to chase away the guest? You quickly apologized to Li Chen Mai. Liu Duo kept crying out in her heart. Obviously this green tea bitch was wrong first, so she scolded third brother. If you like Li Chen Mai so much, then go with her. As soon as she finished speaking, she pushed third brother away more than 10 meters, then ran and said third brother, you are really hateful. Don't come looking for me again in the future. At this moment, Liu Duo thought about it more and more and became more and more angry. But third brother got angry with her because of Li Chen Mai. But third brother, a straight man, in his terminal stage, of course didn't know why he had angered Liu Duo. Obviously you did something wrong, and yet you say you hate me. It really is as difficult as finding a needle in a haystack to understand the heart of a woman. Seeing the two of them like this, Li Chen Mai on the side couldn't help but smile wickedly. Arguing over a problem is just right. It's best to argue loudly so that third brother will hate her more and more, and third brother will be mine. 
Soon it was evening because fourth brother who cooked the meal was sick and had to stay in bed, so Lu Duo decided to go to the kitchen herself. She rolled up the sleeves of her dress and prepared to show her strength, hoping that fourth brother would like the dishes she made. Lu Duo cracked an egg, preparing to make steamed eggs for fourth brother to nourish his body. Then she stirred the soup in the pot. Unfortunately, their family was too poor. They could only make pea and scallion soup. Just then, second brother Ye Lu smelled the fragrance and entered the kitchen. Seeing that Lu Duo was making dinner, he hugged her small waist from behind. Seeing second brother Lu Duo's face suddenly turned red, second brother, why did you come in without making a sound? After that, she scooped up a spoonful of soup and asked second brother to taste it and see if it was good enough. After second brother drank the soup, he immediately smiled wickedly and rubbed against Lu Duo. This soup is so delicious. His actions made Lu Duo's heart skip a beat. But right now, she was not in the mood for that. She just hoped that fourth brother would recover quickly. Hearing this, second brother gently stroked Lu Duo's head. He told her not to blame herself because Ye Lang's illness was congenital. Sometimes it would relapse. At this moment, Lu Duo thought to herself that she had to adjust her mood quickly. She couldn't let her brothers worry about her. After a while, Lu Duo carried three meat dishes and one soup dish to fourth brother who was lying on the bed. Seeing her coming, fourth brother hurriedly sat up. Lu Duo put the food on the table. I'll go back to my room first when you're finished eating. Call me to clean up the bowls and chopsticks. Just then, fourth brother suddenly pulled Lu Duo back. His sudden movement made Lu Duo blush and her heart beat faster. Fourth brother slowly said, didn't you ask me if I like you? There was a hint of embarrassment in his voice. As soon as he finished speaking, he grabbed Lu Duo's hand tightly, then looked at her with affectionate eyes. At this moment, both of their faces were flushed. Fourth brother looked at the lovely and charming Lu Duo in front of him. His heart also began to beat faster. But just as he was about to speak his mind, Lu Duo grabbed his hand again, telling him to eat first and talk about other things later when they had time. Because she was worried that fourth brother would get excited and have a relapse, she immediately ran out. Looking at Lu Duo's back, fourth brother's emotions were very complicated. He couldn't help but feel depressed. Why was she avoiding him? Was it because she found him too useless? At this moment, second brother, who was as handsome as a jade tree, was leaning against the door of the room. Seeing fourth brother hanging his head in dejection, he smiled and said, If you have any troubles, you can tell second brother. Ylang frowned and said in a low voice, Brother tell me, am I really useless? Hearing this second brother immediately went over to comfort him and said, Our fourth brother is kind and hardworking. How can you be useless? But now Yilong's mind was filled with Lu Duo's figure. He still didn't know why Duo Air was avoiding him. Second brother gently let Yilang lean his head on his shoulder. He told him, Xiao Duo, Duo is just worried that you will have a relapse. That's why she is avoiding this topic. This just goes to show, in Lu Duo's heart, you are very important. Hearing this, the disappointment in fourth brother's heart gradually dissipated. Second brother gently lifted his small face, telling him that he had to learn to control his emotions and not let anything happen that would worry his family. Hearing this fourth brother suddenly understood, he told himself that he had to control his emotions and stay with his family for the rest of his life. In the blink of an eye, the next day arrived. Third brother rolled up his trousers and was about to go down to the fields and asked Lu Duo to look after his shoes. At this moment, Lu Duo muttered to herself. She didn't know what had gotten into this violent madman. He kept insisting that she go to the fields with him to pull weeds. After that, Lu Duo sat on the grass and recalled what had happened yesterday. Although she had been very angry yesterday, she was not so upset that she was annoyed by that hypocritical woman. When she saw third brother working hard and only asked her to look after his shoes, which no one would bother to take, she wondered if third brother knew that he had been wrong. Just then, Li Chen Mai and her good sister Ma Dong Mai came over. As soon as Li Chen Mai saw Lu Duo, she immediately said to Ma Chen Mai, that's the child bride that third brother bought back. She's lazy, extravagant, and impolite. Ma Dong Mai was very surprised when she heard this, telling Li Chen Mai not to joke with her. But their conversation was heard by Lu Duo. She thought to herself, these two are here to make me laugh. Who wants to play with you? Then Li Chen Mai shouted to third brother, I can help you weed. You're working so hard, but you don't see the people who are free to help you. Third brother turned to look at the beautiful Lu Duo beside him and then looked at his hands covered in mud, thinking that her skin was so white, it shouldn't be stained with such black mud. At this moment, Ma Dong Mai said indignantly, your child bride is too lazy. The children in the neighborhood 
know how to help with the farm work. Hearing this third brother just said indifferently, if she doesn't want to do it, then she doesn't have to. It doesn't matter. The two of them heard third brother being so tolerant and they became even more infatuated with him. At this moment, Luduo muttered to herself and the little flower, oh flower, there are some people who just love to talk too much. What if in the future, because they talk too much, they can't marry anyone? Hearing this, Li Chun Mai immediately vented her anger for her good sister. But Ma Dong Mai was provoked by her words and immediately scolded Lu Duo. She was a woman who had been sold as a child bride. She was the one who wouldn't be able to marry. Lu Duo still didn't pay any attention and muttered to herself, she was so fierce, I'm afraid she won't be able to find a husband in her whole life. Then she twirled the flower in her hand, but I'm different. I have four elder brothers who are both handsome and powerful. I'm not worried that I won't be able to marry. Her words were like a sharp knife that pierced the hearts of the two of them, and their faces immediately darkened. Third brother heard Lu Duo praise him for being handsome and powerful, and his face suddenly became embarrassed. But immediately afterwards, Lu Duo said again, Little three, stay away from those people. They only know how to sow discord. Hearing herself being called Little Three by Lu Duo, Ye Mo suddenly became angry angry, and he started to get angry with her again. Lu Duo took second brother's hand with both of hers and looked at him with big round eyes, and then began to wipe his hands. Seeing that the wound had completely healed, she pouted and muttered, don't do anything so stupid in the future. Looking at little Duo, Duo, who was gentle and lovely in front of him, flame in second brother's heart was ignited by her once again. Second brother couldn't hold back any longer. He moved closer to Liu Duo's face and used his newly healed hand to lift Liu Duo's chin and bite her ear. Before second brother could do anything, Liu Duo pushed him away. Her ears were bright red. At this moment, second brother put his thoughts away and said seriously, I have to go to town for a few days to do some temporary work. Hearing this, a hint of sadness rose in Liu Duo's eyes. She thought to herself that second brother was also about to leave and their family would not be able to stay together anymore. Seeing Lu Duo looking sad and listless, second brother lifted her small face and looked at her with a deadly gentle expression saying, second brother is only going for a few days. Little Duo Duo is still more beautiful when she smiles. But Liu Duo suddenly took a half step back and questioned, second brother, you mean I'm not beautiful if I don't smile? Second brother suddenly held Liu Duo's face and kissed her hard on the face and said wickedly, little Duo Duo looks so cute when she's angry because today was Monday and Ye Yang was not at home, it was second brother's turn to sleep with Liu Duo. Time flew by like a dog running in the fields. Early the next morning, Lu Duo opened her eyes in a daze, then sat up and stretched and yawned. But when she looked to the side, she found that the person who had been warming her was gone. She thought to herself, second brother left without even saying goodbye to her. Was he afraid that she would not be able to bear it? So Lu Duo put on her clothes and went outside and saw fourth brother about to go and wash clothes. She immediately ran over to him. I can wash clothes for you. Lu Duo had lived for decades and had never washed clothes herself. So fourth brother showed her how to wash. After watching for three hours, Lu Duo finally learned how to wash. She rolled up her sleeves and was about to show off her skills, but fourth brother said that he was not tired and told Lu Duo to go and rest and not to tire herself out. Hearing this, Lu Duo was stunned. Hadn't she just woken up? Fourth brother said with embarrassment, you were intimate with second brother last night. You have to pay attention to resting. As soon as he finished speaking, the innocent and naive fourth brother suddenly blushed and wished he could find a hole to crawl into. But Lu Duo replied calmly, I'm still so young, how can I be intimate? What are you thinking about? Hearing this fourth brother could not help but shed tears and asked her in surprise if it was true. Lu Duo said, it's not a lie, we just slept together. Fourth brother felt that this topic was too embarrassing and wondered if Duo Air would think he was thinking badly. Just then, a high-pitched voice interrupted their conversation. Madong Mai stood outside the door and scolded Lu Duo, and the fat woman next to her was her mother. Nu Chu Mai Nu Chu Mai was a woman who was very protective of her daughter. She ignored the rights and wrongs and shouted angrily at Lu Duo, and then raised her big fat hand to pull Lu Duo's hair and asked her to kneel down and apologize to her daughter. At this moment, a hand grabbed her arm and she was stunned. Fourth brother asked her to let go of Lu Duo in a serious voice. Seeing this, she muttered to herself, didn't everyone say that the fourth child of the Yi family was short-lived? Why does he not look so easy to bully? So she let go of Lu Duo. Lu Duo held her messy hair and said, 
Why should I apologize? It was clearly your daughter who said the wrong thing first. Hearing this, Niu Chu Mai's anger flared up, and she pushed fourth brother away. Seeing this, Lu Duo was very worried. She quickly ran to fourth brother's side and anxiously asked him if he was in pain. Then she turned and said angrily to her, You dare to push my third brother? Do you want to die? As soon as she finished speaking, she raised her hand and slapped her, slapping her hard on her fat face. Immediately, Niu Chu Mai's left cheek swelled up. She rubbed her face, her expression getting darker and darker. A second later, she picked up a wooden hairpin and wanted to fight Lu Duo to the death. Seeing the hairpin getting closer and closer to her, Lu Duo suddenly felt something was wrong. She did not expect this Niu Chu Mai to dare to play for real, but just then an old shoe suddenly flew over and hit Niu Chu Mai hard on the right cheek. The violent attack caused her to spit out blood, and then she fell to the ground unconscious. Fortunately, third brother had just returned from work, otherwise there would have been a big problem. Seeing third brother arrive, Lu Duo immediately ran over to him and said in a sweet voice, third brother, they bullied me, and fourth brother. This address of third brother made Yemo's heart skip a beat. Seeing third brother being so heroic, Liu Duo could not help but look at him with admiration. Unexpectedly, third brother took the opportunity to save the beauty and kiss Liu Duo on the spot. Liu Duo said shyly, can we talk about it later? Hearing this, third brother was overjoyed. He knew that Liu Duo liked his domineering ways. So third brother glared at Madomai, and his fierce look immediately frightened her. I'm a woman, you can't hit me. But third brother didn't care whether she was a man or a woman. He grabbed her by the collar and lifted her up, and then asked, Did your mother want to attack Lu Duo with a wooden hairpin just now? Then he raised two fingers and said, Or shall I try this on you? Hearing this, Ma Dong Mai immediately cried and begged third brother to spare her life. Third brother asked her to wash the blood-stained bedsheet last night. After a long while, she was just about to complain that she was tired when third brother immediately took out his long chopping knife and stared at her with fierce eyes. Without saying another word, Ma Dong Mai immediately used all her strength to complete the task. Lu Duo sat by and watched. She thought to herself that third brother's unreasonable face was also cool at times. She turned her head and saw that at this moment, Niu Chu Mai, who had been punished to chop wood, was sitting on the ground complaining that she had no strength left. So Lu Duo walked up to her and sternly rebuked her. Weren't you very strong when you were fighting just now? She said, why don't you hit me? That way, I can still report you to the village chief. Hearing this, third brother immediately swung his chopping knife down on the log right next to her fat arm, only 001 mm in away. She was immediately so scared that she sat still and then worked hard. In the blink of an eye, it was evening. Liu Duo came out of the toilet having just taken a fragrant bath. She was in a good mood, but she suddenly stopped. As if she had detected some movement behind her, she turned her head to look. Third brother was peeping at her from behind the corner, and when she discovered him, he immediately ran away. Liu Duo thought to herself that ever since the mother and daughter had left, third brother had been constantly looking at her. She put down the foot bath and decided to ask him what he wanted to do. Liu Duo went up and grabbed third brother's arm, and then pinched his ear and said, Why do you keep following me? When I heard third brother ask her to call him, Liu Duo was immediately stunned. She pretended not to understand and asked him what he wanted her to call call him, only to see third brother immediately press Lu Duo against the wall behind. His face flushed as he said, of course, call me third brother. Seeing this, Lu Duo could not help but smile. Out of respect for his bravery today, she would reward him. So Lu Duo called out softly, third brother. Third brother was so excited by this soft and gentle call that his heart skipped a beat. He thought to himself, she's so cute. He could hardly bear it anymore. So domineering, Ye Mo carried Lu Duo on his shoulder and carried her directly into the room to do adult things. Lu Duo was so scared that she kept screaming, but it was useless even if she called out to the sky because at the moment, third brother was burning hot all over and only Lu Duo could help him cool down. Emo heavily dropped her on the bed and then looked at Lu Duo with a flushed face. I'm very uncomfortable right now, can you help me? Before Lu Duo could answer, Emo had already rushed forward and was gnawing at her and he held Lu Duo's soft hands tightly with his rough hands. Early the next morning, Lu Duo lay exhausted on the bed. Her body was drained of all strength. Yemo looked at Lu Duo with a dizzy face and thought to himself, why hadn't he discovered how lovely she was before? He wanted to make love to her again. But just as he was about to approach her, Lu Duo blushed with shame and told him to get away from her. Seeing that she was not eating soft or hard, third brother decided to do so. He picked up the comb and combed her soft curls and picked up a handful of hair 
and sniffed it and asked her what she used to wash her hair with. Why did it smell so good? At this moment, Liu Duo suddenly blushed. She was so immersed in third brother's tenderness that she couldn't come to her senses. Suddenly, a loud laugh from third brother interrupted Liu Duo's train of thought. Third brother said, you can sleep with me again tonight. I'll talk to fourth brother. Hearing this, Liu Duo had nothing more to say. She thought to herself that she shouldn't have any fantasies about straight men. Third brother was combing Liu Duo's hair when he suddenly heard someone outside the door. It turned out to be fourth brother calling them to dinner. Seeing fourth brother arrive, Liu Duo was like catching a life-saving straw. She immediately leaned into fourth brother's arms. She grabbed the corner of his clothes and coquettishly said that she wanted to sleep alone in the future because third brother wouldn't sleep last night and kept touching her. Fourth brother said that there were not enough beds in the house and there would not be enough room to sleep when the older brothers returned. Liu Duo said that she would build a new house for everyone in a few days after she got the money. But at this moment, third brother took Liu Duo's hand and domineeringly pulled her into his arms, not caring what others thought. Anyway, you have to sleep with me on Wednesday. Then he leaned close to her ear and said, unless you get pregnant with my child. Hearing this, Liu Duo blushed. A second later, she raised her hand and pushed him away, more than 10 meters. Fortunately, it only caused his internal organs to shake a little, there was no major problem. At this moment, fourth brother bravely stood in front of Liu Duo and said to third brother in a stern voice, she is the one I like. You are not allowed to force her to do anything. Hearing this third brother's eyes were deep and unfathomable, he immediately became angry and thought to himself, it sounded as if he was bullying her, and then angrily kicked the door open and left. Third brother left, Liu Duo gently tugged at fourth brother's sleeve and then buried her head in his warm chest. At this moment, Liu Duo's heart was filled with the gentle warmth of fourth brother. Seeing this fourth brother hugged Liu Duo in his arms, although he was not as strong as his older brothers, but he would also try to protect little Duo Duo. Fourth brother gently held her head and placed a gentle kiss on her forehead. Fourth brother was very grateful that she had never thought of him as useless. At this moment, Liu Duo blushed and looked at fourth brother in front of her. In the past, fourth brother had always protected her and tolerated her willfulness. How could she hate him? Their eyes met deeply. Liu Duo was fascinated by the gentle and lovely man in front of her and finally couldn't help it. She tiptoed up, held the back of fourth brother's neck, and then pressed her soft and hot thin lips on. Ray, fourth brother's face suddenly turned red. He couldn't believe that he could kiss Liu Duo. After a long while, the two of them ended their kiss. After all, this is where it should end. But as soon as they walked out of the room, Liu Duo asked fourth brother for money because tomorrow she wanted to take an ox cart to town to see how her partner was doing. Hearing this fourth brother hesitated for a long time and did not speak, Liu Duo roughly understood what he meant. At this moment, third brother stood under the tree and said that he was the only one in the house with money now. If you want to go to town, call me third brother. Liu Duo was really helpless with this guy, but as long as she called him third brother, she could get the money, so she would temporarily satisfy him. So she smiled and called out gently Yemo. Third brother immediately, Yemo agreed to give her money for the ox cart. The next morning, the two of them took an ox cart to town. The two of them entered Qin Fang's clothing store. Looking at the rabbit doll she had designed, she couldn't help but be stunned. Lu Duo thought to herself the embroidery skills of the ancients were amazing. In order to quickly get the money to build a house so that she could sleep alone, Lu Duo asked Sister Fang to start selling as soon as possible. Sister Fang suddenly clapped her hands, her entourage immediately spoke in unison. Then they displayed the rabbit dolls outside the door and began to sell them outside. The cries of the peddlers caused all the old and young men and women on the street to turn their heads and look. About half an hour later, Liu Duo sat on the second floor and put down her brush, then stretched. At this time, she had finished drawing the new product, but Sister Fang had not come up for so long. Liu Duo couldn't help but mutter, don't tell me that the rabbit dolls didn't sell. She walked to the window and saw that there were many people standing outside, Nurur, but she was still very nervous and decided to go downstairs and have a look. She saw a woman holding a doll and cursing incessantly. She listened for a while before realizing that she was complaining that it was too expensive, who among the ordinary people would be willing to spend three copper 
her coins to buy a doll. So she asked Sister Fang what had happened. She said that, that the dolls were selling too well. There was one last one, and everyone was fighting over it, so the last one was bid up to three tails. After hearing this, Lu Duo thought to herself that she could not let this woman smear her product and affect the sales of the next products. So she took the doll from her and calmly said, This doll is not for sale. I'm so sorry. The unreasonable woman immediately became furious. She opened her mouth and spoke obscenities. Hearing this, Lu Duo stopped. Although she was civilized and polite, she could not bear to be scolded by others for 18 generations of her ancestors. She turned her head and said three words to her, increase the price, and then took the doll upstairs. Liu Duo sat on the chair and the more she thought about it, the angrier she got. She thought to herself, if you don't buy it, don't buy it, and you're still smearing our dolls. Suddenly, Sister Fang brought over a cup of tea, reminding little Duo Duo not to let anger harm her body. Then she smiled and said, our dolls are selling very well. We should be happy. Lu Duo expressed that she was sad because of the efforts of the embroiderers. Their exquisite craftsmanship should have been respected. Hearing this, Sister Fang's expression of surprise turned into astonishment. She did not expect her to have such a pure, kind side. At this moment, Lu Duo announced that she had finished drawing the new product. Looking at the cute puppy on the drawing paper, Sister Fang immediately showed great interest. Lu Duo said that she would continue to draw new designs and help her to launch a new product every once in a while. Hearing this, Sister Fang was puzzled. She asked her what would happen to the previous products. Lu Duo told her that each type of doll would only be sold twice at most. After they were sold out, if someone wanted to buy them, they could only be made to order. This way, they could charge a little more. Hearing this, Sister Fang could not help but admire Lu Duo. She knew that this girl was very intelligent, but she did not expect her to be so proficient in business. She is definitely not a simple country girl. Yemo is a KOL with less than 10 billion fans, but even if he just stood on the street, his crazy fans would drool over him, and even said that they wanted to have children for him. At this moment, Lu Duo also took the money from Sister Fang's tailor shop and went out. She kept rubbing the bag of silver tails, loving it so much that she could not not bear to part with it. She thought to herself that it felt so good to have money. But when she was considering what gift to buy for third brother, he suddenly came to her angrily. Why did you make me wait for so long? Seeing this, Lu Duo smiled like a flower and approached him while sweetly calling him third brother. Third brother was immediately conquered by this address. His face immediately flushed, but of course Lu Duo did not call him for nothing. Having just earned some money, she went straight to the rice cellar and asked the owner to give her the best rice, then asked third brother to carry the rice. Then she went to a candied fruit shop, looking at the red, green, and yellow candied apples in front of her. Lu Duo immediately had difficulty choosing. In the end, she asked the waiter to pack all of them for her. So third brother had to carry a few more kilograms. Then they went to buy some cooked food and some household items. Liu Duo had not been so happy for a long time. She strolled down the street eating candy. Only third brother was unlucky and suffering, who told him to go shopping with a girl. Third brother thought to himself, this woman is really a spendthrift, buying so many things without batting an eyelid. But thinking that all these things were bought with money she had earned herself, he could not say anything. It seemed that he could not look down on her in the future. Just then, Liu Duo's attention was drawn by the crying of a child. She immediately stopped. A little girl was crying and asking her mother to buy her a toy doll. If she did not buy it, she would not go home. The mother next to her could only patiently comfort her. After all, toy dolls were something that ordinary families could not afford. But when Liu Duo took a closer look, wasn't this the woman who had caused trouble earlier? She did not expect her to have such a side to her. So she told third brother to take out a doll and give it to the little girl. Seeing the doll in front of her, the little girl immediately stopped crying. The woman turned around and saw that it was the beautiful Liu Duo. Her expression immediately changed. She did not expect it to be her. Liu Duo said calmly, Although you spoke very harshly, I also scolded you in front of everyone in a fit of anger. So for the sake of your lovely daughter, I will give the doll to your little girl. The little girl hugged the doll tightly, her face full of love, and the two of them gradually disappeared into the boundless sunset. At this moment, Liu Duo's heart was filled with thoughts. She did this perhaps because she admired the little girl who had someone to love, someone to dote on her. She thought back to her previous life because her parents were always busy with work. They had no time to spend with her, so she always longed for the love of adults. Third brother, who was standing next to her, saw that she had suddenly become sad. His face also became ashamed 
turned out that Liu Duo was not just a scheming and shrewish person. After a long while, the two of them finally returned home. As soon as they reached the gate, Liu Duo could not wait to call out to fourth brother, wanting to share the joy of earning money with him. She was surprised to see eldest brother, who had just finished bathing, standing next to him. Hearing the noise, eldest brother turned around to look. His face was handsome and resolute, and his body was strong. He was the dream man of countless young girls. Liu Duo immediately threw herself into eldest brother's arms, then asked him with a bright smile, Did you miss me? when you were in the mountains. Eldest brother thought to himself, apart from eating, sleeping, and hunting, he had been thinking about her all the time, but it was very difficult for him to say so much. So he said a dull, um, Liu Duo was speechless. It seemed that she would have to teach eldest brother to practice speaking in the future. Unexpectedly, the next second, Liu Duo grabbed hold of eldest brother's collar, standing on tiptoe and kissing him on the lips. She was very grateful to eldest brother for risking his life to hunt in the mountains to support the family, so this was a reward for him. Just then, third brother, who was carrying large and small bags, stood outside the gate, complaining to Liu Duo. But when he saw Liu Duo and eldest brother kissing in the courtyard, he could not help but be stunned. Jealousy surged in his heart. At this moment, fourth brother came over carrying a box of rice, asking third brother why he had bought so many things. But suddenly, he heard Liu Duo say excitedly, because I earned a lot of money, I also want to build a big house for everyone. But hearing this, the three brothers did not look happy at all. Liu Duo was very puzzled. She asked them why they were not happy. Fourth brother replied timidly, Duo Er has earned money. Will you leave us? Hearing this, eldest brother and third brother also frowned and said nothing. At this moment, Liu Duo also realized that because she had no money before, she could not leave. But now that she had money, why should she stay here? But Liu Duo thought about it again. She had long since considered this her home. She decided to live with her brothers forever. Hearing this answer, fourth brother was stunned. Then he went in front of Liu Duo and made a hooking gesture. Liu Duo naturally understood what he meant. She raised her finger and hooked it with fourth brothers as a promise. At this moment, eldest brother searched his pockets. He wanted to let Liu Duo manage all the property in the house. Receiving the money, Liu Duo was overjoyed. She could not help but hum a song. Seeing that the economic lifeline of his family had been taken over by Liu Duo, third brother suddenly wondered if eldest brother was really his biological brother. Soon it was evening. Fourth brother was preparing to go out. Liu Duo followed him and asked where he was going. Fourth brother said that he was going to give these wild game to the granny. Hearing this, Liu Duo took out some sweets that she had bought today for fourth brother to give to the granny. Fourth brother hurried away while there was still light. Seeing this, Liu Duo could not help but laugh. She did not expect fourth brother to be in such a hurry. At that moment, Liu Duo seemed to hear some noise. She saw that the axe was constantly chopping wood on the chopping board. It turned out that eldest brother was working to burn off the calories. Looking at the firm chest muscles on eldest brother's chest, as well as his strong biceps, and then looking at eldest brother's handsome face, Liu Duo thought to herself that she had not seen eldest brother for a long time. She really could not get enough of looking at him. So she smiled and walked up to eldest brother. Eldest brother saw this and asked her what was the matter. Liu Duo said that there was nothing wrong. She just wanted to look at eldest brother. Was that not allowed? Eldest brother was so embarrassed by Liu Duo's gaze that his face turned red. He shyly turned his head away. Liu Duo saw that eldest brother, who was usually so cold, could actually blush. She wanted to get closer and closer to him. So she was possessed by a ghost and picked up a wet towel, wiping his sweaty chest. After only three wipes, eldest brother grabbed hold of Liu Duo's hand. She was stunned and thought, eldest brother is not planning to get intimate with me. Here is he. Unexpectedly, just as they were about to get intimate, a cough made them stop. Without even thinking, they knew it was third brother. Third brother blushed and shyly turned his head away, saying that the water was boiling and telling Liu Duo to hurry up and take a bath. Liu Duo was annoyed that third brother had ruined her plans, so she did not have a good attitude towards him. She ordered him to pour water into the bathtub. Then she looked at eldest brother with a smile, saying, I'm going to take a bath. Then she took off her outer clothes and said shyly, eldest brother, do you want to bathe together? His face turned red. He remembered that the bathtub in the house was only designed for one person, so wouldn't it be very cramped? But while eldest brother was lost in thought, Liu Duo had already finished putting on her clothes. She smiled wickedly and said that she would not bother eldest brother. Liu Duo thought that eldest brother had not really been thinking about bathing together just now, 
Had he tep a moment later, the four of them had a family meeting in the courtyard. Third brother said, Liu Duo insists on sleeping in a room by herself. The three of us are too crowded in one room. So he said that he wanted to restore everything to how it was before. At this moment, fourth brother was about to speak up for Liu Duo. Third brother patted him on the shoulder and said, No matter what everyone else thinks, I will not agree to sleeping separately. As soon as he finished speaking, eldest brother grabbed hold of third brother's hand, looking at him with a warning gaze, saying four words, no one is allowed to force her. Third brother was stunned when he saw this. He had not expected eldest brother to be so angry. Although third brother was very unwilling, eldest brother was eldest brother after all. He could not resist. At that moment, Liu Duo said that she had finished bathing, telling eldest brother to help her pour out the bathwater. Eldest brother easily lifted up the wooden bucket. Liu Duo stood next to eldest brother. She felt that eldest brother was so manly. She said in a charming voice, Eldest brother, once you have poured out the water, come over here and sleep. I have something I want to discuss with you. But when they entered the room, Liu Duo blushed and told eldest brother to take off his clothes. Unexpectedly, as soon as eldest brother had taken off his clothes, Liu Duo pushed him up against the wall to get intimate. It turned out that she was measuring eldest brother's chest because she wanted to change their clothes. So she told eldest brother not to move, otherwise she would not be able to measure accurately. But when she saw his serious expression, she was very angry. Because the other brothers had not received such treatment, she hoped that he could be a little more proactive. Eldest brother slowly reached out his hand to stroke Liu Duo's head. Liu Duo became as docile as a kitten after eldest brother used his head stroking technique. Eldest brother smiled affectionately and said two words, I like it. Hearing this, her face turned red. Could eldest brother be saying that he likes me? Before eldest brother could continue speaking, she had already hugged him, saying that she also liked him. Eldest brother was stunned when he heard this. Then he pushed Liu Duo away. His face red, he turned around, saying that he had to go and take a cold shower to calm down. But before he had taken a few steps, Liu Duo pulled him back. She blushed and said, Eldest brother, can you stay? Liu Duo was sunbathing on a rainy day. Fourth brother was next to her making insoles. Every time Liu Duo saw how skillful fourth brother was, she suspected that she was not a girl. She moved closer, hoping that fourth brother could teach her. Of course, fourth brother readily agreed. Under his gentle guidance, Liu Duo gradually learned how to thread a needle, pass the thread through. But it seemed that fourth brother's gaze had landed somewhere. His face turned red. It turned out that if he looked from his perspective, he could see the view of her chest. Before fourth brother had had a chance to take a closer look, a foot kicked open the door of their ye house. The two of them were startled by this sound. An old woman shouted loudly, scolding eldest brother. Eldest brother stood next to her and listened to this without paying any attention. He continued to do his own thing. At that moment, Lu Duo asked in a small voice, Fourth brother, what has happened? Fourth brother said that this was their paternal grandmother. This morning, she had sent their female cousin to call eldest brother over, but eldest brother had not agreed. Liu Duo thought to herself, has she come here herself because of this? She really is a hot-tempered old woman. She thought about the things that she had done that had hurt her brothers and felt very upset. Paternal grandmother went straight over to eldest brother, scolding eldest brother for being uneducated. At this moment, fourth brother went over and patted paternal grandmother on the shoulder hoping that if there was anything, she could talk to them properly. But when paternal grandmother heard this, she shouted, You sickly thing, I'm talking to your eldest brother. What right do you have to butt in? Fourth brother was very unhappy when he heard this. Paternal grandmother said spitefully, in a while, Schwanner will be sitting the prefectural examination. But the fortune teller said that your parents' graves are blocking her luck. Her future prospects are not good, so it would be best if you moved your parents' graves. Fourth brother was stunned when he heard this. He had not expected paternal grandmother to be so unreasonable. Eldest brother who was next to him was so angry that he snapped the wooden stick in his hand. Then he looked at paternal grandmother grandmother coldly. He was the head of the family, of course he would not agree to such an unreasonable request. So unreasonable. But paternal grandmother did not give way, saying I have not come here to negotiate with you. I have only come to inform you. Then she turned to look at Liu Duo and said, it would be best to sell this adopted daughter 
and buy one who knows her place. A woman who ruins good customs like this is a disgrace to our Ye family. Lu Duo was furious when she heard this, secretly cursing the old woman a thousand times. Then she picked up the feather duster. The old woman had humiliated her family like this. Lu Duo could not bear it any longer. She decided to use the feather duster to sweep away this bad luck. The old woman was delighted when she saw this, sneering. Indeed, unfilial people like you will never find anyone good. If you dare to touch me, I will tear you apart. Before Lu Duo had had a chance to do anything, the old woman had cursed her as a lowly woman. These words from the lowly woman pierced her heart. She had not expected that she would be so humiliated after being reborn. Anger welled up in her heart. She raised the object in her hand to hit the old woman. At that moment, her hand was held back by a man. Eldest brother was standing behind her. He did not want her to fight over this matter. After all, men should deal with matters like this. He said in a cold voice, saying that he would not move the graves. She should go back to where she had come from. When paternal grandmother saw how overbearing eldest brother was, her face looked a little frightened. Then, she turned around and left. But as soon as she got outside, she continued to insult the three of them. Fourth brother anxiously asked, Eldest brother, what if paternal grandmother sends someone to move our parents' graves? Eldest brother said calmly, With me here, no one will dare. Lu Duo also went to comfort fourth brother, telling him that even if the sky fell, his elder brother would support him. Not to worry too much, Lu Duo asked again. Who is this swan heir that she was talking about earlier, demanding to move the graves just for his luck? Fourth brother said, sadly, Yishuan is the grandson that paternal grandmother favors the most. That is why he only needs to sit the prefectural examination. He does not need to worry about anything else. That year when third brother went to school, he was much more stupid than third brother. Then fourth brother's eyes filled with admiration. If it was third brother, he would have passed the prefectural examination long ago. Liu Duo was stunned when she heard this. She thought to herself, could it be that fourth brother is a brother worshipper? Liu Duo kept thinking about the scene of that violent person passing the prefectural examination, and she got goosebumps. This scene is too frightening. In the blink of an eye, it was midday. The next day, second brother who worked at the wharf was sitting on a box eating a bun he had bought for two. Five coppers, second brother's sweet and gentle voice, reached his ears. He turned his head and saw Liu Duo's lovely face. She went up to second brother and said, I finally found you. Eldest brother followed closely behind her in new clothes. Third brother, fourth brother who were standing next to him were also wearing new and splendid clothes. They followed after them. Second brother was stunned when he saw this. He asked them why they had come. Liu Duo smiled and said, of course, we have come to find second brother. Second brother saw this little girl who made his heart beat faster and he took her hand and held her in his arms. He raised her chin with his hand and said in a gentle and languid voice, it seems that little Duo Duo misses second brother very much. Then he gently lifted her head and smelled the faint fragrance of her hair. If they were not in a crowded place, then he was afraid that she would have been even more intimate with second brother. If they could not be intimate, then he would just squeeze her a little. Lu Duo's face flushed. She pushed him away. Then she shyly told him, don't touch me. Everyone is watching. She also said that she had brought him new clothes. A moment later, second brother had changed into his new clothes. He appeared in all his splendor. Lu Duo turned around and saw this and was very charmed. She thought to herself, it is lucky that there are no girls here. Otherwise, second brother would have attracted another woman. At this moment, second brother said with a smile, Little Duo Duo has good taste. Unexpectedly, immediately afterwards, he pushed Little Duo Duo against the wall and said that he had to reward her. Then he closed his eyes and bowed his head and smelled the fragrant scent on Liu Duo's body. While she was so stunned that she forgot to resist, he moved his thin lips close to her face. At that moment, third brother, who was acting as a wall, cried out and stopped them. Third brother was very angry at this moment. He was insanely jealous. He squeezed second brother's hand. Unexpectedly, second brother was not afraid of third brother. He still had that frivolous look. Seeing this third brother's expression darkened even more. Then, he pulled at the new clothes that second brother had just changed into and looked at him with fierce eyes. He had not yet had time to act. Eldest brother stretched his muscles and said in a serious voice, If you want to fight, then fight me. Eldest brother was eldest brother. The two younger brothers changed their attitude immediately and started to play the role of good brothers. It was lunchtime. They went to the most expensive restaurant in town. Looking at the four meat dishes and eight vegetable dishes on the table, second brother was stunned and asked little Duo Duo what was going on. Not only had she bought new clothes, but she had also come to the restaurant to eat. Liu Duo did not 
answer him immediately. She reached behind her and pulled out a nine-meter-long bowl of longevity noodles. Then together with his three elder brothers, she sang happy birthday to second brother. Second brother was stunned when he saw this, because after his parents had died, he had never celebrated his birthday again. He had even forgotten what day it was. Fourth brother, who was next to him, said, Duor heard that it was second brother's birthday, so she brought us here to celebrate your birthday. Liu Duo carried the bowl of longevity noodles and said, I hope that in the future, everyone will be as happy as today when they celebrate their birthday. Her elder brothers were, of course, happy to agree. Then, when it was time to eat, second brother found out that Liu Duo had sold her dolls to earn money. When the sun set, everyone got in the carriage and went home. Eldest brother considerately helped Liu Duo to get out of the carriage. Lu Duo thought to herself, I was going to take second brother home, but he said that he still had something to do. At that moment, Xu Qin from next door ran over in a hurry to tell them, Your grandmother has sent someone to dig up your parents' grave. They were stunned by this news. A moment later, in front of their parents' grave, two strong men raised the things in their hands and were about to dig deep into the grave. The old woman standing next to them looked very fierce and shouted at them to hurry up. Just then, a cry rang out from behind, which made them stop. Third brother was holding the family peddler's pole and said, if anyone dares to touch my parents' grave today, I will break their hands. Eldest brother calmly followed behind. The old woman was terrified and did not know what to do. She stopped swearing. Third brother was quick-tempered, so of course he had to answer back to this evil old woman. The old woman was cowed by third brother's manner, and she was covered in sweat. She was so embarrassed that she was furious. Seeing that she was no match for third brother, she took her anger out on the two attendants and told them to hurry up and dig, but they just looked at each other and did not dare to act. Of course, they knew what the situation was now. The old woman saw this and seized the weapon from the man's hand and was about to dig the grave herself. At that moment, third brother raised the family peddler's pole that had been handed down for 18 generations in his hand and brought it down so that it split in two. The sound of the wooden pole reverberated and terrified the old woman. Her expression was very ugly. Third brother was just putting on a show of force and did not intend to really hit her. Then he said in a stern voice, if you dare to act recklessly again, then it will not be as simple as just a scare. The old woman clicked her tongue. Of course, she did not dare to dig the grave again. In the blink of an eye, Liu Duo came running up panting. At the same time, a young scholar came running up in a hurry. Liu Duo had never seen this person before, so she was a little confused. He ran over to persuade his grandmother. His grandmother doted on him, so whatever he said was right. Then he took his grandmother away. Liu Duo looked at his profile and thought to herself, is this Yishuan? Although his appearance was not as good as her elder brothers, he looked quite scholarly and not as savage as his grandmother. Third brother, who was standing next to her, heard Lu Duo praising another man and shouted at her. Lu Duo was stunned. When she reacted, she immediately protested. Third brother's anger was extinguished immediately. That evening, Lu Duo was painting a new doll, but she was still angry with third brother, so she was almost out of inspiration. At that moment, fourth brother asked in a low voice from outside the door if he could come in. After getting permission, he went into the room. Lu Duo asked him what was the matter. Fourth brother pulled a peach out of his pocket and gave it to Lu Duo, saying that he did not like to eat peaches. Lu Duo thought to herself, isn't this the fruit that everyone eats after dinner? Could it be that fourth brother could not bear to eat it, so he left it for her? So Liu Duo took the peach from his hand and took a big bite. Then she gave it back to him and said, Consider that I have eaten it. The rest is for fourth brother to eat. Don't blame me for biting it. Fourth brother held the peach in his hand and looked at it as if his soul had left his body. His face was red and his heart was pounding. He thought that if he ate it, then it would be an indirect kiss. His face was flushed. For a moment, fourth brother's thoughts became confused. It it seemed that Lu Duo had discovered that fourth brother had something wrong with him, so she asked if he was thinking about that kiss. Fourth brother felt that he had been exposed, so his face turned red, and he turned his face away. Unexpectedly, Lu Duo reached out and lifted his blushing face up. When Yilang was not paying attention, she kissed that soft, small place. After exploring for about 66 minutes, the two of them finally let go of each other, their faces full of reluctance. Lu Duo looked up at fourth brother and hoped that in the future he could bend down when they kissed because it was very tiring for her to stand on tiptoe. But fourth brother looked at the adorable little duo duo in front of him and was confused. And he blushed, lowered his head, and said in a low voice, I will pay attention in the future. He looked at the peach in his hand and found an excuse 
to run outside. Lu Duo found it very funny to see fourth brother so flustered and embarrassed. She thought back to the warmth just now. She felt that fourth brother's lips were even sweeter than the peach. The girl blushed and looked at the man in front of her and asked Ye Lang to stay and spend the spring night together. Ye Lang's face turned even redder and he shyly turned his head away. Unexpectedly, Lu Duo immediately reached out and tried to untie Ye Lang's belt. She even said shyly, fourth brother, stay with me just once. Ye Lang clenched his fists when he heard this. Seeing Lu Duo take the initiative, he did not want to hold back anymore. So he put his slender Slender, white hand around Liu Duo's slender waist and looked at her with very affectionate eyes. His mouth muttered duo -er. At this moment, Liu Duo put her hand on his chest. The feeling of his heart beating so fast made Liu Duo worry about fourth brother's health. But at this moment, the ambiguous atmosphere had reached its peak, and fourth brother disregarded everything. He hugged her waist, bent down slightly, and pressed his thin lips against the soft place that he had always longed for. Let's skip the next few paid scenes. The next morning, Liu Duo stood in the bamboo forest and asked eldest brother if the bamboo forest belonged to the whole village. The answer she got was, the bamboo forest was unclaimed land. Liu Duo asked again, who needed to give permission to build a house here? Eldest brother told her that only the village chief could decide. When Liu Duo heard this, she thought she had to find time to visit the village chief because she wanted to build a new house here. Suddenly, her eyes were attracted by something. Two reddish-pink bamboo shoots had sprouted from the ground. Liu Duo immediately took out her knife to dig them up. She was very happy to see the bamboo shoots in her hand. After all, it had been a long time since she had eaten bamboo shoots. Just then, a butterfly flew towards Liu Duo. Seeing this, she was stunned. It turned out that it was made of grass by eldest brother. She did not expect that this strong man could be so delicate at times. Eldest brother put the grass butterfly in front of her and let it touch her red lips. It turned out that eldest brother made the butterfly to pick the Liu Duo flower. Liu Duo looked at the flower picker in front of her. At that moment, it seemed that she had lost her way in eldest brother's eyes. At this moment, her heart was beating as fast as the butterfly. At the same time, third brother and fourth brother came home after work. Suddenly, a sweet voice came from behind, causing the two of them to turn around and look. Li Chun Mai came over with a blush on her face to welcome them home. Fourth brother felt that Li Chun Mai had feelings for third brother and asked if that was the case. When third brother heard that it was Li Chun Mai, he lost all patience and said that he had no feelings for her at all. He thought of how he liked Lu Duo again, and his face flushed. Li Chun Mai saw his flushed face and thought he had a fever, so she tried to take his temperature. But when she was about to touch, third brother, he turned his face away, his face full of disgust. Yemo shook her hand away and said that doing so would affect her reputation. Li Chen Mai said that she did not care about her reputation. In her heart, she thought, third brother is really good. He cares about my reputation so much. Third brother stood beside her speechless. Now he just wanted to get rid of Li Chen Mai as soon as possible. At this moment, Liu Duo and eldest brother passed by on their way home. Li Chen Mai turned her head and saw Liu Duo, a cunning look on her face. Then, she smiled and walked up to her and said she wanted to talk to her in private. But Liu Duo did not give her any face and said that if she had anything to say, she should say it right here. Li Chun Mai did not say anything when she heard this and just looked at third brother standing beside her with a blush on her face. Third brother felt very uncomfortable being stared at and closed his eyes. At this moment, Li Chun Mai blushed and decided to speak her mind. She said in a loud voice that she had liked third brother for many years and would never marry anyone else but third brother in this life. Yimo said, I don't like you, so don't dream about it. Li Chun Mai was anxious when she heard this and asked third brother, is there anything I did wrong? If there is, I can change it. However, the answer she got was that third brother liked Lu Duo and told Li Chun Mai to stay away from him in the future. At this moment, Li Chun Mai felt as if she had died and ran away crying saying, third brother, you're too much. At the same time, Lu Duo standing beside him blushed when she heard him say that he liked her. She had never thought that this fierce man would like her. Third brother blushed and turned his face away, hoping that Liu Duo would show some attitude. After all, he had already confessed his feelings. However, she lowered her head and said, What's the use of just saying it out loud? I can't feel it, Yimo blushed. In any case, I will not marry anyone else but you. Earlier, Liu Duo was washing bamboo shoots in the room when a hand suddenly hugged her from behind. It turned out to be second brother who was both dark and evil, making Xiao Duo blush. 
Unexpectedly, second brother became even bolder and pressed his body against hers. When Ye Lu saw that she was washing bamboo shoots, he said that bamboo shoots were bitter and not tasty at all. Liu Duo thought to herself, don't people know that bamboo shoots have to be boiled for a while? It seemed like she had found another opportunity to make money. In the blink of an eye, it was time for dinner the next day. Liu Duo said mysteriously, today I will let you all try a new dish. She took out a bowl of bamboo shoots and placed it on the table. The four people eating were very surprised to see the bamboo shoots. Third brother complained, bamboo shoots are so unpalatable, and yet you made them for us to eat. Liu Duo thought to herself that she rarely cooked, and yet he was still so picky. She replied to him gently, you can choose not to eat it. Third brother saw that the other brothers were all eating, and he felt like he was the odd one out. At this moment, fourth brother tasted it, and his face lit up and asked Duo, Er, how did you make it so delicious? It's not bitter at all. Third brother was skeptical when he heard this and picked up a piece and put it in his mouth. Although it tasted really good, he said it was still a bit bitter in order to save face. When the others heard this, they despised third brother a little, saying that he was complaining about the bitterness but still eating it with relish. At this moment, Liu Duo stood up and said, tomorrow we will dig up the bamboo shoots and sell them in town. But how much should we sell them for? Per caddy. Second brother suggested, normally no one eats bamboo shoots. We can let people try it first and then sell it. Sell it for 10 copper coins per caddy. Lu Duo did not expect second brother to have such a good business mind. She said in the future, you should not go and do odd jobs for others. An eldest brother should not go hunting anymore. We should buy some land and grow vegetables, because that way their family would not have to be separated anymore. When third brother heard this, he patted Lu Duo's head and said, Xiao Duo, Duo is reluctant to leave me. Then second brother doesn't have to go. He also suggested that Lu Duo sponsor the capital, and Lu Duo happily agreed. In any case, this initial investment was very very profitable. After that, she pushed second brother's hand away fiercely and told him to say whatever he had to say, and not to be so handsy. Looking at her complete family before her, Lu Duo did not want them to be separated anymore. She secretly resolved to build a big house for her brothers. The next day, the sound of knocking on the door broke the peace of the morning. When Lu Duo opened the door, she was quite surprised. She did not expect Fang Jie to visit her in person. Fang Jie said, Xiao Duo, since you did not come to town to find me, I could only only come here to find you. At this moment, fourth brother brought over a cup of chrysanthemum tea. Fangji saw that fourth brother was very innocent and handsome. When fourth brother turned around, she exclaimed, Xiao Duo Duo's fiancé is truly a talent. She asked, why don't I see the other fiancés? Liu Duo told her, we are planning to build a new house recently, and my brothers are all busy. Eldest brother is digging bamboo shoots. Second brother is selling them. Third brother has gone to the village chief to ask for the plot of land that we want to use to build the house. She asked Fang Jie why she had come today. Fang Jie had heard that Liu Duo was planning to build a house, so she had instructed her servants to bring over the commission from the sale of the dolls. A total of 500 tails of silver, Liu Duo was very happy to see so much money. After thanking Fang Jie, she asked her if there was something else besides giving her the commission. Yes, Fang Jie wanted to invite Xiao Duo, Duo to visit the main store in the capital. Liu Duo thought to herself she had wanted to go out and see the world for a long time. Time. But she thought about how there were no taxis in ancient times, and that riding in a carriage was both bumpy and painful. She thought about it for the whole afternoon. Her three brothers returned home. Second brother suddenly reached behind Liu Duo's back and took a lock of her hair to smell it. He asked her if she wanted to go to the capital. Eldest brother and fourth brother were deep in thought when they heard this. They could not help but worry that after she went to the capital, she would be seized by the rich and powerful young masters in the capital. At the same time, third brother said angrily, no matter what, we cannot let Liu Duo go out. She said, the imperial city is prosperous. No matter what, I have to go and broaden my horizons. When Ye Lu heard this, he ran over to hug Liu Duo looking very reluctant. Liu Duo told everyone to go to bed early and to talk about this tomorrow. So it was nighttime because today was Tuesday. Her three brothers said their farewells early, leaving the dark and sinister Ye Liu to serve Xiao Duo to sleep. Second brother massaged her, which made her very... At this moment, Liu Duo told second brother that she hoped that when the matter of the house was settled, she would take her four brothers to the capital. She asked him if there had been any progress in selling the bamboo shoots. Second brother said that several restaurants wanted to buy a large quantity of goods from them. I plan to call on everyone in the village to dig bamboo shoots, and then we will buy them. The two of them were talking when they kissed. Liu Duo saw that second brother was so smart, so 
she said that she supported him unconditionally. Ye Liu laughed wickedly and said, Why don't you support me with your body? After saying that he hugged her in his arms with both hands and pressed his body tightly against Lu Duo's warm back, Lu Duo exclaimed, Someone said that what happened after that was not good, so let's skip it. For the rest of the summer, her brothers were busy building the house. Eldest brother and third brother were responsible for buying the materials to build the house. Second brother hired many workers, saying that he would provide lunch every day and that the wages would be calculated by the day. At the same time, Lu Duo was also designing new doll models. The way she looked when she was trying to make money was the most beautiful. Fourth brother was by her side responsible for serving Liu Duo. So time passed. Half a month later, the new house was finally finished. Liu Duo kept staring at the house. Her hard work had finally paid off, and her heart suddenly felt very complicated. Suddenly, a voice interrupted Liu Duo's thoughts. Ye Lu put his hand on Liu Duo's shoulder and said, Second brother has worked so hard, shouldn't I be rewarded? After saying that, he hugged Liu Duo's waist, lifted her face, brought his face close to hers, and bit her lip hard, making her face turn red and panting. At that moment, Ye Liu stood up and smiled with satisfaction, because this reward made him full of vitality right away. Third brother couldn't stand it anymore when he saw that and blushed as he ran over, saying that he wanted a reward too. He bent down and brought his cherry red lips close to Lu Duo's. Lu Duo blushed and turned her face away. She thought that her brothers were all bad guys, but second brother said, we are all Xiao Duo Duo's fiancés. Of course we want to be intimate with you. Eldest brother looked up when he heard this and nodded in agreement. Third brother touched the back of his head and said, no matter what, don't even think about leaving me. Fourth brother also said that he liked Xiao Duo. Liu Duo fell into deep thought after hearing her four brothers' confessions. She also wanted to be with her brothers forever. But then again, was she being too greedy? Just then, a hand reached out and broke her train of thought. It turned out to be second brother, who was both dark and sinister. He wanted to take Liu Duo to visit the new house. She smiled happily when she heard this, because she had been looking forward to this for a long time. So second brother took her hand and led her into the house. She went into the largest room and said that she would stay here. Second brother and third brother immediately fought over the room closest to Liu Duo's so that they could work conveniently. At that moment, Liu Duo said that she wanted to talk about something very important. Her brothers immediately turned to look at her. Liu Duo smiled and said that she had decided to take her brothers to the capital to play. Her four brothers were very happy when they heard this. They all felt very warm. Liu Duo looked at her family all together and gradually understood why heaven had given her a chance to live again. Perhaps this was fate, she still wanted to live a long time with her brothers. Time flew by quickly, and winter came in the blink of an eye. The mother duck gave birth to many ducklings. Among them, there was a duck named Little White who never got to eat. So fourth brother took a few dozen grains of rice and fed Little White himself. Just then, her three brothers came back from outside. Fourth brother asked about the purchase of the land. Third brother said with a smug look on his face that they had handled everything smoothly and asked fourth brother why he didn't see Lu Duo. Ye Lang thought for a moment and then said, maybe she hasn't woken up yet. Third brother was very angry when he heard this. It's six in the morning and she's still sleeping. Is she a pig? After that, he went there angrily to wake her up. Fourth brother wanted to stop him, but second brother patted him on the shoulder and told him not to worry. Third brother was just using this as an excuse to go find Xiao Duo. Duo, in front of Xiao Duo, Duo he was just a paper tiger. Third brother went in and shouted. When no one answered, he lifted the curtain and said, but he blushed at the sight inside. Liu Duo's hair was a little messy and she looked very gentle when she slept. Her shoulders and collarbone were accidentally exposed, revealing her soft and delicate white skin. This sight made Yemo very excited. Excited. A warm stream flowed out of his nose. Third brother held his nose and thought to himself, this girl only wears a yam when she sleeps. Who is she trying to seduce? But then he thought, she's sleeping, so I might as well take this opportunity to do something. So he held his breath and bent down, not daring to make a sound. Yemo slowly brought his lips closer to that soft and fragrant place. But just as he was about to touch it, Liu Duo let out a soft cry, causing third brother to quickly retreat, denying his earlier improper behavior. But Liu Duo didn't wake up, she just kept mumbling in her sleep. Yemo saw that her face was flushed, 
Could it be that she was sick? He reached out and touched her forehead. Her forehead was very hot. Just then, Lu Duo dreamed of being beaten when she was a child. Her grandmother was teaching her a lesson. Just because she had stolen an egg, Lu Duo was beaten with a wooden stick and scolded at the same time. It didn't matter how much she begged for mercy. At that time, her brother bravely stood up and took all the blame on himself. Her grandmother looked even more ferocious when she saw this. She didn't think it was her grandson's turn to discipline her. Her grandmother raised her foot and kicked her brother in the face. His brother's mouth spurted out blood and he fell to the ground. Unexpectedly, the pile of debris that fell to the ground was in the same direction that his brother had fallen. Immediately after blood splattered all over the ground, just then Lu Duo woke up and screamed at the same time. When Lu Duo calmed down, she breathed a sigh of relief. She knew that this was a memory of the original owner of this body, but it had been a long time since she had dreamed about her. Why was that? Before she had time to think about it, second brother came over, looking concerned. She looked to the side and was surprised to see that all four of her brothers were there. What happened to you? Just now, Lu Duo lay weakly on the bed. She felt like her head was about to split open. Fourth brother thoughtfully brought over some soup and told her that it would make her feel better. So Lu Duo drank it all. The medicine was bitter. Lu Duo found it very bitter. At that moment, eldest brother brought over 66 different kinds of candy and looked up into eldest brother's gentle eyes. She felt very warm. After that, she put that sweet feeling into her mouth. Unexpectedly, several thick clothes were thrown at her immediately after. She was covered in clothes, and her face darkened. Third brother said in a fierce voice, telling her that if she was sick, it was best to wear more clothes. Lu Duo was very angry when she heard this. She really didn't understand how a straight man could care about her. Just then, a gentle female voice came from outside the door, making the two of them turn around. The door was opened cautiously. Two people wearing ragged clothes entered the room. When Lu Duo looked up, she was stunned. Unexpectedly, the mother of the original owner of this body had suddenly brought her younger brother to visit. Third brother said fiercely, Didn't I say that you would not appear in front of Lu Duo again? Why don't you two hurry up and get lost? The younger brother was very scared when he saw third brother like this. He pulled on the corner of his mother's clothes and said, Let's not bother big sister anymore. Unexpectedly, immediately after the mother knelt down, the two siblings were stunned when they saw this. The mother knelt down in front of Lu Duo and looked at her with pitiful eyes. She asked her to take them in. They really had nowhere else to go. The younger brother came over when he saw this and anxiously advised her against it because he thought that this action would cause his sister to be bullied by the Ye family. Just then, Lu Duo suddenly felt a splitting headache. The memories of the original owner of this body came flooding back. A moment later, she felt like everything was spinning. Lu Duo fell backwards. Fortunately, second brother came over in time, so she fell into his arms. The other three three brothers were very uneasy when they saw this. At that moment, second brother carried Lu Duo in his arms and said gently, I'll take her upstairs to rest for a while. Fourth brother, you receive the guests. We'll talk about the rest later. Looking at the backs of the two of them, the younger brother thought that his sister had been mistreated here and had fainted because her body was too weak. But when he thought about it carefully, he seemed to understand why. Then he reached out and pointed at third brother, the fiercest one, and questioned him in a childish voice. Was it you, you bad guy, who bullied big sister? Third brother was shocked when he heard this, and he cried out in his heart that he was wrong saying that he didn't do anything. The girl was wearing very thin clothes, lying on the bed breathing heavily. The doctor said worriedly that the girl should not be stimulated anymore. When mother heard this, she looked at Liu Duo with concern, blaming herself. It must be because Duo Er saw her that she became angry and fainted. But speaking of being angry, it seemed that she had thought of something. So she called fourth brother over and said, can you lend me your kitchen? And her mother started to get busy in the kitchen. At that moment, second brother brought over a bowl of porridge and wanted to feed it to her, but she said she didn't want to eat it and cold sweat kept pouring out. She looked very uncomfortable. At this time, her mother brought over a bowl of noodles that she had made herself. Lu Duo was attracted. She found the smell very familiar. Her mother came over with the bowl of noodles and said, when you didn't want to eat before, you liked to eat this the most. Then she picked up the noodles and prepared to feed her. Lu Duo also sat up and opened her cherry lips, preparing to eat the whole bowl
bowl of noodles. Liu Duo ate the noodles and thought to herself that it was delicious. It seemed that the mother of the original owner really loved her. In just a moment, the entire large bowl of noodles was finished by Liu Duo. Then her mother held her hand, and she could see that the brothers really treated her very well. She said that she had come very suddenly this time, and that she would not come to bother her again in the future. She was satisfied, as long as she saw that her daughter was living well. After she finished speaking, she took her younger son and prepared to leave, but the younger son looked at his sister with a very reluctant expression. Liu Duo held the quilt tightly and suddenly felt very sad. She called the mother and son back and said gently bowing her head, since you've come eat dinner before you go. At this moment, her mood was very complicated. They were clearly the family of the original owner. Why did she feel sorry for them? That night, second brother wet the towel and prepared to wipe Liu Duo's body. Liu Duo went in and said that there was no need to bother second brother. The body had already recovered. Second brother heard this and put his hand on her shoulder and said, today second brother will serve you well. Then he lowered his head and looked at her gently and used the warm towel to wipe her blushing face. While Liu Duo hadn't reacted yet, he reached out and took off her clothes, revealing her collarbone. Immediately after her smooth shoulders were also exposed, making her blush with embarrassment. In the blink of an eye, Liu Duo reacted and pushed second brother away, saying repeatedly, Second brother, you're so bad. Unexpectedly, second brother then pushed Liu Duo against the wall and leaned down to look into her eyes ambiguously and said that he had seen her naked for a long time. Why was Little Duo Duo still so shy? Liu Duo looked at second brother's affectionate gaze and couldn't help but exclaim. Ye Liu felt sorry for Liu Duo because her health hadn't fully recovered, so he didn't continue with the next step, but only gently hugged her in his arms and gently coaxed her to sleep. But Ye Liu saw that Liu Duo was still depressed and unhappy and asked if she missed her mother and younger brother. Liu Duo denied this when she heard it and said that she was just curious why they had left home. Second brother didn't believe this when he heard it because Liu Duo was someone who said one thing but thought another. The next day, Liu Duo opened the door to welcome the fresh air of the morning. Just then, her younger brother ran over and said anxiously, Big sister, mother has had an accident. My younger brother rushed back like this. It seems that something bad has happened. The younger brother threw himself into his sister's arms and said, Last night my younger brother and mother finally found a place to rest, but the road song came to us and said that father was looking for my younger brother and mother, so he broke his leg. Mother was so anxious that she went to visit father, but she hadn't returned all night. After he finished speaking, the younger brother began to sob. Seeing this, his older sister hurriedly comforted him, saying that perhaps she was just a little busy. The younger brother immediately refuted this when he heard it. Mother already wanted to divorce father. She wouldn't stay in the Liu family anymore. Grandmother must have locked mother up. Speaking of grandmother, the younger brother's expression became even more serious, and he said that if his sister wouldn't go, he would go by himself. After he finished speaking, the younger brother quickly walked outside. No matter how Liu Duo called out, the younger brother didn't turn around. Perhaps the younger brother thought that his sister was so indifferent because she resented their mother for not stopping their grandmother from selling her. Third brother stood to one side and thought that the younger brother should have left from the beginning instead of trying to win sympathy here. Liu Duo didn't say anything when she heard this. She didn't know whether this coldness of hers would allow her conscience to be at ease. While she was in a daze, eldest brother suddenly came over and reached out to gently stroke Liu Duo's head. It seemed that eldest brother had seen through her thoughts and told her not to do anything she would regret. At this moment, Liu Duo seemed to gradually understand. That's right, even if she was only the original owner's mother, how could she bear to ignore her? She asked asked eldest brother to go with her to the Liu family home. Third brother also wanted to go when he saw this, but Liu Duo was worried that third brother would cause trouble, so she used the excuse that he had to carry bamboo shoots for second brother to refuse. Third brother was stunned when he heard this. Then Liu Duo went to the Liu family home with Ye Yang. The Liu family home was located in a quiet house at the foot of the mountain. The hens in the yard were eating bugs. Suddenly a sound broke the silence, causing the chickens and dogs to jump. 
Lu Ran was kneeling in front of his grandmother, miserably begging to see his mother. However, because their mother and son had left home, her appearance was very fierce, and she scolded the younger brother as a lowly brat. Immediately after she raised her foot and kicked Lu Ran directly in the face, her younger brother was beaten so that he vomited blood. Next, the younger brother was dragged by the hair by his grandmother, along with curses. Grandmother raised the chicken feather broom in her hand and repeatedly hit her younger brother's back, blood splattering everywhere. At that moment, Lu Duo had time to bring eldest brother. Lu Duo immediately shouted angrily. The old woman paused when she heard this. Xiao Duo saw the bloodstains from the beating on her younger brother's back and wondered why she was so cruel to the child. Her younger brother stopped crying when he saw his sister come to his rescue and immediately smiled. Just now, grandmother glared at her, rolled up her sleeves and said that she was short of money and told her to hurry up and give her money to show her filial piety. Lu Duo thought to herself, she really respected her too much. She said, I have nothing to do with your Lu family anymore, and scolded her as a terrible old woman. Just then, a man ran over and said, Duo or younger sister, even if you were sold, you still have the Lu surname. Then he moved his face closer to Lu Duo's lips. Grandmother has raised you for more than 10 years. Isn't it right for you to give her some money? After he finished speaking, he looked at her with a very cunning expression, as if he wanted to eat her. Then, he pulled his hand out of his pants and lifted Lu Duo's chin. Eldest brother grabbed the man's hand. The man looked up at him, so scared that he peed his pants. Eldest brother didn't pay any attention to him, and he pulled up the man's cheap shirt. At this moment, he was just like a mouse, being held up in the air by eldest brother. However, he was still stubborn and shouted for him to put him down, or else it would be over. Grandmother saw this from the side and raised the chicken feather broom in her hand to hit eldest brother. But just as she was about to hit him, Liu Duo rushed over and slapped her, causing her to be thrown back several meters. Her old bones seemed to have fallen apart. At that moment, another man ran over and anxiously called out Mother Mother. Lu Duo was stunned when she heard this. She didn't expect that this man was the father of the original owner of this body. Wasn't it said that he had fallen and broken his leg? It seemed that it was just to deceive her mother to come back. The man helped his mother up and scolded Lu Duo repeatedly. He said that she had brought her husband to beat up her mother's family. How could she do such an unfilial thing? Lu Duo had to argue with him when she heard this. Your wife and children are beaten by this old woman all day long, and you still defend her. You are really a fool of filial piety. Those words hit the nail on the head, causing the man to lower his head. Then Lu Duo's face darkened, and she approached her. Didn't you want money? Then let's make a deal. Then she made an eight with her hand and said, how about selling Lu Ran to me for 800 tails? When her father heard this, he scolded Lu Duo, but her grandmother seemed to be blinded by money, and she said that she could sign and seal it right away. Grandmother was secretly happy 800 tails. This was the amount of money she would have earned from farming for hundreds of years. At that time, her father said that if Lu Ran was sold, the family would be extinct, but she said that he was still young and could have another child. She also said that with money, what kind of beautiful girl could not be found? Before her father could continue, Lu Ran ran over with disheveled hair. He stood outside the door and cried. I agree to sell myself to my sister. Everyone's face froze when they heard this. Lu Ran continued, but before I go, I want to see my mother. His mother was locked in an old, dilapidated, thatched hut. She lay weakly on a wooden bed. The window on the east side was the only way for her to see the world. Two jars of pickles were her only food to sustain her life. At that moment, the three of them pushed the door open and entered. When the younger brother saw his mother in such a pitiful state, he ran towards her and looked up at her with a look of pity. The mother smiled and looked at him gently and said that she would be fine. When she learned that Lu Ran would follow her sister in the future, she stroked his head and told him to be obedient in the future. The younger brother wanted to take his mother with him, but she said that he should not cause trouble for his older sister. Moreover, the mother could not leave her husband. Then she looked at Lu Du and said, I'll leave Lu Ran to you. When the younger brother heard this, he wiped away his tears, and Lu Duo nodded. They returned home by nightfall. Lu Duo was carefully disinfecting her younger brother's wound. At this moment, there was a sound outside the door, and when the two of them turned to look, they saw four handsome older brothers standing outside the door. The younger brother was a little nervous when he saw his older brothers, so Lu Duo gently 
gently put her arm around his shoulder and proudly said to the outside, From now on, Ranner will be a part of our family. I hope everyone will take good care of him. The three older brothers responded with a welcome, but there was one person who was still angry and did not welcome the new member. Liu Duo saw this and pinched his ear and sternly warned him that he was not to bully Ranner in the future. Third brother's ear was pinched so painfully that he could not help but beg for mercy repeatedly. Just now, eldest brother who had a gentle personality was wiping the glass when he suddenly felt a chill on his waist. He stopped what he was doing. When a hand was about to touch eldest brother's bladder, he turned around and saw that it was Liu Duo and was stunned. Liu Duo hugged him. Her body pressed tightly against Ye Yang's muscular back, causing his face to turn red. Liu Duo's face also flushed. Meeting such a valiant man, Liu Duo had been craving for it for a long time. Ye Yang seemed to have seen through her thoughts, and he took her hand and pushed her to the ground, looking at her with deep affection. At this moment, Liu Duo's breath became rapid. Looking at eldest brother, who was gentle and handsome, his eyes seemed to pierce straight into her heart. Eldest brother reached out his hand and caressed her flushed face. Liu Duo's pitiful appearance made eldest brother unable to control himself, and he leaned in close to her thin lips. Just then a clang was heard outside the door. Ranner's face flushed, and she raised her hand to cover her face, saying that she did not see anything. The next day, when Liu Duo was wearing her new clothes, she suddenly heard someone calling her, Ka. She turned around and saw her younger brother dressed like a scholar, and he shyly lowered his head and said, Does it look strange for me to dress like this? Liu Duo walked over and smiled, saying, Ranner looks very scholarly dressed like this. She asked him, Are you going to school? I can take you there. Her younger brother blushed when he heard this and asked his sister if she wanted him to take the imperial examinations in the future. Liu Duo told him, Studying does not necessarily mean that you will achieve anything. Just knowing how to read and write is enough. However, her younger brother said, I must take the imperial examinations and I must become a high-ranking official to protect my sister. Liu Duo smiled gently like a mother when she heard this. Then she pinched the cheek of this lovely little boy, which made him furious. Her elder sister found this very speechless. At the same time, third brother came over dressed in white. He said the way to the school is very far. We have to set off early. Liu Duo looked at Ye Mo and thought to herself, when did he become so gentle and elegant? She rubbed her eyes, not believing her own eyes. Was he still the violent madman he was before? After an unknown amount of time, the three of them finally arrived at the school. The school was located in the middle of a quiet garden. Third brother opened the door slightly to look inside and saw that the students were reciting poetry. Man's nature is originally good, not doing homework is a hero. Even third brother could not help it and wanted to recite poetry. Looking up at the bright moon, bowing my head to remember my hometown, the two people beside him were stunned by third brother's literary talent. At that moment, a voice made third brother pause. An old man with white hair stood nearby, looking at third brother in disbelief. Then, he walked up to him and asked why Yemo was here. Then he stroked his beard and sighed. Master is very sorry that third brother had to miss the Tongxi exam that year. Hearing this, third brother clasped his hands together and raised them, saying that he had no intention of taking the imperial examinations. He had come this time to send his sister-in-law to school. Liu Duo looked at third brother who was so elegant and thoughtful. Although she knew that he had gone to school, she did not expect Yemo to be such a good student. At that moment, a voice interrupted the two of them. Liu Ran went over and introduced her herself to the teacher, saying that she wanted to be the teacher's student. The teacher smiled when he heard this. Seeing that the little boy was so smart, he went over and patted the little boy's head, meaning that he had accepted the little boy as his student. Humat, he told the two people standing beside him to come and pick up the little boy in the evening. Just now, third brother took Lu Duo to a noodle shop and ordered two bowls of beef noodle soup. Before that, they had already bought pens, ink paper, and ink stones for Liu Ran to go to school. At this moment, Liu Duo looked at the paper and ink in silence. She didn't know if there was anything else missing. Just then, third brother picked up a towel from the table next to him and wiped Liu Duo's sweat. The violent Yimo had become so gentle, but Liu Duo just blushed and stammered to thank him for his gentleness, which made her not know what to do. Unexpectedly, third brother suddenly became fierce, complaining that he had wasted both money and effort effort because of Lu Ran. Lu Duo wanted to retort when she heard this, saying that they had been asking her to have children for them every day. Now that they had a child, they could just take it as practice for taking care of children. 
third brother blushed when he heard the topic of childbirth, saying that Liu Duo was such a shameless girl, talking about such dark things in public. At that moment, the sound of scolding came from outside the door. Several men were beating a man outside, but when she looked closely, she saw that this was not her cousin, Liu Qing. It seemed that he had been beaten for owing money. Liu Duo thought of his ugly face yesterday and felt nauseous, so she told third brother to go somewhere else to eat. Unexpectedly, third brother was eating happily and didn't pay any attention to her. Liu Duo was very angry when she saw this, but at that moment the sound of falling, Duo Mume made her freeze. Her cousin had a swollen face and was crying as he crawled towards her. Then he hugged Liu Duo's leg and asked her to lend him a hundred tails of silver and said that if he didn't pay back the money, he would be beaten to death. Just then, third brother rushed forward and grabbed Lu Qing's hand, glaring at him with a very fierce look, and told him to speak properly and not to resort to violence. Liu Duo stood beside him with a very ugly expression. She said, now we are not related. Why should we lend you money? Besides, didn't your grandmother just receive 800 tails? Could it be that you lost it all? Her cousin was speechless when he heard this. Third brother pushed him away. Then Yimou turned and left with Liu Duo, leaving her cousin lying on the ground being beaten. The shirt he had bought for a cheap price was trampled on. About 66 minutes later, Lu Qing was beaten so badly that blood was coming out of his orifices. He looked at the backs of the two people leaving with hatred. In the evening, Lu Duo was taking a bath. The heat and the fragrance made her relax. Both her body and mind were immersed. At that moment, a hand opened the bathroom door. The person tiptoed and walked towards the bathtub as if walking on thin ice. Then the person carefully got into the tub, but no matter how careful they were, Lu Duo still heard the sound of water. When she turned to look, third brother had already soaked more than half of his body in the tub. His eyes were hazy with mist, and he said that he had only come to bring her more petals. He told her not to speak loudly. Liu Duo was stunned when she saw this, and her face flushed. When she finally reacted, she covered her body with her hands and sank into the water. Then she picked up the wash basin next to her and hit third brother in his weak spot. Third brother was in so much pain that he cried out. At this time, Liu Duo was covering her two little rabbits in front of her chest and said with a flushed face, only a ghost would believe that you came to bring me petals. Third brother covered his there and was in so much pain that he couldn't speak. A moment later, her younger brother heard the noise and ran to the door and asked anxiously what was wrong and even called for his brother-in-law. The elder sister wanted to cry when she heard this. She didn't know how to explain this. A moment later, Lu Duo put on her clothes and went out and told the little boy that she was just afraid of mice. But when Liu Ran saw the red marks on his sister's neck, he was very scared. He asked his sister anxiously what was wrong. Lu Duo rubbed her neck and said calmly, maybe it was a mosquito bite. Then she ran away leaving her younger brother standing there, not knowing what to do. The second brother stood behind and laughed wickedly. Then he pushed open the bathroom door but found that there was no one inside. He muttered to himself, could it be that I guessed wrong? Right. At this moment, third brother was holding his breath underwater and secretly cursed this wicked second brother. Earlier, third brother and eldest brother were planting in the field when they heard someone calling from behind. It turned out to be Lu Duo calling them. Lu Duo said that she was bored at home, so she brought second brother to find them. She asked them what vegetables they were going to plant. Eldest brother said that he hadn't thought about it yet, but third brother said that he wanted to plant broad beans. Unexpectedly, Lu Duo ignored third brother. She went to eldest brother and said that he could plant tomatoes and make tomato sauce to sell. Third brother refused when he heard this saying that those things were so rotten that no one would take them, even if they were thrown in the field. And they were so sour and bitter that even dogs wouldn't eat them. When second brother heard this, he tried to suppress his anger and hugged Xiao Duo. Duo saying, Xiao Duo has the ability to turn something bad into something wonderful, and scolded third brother for not saying anything good. Liu Duo also frowned and looked at third brother with impatience. She thought that the bamboo shoot season was over, and they had to provide other special foods to maintain their cooperation with the restaurant. Third brother suddenly shouted angrily, interrupting Liu Duo's train of thought. Then the two of them began to argue. At that moment, Li Chun Mai passed by and saw this scene and secretly scolded Liu Duo for being a bitch and angrily broke the branch of a tree beside her in two. In the blink of an eye, it was time for the sun to set. Third brother had finished working in the field and was about to leave when he suddenly heard a coquettish voice from behind. When he saw that it was Li Chun Mai, he just asked coldly, 
what was the matter? Li Chen Mai lowered her head, her face flushed with embarrassment, and said, Now everyone in the village is talking about something. Everyone says that Lu Duo can't have children. Third brother's face became fierce, and he asked sternly, Who is going around talking nonsense like that? Li Chen Mai broke out in a cold sweat when she heard this. She thought to herself, Didn't third brother just have an argument with Lu Duo? Why does he have such an expression? She said, I don't know. I just heard that Lu Duo has been in the Yi family for so long, but her stomach hasn't shown any reaction. After she finished speaking, she rushed to Yemo and said, That third brother do you like children? Li Chen Mai thought to herself that if Yemo said that he liked children and Liu Duo couldn't have children, then her chance would come. But when she turned around, third brother suddenly said, What does this have to do with you? Seeing that the person in her heart was about to run away, Li Chen Mai immediately rushed towards him, put her arm around him and said hurriedly, Third brother, I like you. I really like you. Then Chen Mai closed her eyes again. Her face flushed as she shouted, Liu Duo can't have children. I'll have children for you. Third brother heard this and shook her hand away, warning Chun Mai not to talk nonsense. Who wants to have a child with you? Just as the two of them were arguing, they were suddenly interrupted by a voice. Lu Duo and eldest brother were standing right in front of them and said, Third brother is really interesting, standing in front of the door, discussing having children with others. Third brother's face turned red when he heard this and immediately put his arm around Lu Duo to explain. Unexpectedly, Lu Duo didn't show any respect and pushed Ye Mo away. Then she walked coldly towards Li Chun Mai. Li Chun Mai's repeated shamelessness made Liu Duo unbearable and raised her hand to slap her in the face. The sound of the slap seemed to echo throughout the land and made her completely stunned. When she reacted, she rubbed her face and asked why she had hit her. Liu Duo put her hands on her hips and said sternly, because you are shameless and I hit you because you are shameless. At this moment, Li Chun Mai's face became more and more painful and these words made her even angrier. Finally, when her anger reached its peak, she raised her hand and wanted to slap Liu Duo. But when she was about to hit her eldest brother, grabbed her hand. Li Chen Mai saw eldest brother standing tall behind her and subconsciously called out eldest brother. But Ye Yang's face was expressionless and told her not to call him that. Then, another slap sent Li Chen Mai flying. These two slaps made Liu Duo's hand hurt. She said, I'm sorry, I really couldn't take it anymore. Then she took the brothers into the room, leaving the pitiful Li Chen Mai kneeling on the ground. Earlier, fourth brother was about to take off his clothes and go to bed when Liu Duo suddenly rushed into his room with a roll of cloth in her hand. She pressed herself against fourth brother and asked him to look at her work. It seemed to be a dress for a girl. Because the temperature had risen recently and it was over 30 degrees, Lu Duo wanted fourth brother to make clothes for her. After fourth brother finished reading, his face was red and his heart was beating fast and said, isn't the skirt a little too short and it shows all your thighs? Lu Duo almost vomited blood when she heard this. She thought to herself, the ancients are too conservative. She had no choice and begged Ye Lang to help her and promised that she would only wear it at home. Ye Lang blushed when he heard this. After thinking about it, he agreed to Liu Duo. Liu Duo was overjoyed when she heard this. At this moment, second brother stood beside her and smiled wickedly and said, normally at times like this, shouldn't someone come out and stop it? However, the person who should have stopped it was hiding in the corner of the house, trembling. Because Li Chen Mai was slapped today, third brother never dared to provoke Liu Duo again. Second brother said lightly, it must be because you are too bored in normal times that Li Chen Mai always bothers you like this. But just then a rather rough voice came from outside. Second brother seemed to be quite familiar with this voice and suddenly had a bad feeling. Wang Xiaotui ran in with a red face and kept saying, Liu Er, Liu Er, I miss you so much. Lu Duo found it both funny and annoying. She asked if second brother was still in contact with him. Third brother also smiled wickedly. It seems that second brother is a bit casual in normal times. Second brother's face darkened when he heard this. Then his tone became a little serious and warned Wang Xiaotui to be careful what he said. Wang Xiaotui was speechless when he heard this. His face flushed, looking like a charming wife. Then he sighed again and said that although he didn't like women, his family had arranged a marriage for him and forced him to marry Li Chen Mai of the Li family. He wanted to hear second brother's opinion. At this moment, Liu Duo had just taken a sip of red tea. After hearing this, she spat out the red tea in her mouth. This is such a bloody story, I can't help but sigh that the world is really wonderful. The couple who had their eyes on her brother were about to become a couple. At this moment, second brother stroked his chin 
Although I think it's good for the two of you to be together, it's better to make your own decision about marriage. Wang Xiaotui's face was full of helplessness and said, apart from second brother, it doesn't matter who it is. If you think it's good, then choose her. Third brother laughed so hard that he couldn't close his mouth. He also wished them an early birth of a son. Third brother thought to himself, Xiaotui, you are my benefactor. As long as Li Chenmai doesn't come to cause trouble, Liu Duo will not be angry with him anymore. Liu Duo just put on her new super short black dress and waved her hands and feet to dance happily. But when third brother and fourth brother saw Liu Duo dressed so coolly, they had nosebleeds. Second brother laughed wickedly and held Liu Duo back and said Liu Duo's clothes make people feel too hot and they make them have nosebleeds. Third brother, fourth brother blushed when he heard this and covered his face in embarrassment. At that moment, second brother picked up a lock of Liu Duo's hair and smelled it and asked if she wanted to do that with him tonight. Liu Duo blushed when she heard this and immediately said that she was not that kind of casual person. Person. Then she used the excuse of having to fix her dress to pull fourth brother away from there. This sudden action made fourth brother blush and his heart beat faster. Second brother was very disappointed when he saw this. Third brother's face also showed a look of dissatisfaction. A moment later, fourth brother entered the room. His face flushed and his head bowed and asked her what dress she needed to fix. But unexpectedly, Lu Duo approached fourth brother and asked in a soft voice, Why don't you dare to look me in the eye? Do I look so ugly in this? Yi Lang blushed and said, Duo Er looks beautiful, no matter what she wears, I'm just not used to it. After saying this, he immediately took the thin blanket next to him to cover the exposed part of her body. Because Ye Lang didn't want anyone else to see Liu Duo. Liu Duo felt very warm when she heard this, and she hugged Fourth Brother and said that there was no one else here. Fourth Brother smelled the light fragrance on her body, and he really wanted to get closer to her. However, this ambiguity made Fourth Brother's heart beat faster, and he felt his body stiffen. Liu Duo saw that Fourth Brother's heart was beating so fast, and she felt that something was wrong. The thin blanket on her body was thrown off, and she looked around anxiously. She wanted to go and get some medicine for him, but Yilang hugged her tightly. He didn't want Lu Duo to leave him, even for a moment. Lu Duo didn't expect Fourth Brother to be so proactive, and she was surprised and blushed her heart beating faster. Fourth Brother said in a slightly sad voice, I know that all the elder brothers are very good, so I'm very afraid that you will not need me anymore. Lu Duo gently comforted Ye Lang when she heard this, and said to him, In my heart, Fourth Brother is unique. After that, she looked at him affectionately, and murmured, I will not leave you, and I cannot leave you. After saying this, she kissed him softly. The excitement of that moment made them forget everything around them. The next day, there was a market in town, so Liu Duo took her younger brother to the market. Liu Nian was so old, but this was the first time he had been to the market. He was very curious about everything he saw. Liu Duo laughed when she saw this, and told him, if you like anything, just tell your sister. Suddenly, Liu Duo was attracted by the sound from the jewelry stall. Then she went over and picked the most expensive piece of jade. Looking at the transparent green jade in her palm, she thought to herself that this was very much in line with Fourth Brother's temperament. Then she remembered Fourth Brother's gentleness last night. If she bought him a piece, he would be very happy. However, when she was about to ask the price, she was bumped by a man in black behind her. While Lu Duo was not paying attention, he reached out to her and stole the money bag hanging from her waist. This scene was witnessed by her younger brother. He hurriedly shouted, Thief! However, the man in black slipped into the crowd and escaped. Lu Duo saw this and hurriedly took her younger brother to catch the thief. There were many alleys in the town. A moment later, the stupid thief ran into a dead end. Lu Duo stood still and sternly warned him to return the money bag. Unexpectedly, the man in black smiled and said four words in a soft voice come out. After he finished speaking, two strong men came out. However, when the man in black saw how beautiful the girl was, he said that if it weren't for the fact that he was so short of money, he would definitely have let himself relax first. The strong man told them not to be afraid and that they would be gentle and make them both very happy. At the same time, there was a giggling sound from behind them. The hooligans from all four sides approached and surrounded them. Yu Duo thought to herself, oh no, it seems that I've fallen into a trap. She picked up the bamboo stick in the corner of the wall and got into a fighting stance, glaring at the thugs with fierce eyes and sternly warning them not to come any closer. If anyone dares to come, I will beat them up. The thugs couldn't help but laugh when they saw her. At that moment, Liu Duo took advantage of the fact 
that they were not paying attention and raised her bamboo stick to hit them. But of course, Liu Duo knew that the minority could not beat the majority. While the thugs were focused on her, she used the ruse of the tiger, leaving the mountain to tell Liu Nian to quickly go and call for reinforcements. Liu Nian ran out as soon as he heard this. Just a moment later, the little boy suddenly stopped because he seemed to see something in front of him. The little boy looked closely and saw that it was a person. However, when the little boy ran closer, it was his cousin Liu Qing. The little boy told him that his sister was in trouble. His cousin suddenly laughed slyly when he heard this and thought to himself that Liu Duo deserved it. If it weren't for the fact that she hadn't lent him money, he wouldn't have been beaten up so badly that his leg was broken. He told Lu Nian, come home with me. Your grandmother misses you very much at home. He held the little boy's hand tightly and wanted to force him to go home. Lu Nian was so scared that he broke out in a cold sweat. But at that time, if there were no surprises, then something unexpected would definitely happen. Four young masters with extraordinary temperaments walked out of the alley. The young master holding the fan walked over. Little boy, don't be afraid. Is this the one who is bullying you? Lu Nian hurriedly shouted when he heard this. Please save my sister. It was late in the evening when third brother came home and kicked open the door. Because he had heard that Liu Duo had been robbed, he asked sternly, is it true? The others were silent when they heard this. But when third brother saw the strange man beside him, he took his anger out on him and asked fiercely, who are you? Why are you in my house? The young master spoke softly. My humble name is Dongfang Ming. Today I met Liu Nian, the younger brother, and he begged me to save his sister. However, when we arrived, she had already been taken away. He said that there was only a piece of paper left at the scene. He reached into his shirt, took out the piece of paper, and showed it to third brother. It said, at the hour of the ox tomorrow, find a girl to bring 5,000 tails to the forest of silence to redeem the person. If anyone else is discovered, they will kill her immediately. Third brother was shocked when he learned that Liu Duo had been captured by bandits. Then he crumpled up the paper in frustration and was about to go up the mountain to save Liu Duo. Dong Feng Ming went over and patted Ye Mo on the shoulder and told him not to act so rashly and said that he had a way to save Liu Duo. The other brothers all looked at him when they heard this and so they all went to a clothing store in town. A moment later, the proprietress said with a smile, just do as the young master says. Then a sexy girl was led out by two other girls. The proprietress was so surprised that her jaw dropped. Dong Feng Ming was also very surprised. It turned out that this beautiful girl was second brother in disguise. Second brother winked at everyone, and the shop assistants all blushed. Third brother got goosebumps when he saw this, and couldn't help but sigh that second brother was really a flirt. At the same time, Lu Duo was hiding in a dark room. She didn't understand why these people had to kidnap her, and wondered if Nian Ni had been able to contact her brothers. Liu Duo was holding a piece of broken tile and using it to cut the rope. This was something she had managed to hide when she was struggling earlier. She wondered if she would be able to cut the rope. Just then, the sound of a disgusting woman's voice came from outside the door. Liu Duo looked up and broke out in a cold sweat. The person gently pushed the door open and was holding a bowl of something in her hand. The person standing outside the door was none other than the bastard Liu Qing. His cousin laughed slyly when he saw Liu Duo like this. Then he pulled the cloth out of Liu Duo's mouth and pulled it straight down. Now that Liu Duo could be seen, he decided to vent his anger at being crippled on her. And he decided to vent his anger at being crippled on her. Liu Qing raised the bowl of chronic poison, and with his right hand, he pinched Liu Duo's mouth and tried to pour it all into her mouth. But just then, Lu Duo managed to cut the hemp rope and stood up abruptly and raised the sharp piece of tile in her hand and slashed it across her cousin's eye. Along with Liu Qing's scream, a lot of fresh blood fell to the ground. His cousin was stunned when he saw the red liquid falling from his face. Mel. When he finally reacted, he strangled Liu Qing's neck and said he wanted to kill her. But just then, a foot kicked the cousin straight in the face and kicked him right in the groin. He was kicked more than 10 meters away. Then he was pinned down by several thugs. At this time, the bald man said sternly, you can't kill her, we still have to use her to get the money. He continued, it's almost time now, tie that girl up and take her to the forest of silence. Unexpectedly, Lu Duo approached her cousin and scolded him. You're really useless. You have to rely on bandits to avenge me. It's really ridiculous. His cousin was very angry when he heard this and wanted to rush up and deal with Lu Duo, but was held back by the thugs. At this time, the two bandits laughed at his cousin and said, the girl is right. You are really both evil and cowardly, inciting us to kidnap your cousin. It's time for the appointment to deliver the money. Second brother went to the forest of silence 
silence alone to deliver the money, carrying a large chest of silver. Looking at the girl's graceful back, Luduo was stunned. This back seemed a bit familiar. When she saw that the girl was second brother in disguise, she was very surprised. Luduo was held by the bandits with a sword to her neck and did not dare to move. At this time, the bald man instructed Thuihua behind him. Go get the ransom money. When Thuihua opened the box and saw a lot of silver inside, he was very fascinated. At that time, second brother suddenly went to the front of the robbers and acted coquettishly and shyly said, Brother, look, she's so considerate. Do you want to take her with you? He even put his arm around the bald man's shoulder, making him blush and his heart beat faster. He leaned close to his ear and said, Take me back as your mistress. Then he pushed the knife away from Liu Duo and said that the Imperial Guards had already surrounded this place that they should let the girl go first, so that her four fiancés would relax their vigilance and take him as a hostage. That way we can retreat safely. Thuihua blushed when he heard this and told the bald leader that this beauty's idea is good. Why don't we just do what she says? Second brother pushed Liu Duo away and said, go quickly, don't ruin Mai and these big brother's plans. The bandits were overjoyed to hear such words from the beauty. Second brother covered his face and said softly, duo or go quickly, go as far as you can. Liu Duo was stunned when she heard this. She had never thought that second brother would be willing to give himself up to ensure her safety. Just then, his cousin found out that there was only a banknote in the box, and the rest was just blank paper. He shouted, We've been tricked. The bald man glared at second brother when he heard this, and asked what was going on, after saying that second brother blocked the knife in front of him. The knife fell to the ground. The bandit was no match for second brother without a weapon. He kicked Thuy Hua away. Then, he punched him straight in the bladder, and told Liu Duo to run down the mountain. But before Liu Duo had run a few steps, a hand reached out towards her and grabbed her groin, making her scream. Her cousin Lu Ching grabbed her hair and scolded, you bitch, let's see where you can run. Suddenly, there was a whistle in the forest. His cousin was dumbfounded. A moment later, three wild wolves appeared in front of them. The leader of the wolves howled, and countless wild wolves surrounded the bandits. Huihua was startled. Lu Duo took advantage of Lu Ching's inattention to push him away. Unexpectedly, his cousin saw that Lu Duo was about to run away, so he snorted and pulled out a knife from his waist. Then he raised his right hand and was about to stab Liu Duo in the back. A scream came from behind. When she turned around to look, second brother was already standing behind her. Second brother used his body to block the knife for Liu Duo. His cousin was stunned when he saw that he had stabbed the wrong person. At this time, second brother endured the pain and looked at Liu Duo and tried to say every word. Second brother will not let anything happen to you. Liu Duo's face changed when she heard this. She never thought that second brother would risk his life to protect her. At this time, second brother was lying quietly on the bed. The wounds had been bandaged. Fourth brother was crying next to second brother. Ye Liu was angry when he heard this cry, as if he was dead. So he opened his eyes and told fourth brother not to cry anymore. Your second brother is still alive. Yi Lang cried even louder after hearing this, because every time he thought about second brother being stabbed, he felt very sad. At this time, second brother suddenly stood up and gently stroked Yi Lang's head and told him, isn't it just a stab wound? Second brother is not that weak. Suddenly he felt a sharp pain in his back. Ye Liu was sweating from the pain, but he had to endure it and not make them worry. Just then, Liu Duo came in with a bowl of soup. Seeing that second brother was not lying still, she was very angry. She rushed over, pushed Ye Liu off the bed, and told him not to move around. Otherwise, her wound would be torn open. What she did almost sent second brother away. Liu Duo saw that he was uncomfortable and reacted as if she had been a little too forceful earlier. But immediately after that, second brother suddenly held Liu Duo's hand and looked at her affection passionately saying that as long as Lu Duo cared for him every day, his wound would heal faster. Then he pursed his cherry lips and asked Lu Duo for a reward. Lu Duo blushed when she saw this. A sound came from outside the door, interrupting their ambiguous moment. Young Master Dongfang bowed his head and walked in shyly. Second brother thought to himself, why did Mr. Dongfang come here? Lu Duo blushed when she saw how handsome Dongfang Ming was and pushed Ye Liu away, because not only was young Master Dongfang handsome, but he was also the boss of Sister Fang, with enough money to spend for a lifetime. Lu Duo explained shyly, I went to the Yamen to deal with the bandits earlier and met Mr. Dongfang. He wanted to come and see how second brother was doing. She smiled awkwardly, thanking the young master for his help. 
The young master said gently that there was no need to be so polite. Second brother was jealous when he saw Liu Duo like this. He put his hand on her shoulder, making her face flush. Second brother said, it is right to thank the young master properly. But now that I am injured, I am afraid that I will not be able to entertain the young master properly. Of course, the young master also heard second brother's intention to send him away. So he covered his mouth and laughed to hide his embarrassment. He said that the reason he came to visit Boss Ye today was also to discuss business with Boss Ye. Ye Liu was so old, but it was the first time he had heard someone call him boss. He was so excited that he almost fainted. He said that he was just working for Liu Duo. If there was any business, he would have to go to her. But Liu Duo felt embarrassed and angry that he kept clinging to her. Afterwards, fourth brother took Dong Fang Ming to the living room to discuss the tomato sauce business with Liu Duo. They talked for several hours. At this time, Liu Duo went outside and stretched thinking that eldest brother and third brother should be back soon. Just then a hand reached out towards her. Ye Liu darkly hugged her, making her blush. Lu Duo asked sternly why he got out of bed. Don't let the wound tear open. But second brother said that he had been lying down for a long time and wanted to move around a bit, and then said, I risk my life to save little Duo Duo. Shouldn't you give me a reward? Lu Duo turned around and smiled when she heard this. How about I make you a delicious meal tomorrow as a reward? You have been eating light food recently. Second brother lifted her small red face when he heard this and looked straight into her eyes affectionately. He said that he'd been eating vegetarian food recently and was tired of it so he wanted to eat meat. After saying that he moved his face closer to little Duo Duo and while she was not paying attention, he kissed her sweet red lips. Second brother lifted her chin and leaned down to kiss it, making Lu Duo blush and let out a series of delicate cries. But immediately after that, Lu Duo put her hand on second brother's chest and pushed him away, telling him not to do that. Unexpectedly, Ye Liu held her hand tightly and kissed it passionately saying little Duo Duo's birthday is coming soon. Liu Duo blushed when she heard this. She didn't even remember her own birthday, but second brother did. Second brother took Liu Duo's hand gallantly and said, Our little Duo, Duo is almost 15 years old. She can get married. Liu Duo kept hearing the words getting married and thousands of thoughts popped into her head. She had four fiancés, so wouldn't she have to marry all four brothers at once? She didn't know how she was going to divide up her wedding night. Her face flushed every time she thought about it. At this moment, second brother suddenly reached out and stroked her head, interrupting her train of thought, and asked if she was thinking about getting married. Liu Duo pursed her lips and denied it when she heard this. Unexpectedly, Liu Ye suddenly leaned into her ear and said that he was very much looking forward to the wedding night with her. Then he blew lightly into her ear, making her feel embarrassed and itchy. Just then, there was a cry outside the door, interrupting the sweet moment between them. Liu Duo's grandmother was lying on the ground, crying and begging them to spare Liu Qing. At the same time, fourth brother was comforting the old woman. Unexpectedly, the old woman pushed fourth brother away glared at him with a face full of disgust and told him to get lost. Liu Duo and second brother heard the noise and came out. Liu Duo walked over and said in a slightly serious tone, Liu Qing brought this upon himself. He can't live. So he was locked up in the prison to reflect on his actions. The old woman knelt down and begged them to spare Liu Qing when she heard this. She only had one grandson, but in her heart she was secretly cursing why Liu Duo didn't just die. She knelt down and crawled to Liu Duo. Grandma will kowtow to you as many times as you want. Seeing that Liu Duo didn't care, she raised her head and begged her miserably. She thought to herself that she had already done so much that surely the little bitch Liu Duo would soften her heart. But unexpectedly, Liu Duo slapped her, making the old woman dizzy and blind. When she calmed down and rubbed her fat face, she acted as if she was about to be executed by Liu Duo. Seeing this, she still glared at her and said in a harsh voice, Yesterday, Liu Qing injured my second brother. Even if I slapped you ten times, it wouldn't make me feel any better. Then she reached out and pointed at the old woman and told her to get lost, not to dirty her doorstep. But the old woman picked up a rock. At this moment, the old woman was so angry that she had lost all reason. She raised the rock and wanted to send Liu Duo to the Western Paradise. At the critical moment, someone tripped her right leg and she fell flat on her face. Then the rock fell to the ground. Fourth brother bravely stood in front of Liu Duo and warned her not to hurt Duo-er. 
Lu Duo hid behind Ye Ling, as timid as a little bird, and thought to herself, fourth brother is so cute when he's angry. At the same time, second brother also spoke up, saying, old woman, if you dare to hurt Xiao Duo, Duo, then be careful when you go out in the future. Just then, two figures walked over from afar. Big brother, third brother walked up and asked in a harsh voice, who is going to hurt Xiao Duo, Duo? Do you want to go up against the four brothers of the Ye family? The old woman was so scared that she trembled when she saw that all four brothers had had arrived and broke out in a cold sweat. She was a little dazed when she saw third brother walking towards her. She staggered backwards but was surrounded by the four brothers. Suddenly the old woman used her stunt double and rampaged wildly breaking through the brothers' defenses and running outside. But because she was so fast, her 100-pound body fell over. When she got up, she glared at Lu Duo again and kept asking about her 18th generation of ancestors. Third brother glared at her and said, if you dare to talk nonsense again, I will cut out your tongue. The old woman did didn't dare to stay any longer, and immediately ran home. Then, Big Brother came over and put his arm around Lu Duo and asked her if she was okay. Lu Duo said she was fine because Fourth Brother had protected her. Fourth Brother blushed when he heard this. At this moment, Lu Duo rolled up her sleeves and said, I've been delayed by that old woman for dinner. The brothers all agreed. Lu Duo felt very happy to see her family so harmonious and happy. On Lu Duo's birthday, Fourth Brother woke up early in the morning and combed Lu Duo's hair. At the same time, she looked at the hairpin that Ran Ran had given her and was stunned and thought to herself, my younger brother is really sensible. He only came home once every half a month to study, but he still remembered to give his sister a present. Then fourth brother picked up the hairpin and put it in her hair, so she was ready. At this moment, Luduo was as beautiful as a flower or jade. She was of marriageable age, so she was like a flower about to bloom. Then she looked at herself in the bronze mirror and saw how beautiful she was. She couldn't help but praise fourth brother for his skill. Fourth brother was embarrassed when he heard this and lowered his head. If Duar likes it, I can comb your hair every day. Lu Duo felt shy when she saw how considerate fourth brother was. The other brothers saw Lu Duo acting spoiled with Ye Ling and said that she was really a biased and evil person. Lu Duo made a face when she heard this and said, fourth brother is better than all of you. All you do is make me angry. After she finished speaking, she pulled out a fragrant bag and said, not only did fourth brother comb my hair, but he also gave me a fragrant bag that he embroidered himself. What about you? I'm afraid you don't even remember what day it is today. Second brother smiled gently and went over to hug Xiao Duo, Duo ambiguously, and said from today on, Lu Duo will be an adult. Second brother has always been looking forward to the wedding night. How could he forget? Liu Duo looked at second brother who was only thinking with his lower body and pushed him away. Unexpectedly, second brother grabbed her hand. She was a little stunned. Ye Liu pulled a jade bracelet out of his pocket. While she was not paying attention, he put it on her hand. Liu Duo was a little stunned by this sudden gift. Just then, third brother pushed second brother away and said it was his turn. Second brother was so angry. At this moment, third brother shyly took out his gift and wouldn't let Lu Duo say she didn't like it and made her wear it on her body every day. Then Lu Duo took the gift box from third brother's overbearing hand. She opened the box curiously and inside was a pair of tassel earrings. Third brother blushed and said, giving you earrings means that I will always be by your side, so you have to wear them every day. Second brother saw that third brother was so cultured, so he hurriedly asked what he should say if he gave a bracelet. Yemo thought for a moment and then said, a jade bracelet is like a heart that loves you, which means that second brother only has you in his heart. Second brother kept praising third brother for his eloquence and also made Xiao Duo Duo wear it every day. Liu Duo's face turned black when she heard this and thought to herself that these two people were going to stick to her. Then she turned around and shyly asked big brother what he was going to give her. Ye Yang put his hand in his shirt. However, after Lu Duo saw Big Brother's gift, she was stunned. This handsome man reached into his shirt and pulled out a dagger. Liu Duo was stunned by Big Brother's gift. At this moment, he looked embarrassed and said, I'm giving you this so you can peel apples. Liu Duo blushed when she heard this. In the past, she had to use a whole knife to peel apples. Big Brother had seen that. Liu Duo didn't expect Big Brother to remember that. Suddenly, she felt very warm. Suddenly, Yili went over and put his arm around Xiao Duo, Duo's shoulder in a dark way, because he wanted Xiao Duo Duo to give the older brothers a reward. Third brother was also looking forward to it when he heard this. Before Lu Duo could react, 
the two brothers puckered up and moved closer, making her face turn red. When she reacted, she waved her hand and knocked both of them away. Then she took big brother's and fourth brother's hands and went into the room. Second brother, third brother regretted it when they saw this and hurriedly apologized to Liu Duo. However, Liu Duo shouted angrily, making the two of them not dare to move. Then Liu Duo secretly took big brother and fourth brother into the room and locked the door. However, it was really awkward for two men and one woman to be alone in a room. Liu Duo suddenly smelled something burning. It turned out that the soup that Ye Ling was cooking had burnt. Then, he ran quickly towards the kitchen. Unexpectedly, as soon as fourth brother left, big brother couldn't take it anymore and grabbed Liu Duo's hand, making her face instantly turn red. At this moment, big brother's face was red, and he turned to the side and said that he also needed a reward. Hearing this, Liu Duo remembered that big brother was someone who wanted but didn't say it. Finally, Liu Duo went to big brother's room with him. Ye Yang went over and lifted her chin. At this moment, she thought to herself that he usually spoiled her. So, it was rare for him to make a request. It was really hard to refuse. So she let Big Brother block her lips. Liu Duo didn't resist at all. She even started to get lost in that sweet moment. She felt herself soften a lot. A moment later, Big Brother pushed her down. Liu Duo was stunned. At this moment, he bent down slightly and looked at her with very gentle eyes. Then he started to untie her belt. Liu Duo felt the heat on her waist. And her face turned red as she made charming cries. A moment later, the two of them were naked. Big Brother was licking his fingertips, where there was still some of Liu Duo's body fluid. Then he reached out and caressed Liu Duo's face. At this moment, her eyes had already become blurred because of this ambiguous breath. At the same time, his other hand also held her hand to make her feel more at ease. Just a moment later, the red petals fell down, and Liu Duo had changed from a girl to a woman. At the same time, Third Brother was wondering where Big Brother and Liu Duo had gone. But he suddenly heard the sounds coming from the room and froze. Then he poked a small hole in the paper window. When he saw the scene inside, he was immediately shocked. Yemo didn't expect Liu Duo to give it away so quickly. At that moment, he hugged his chest. Although he had been mentally prepared when he saw this scene with his own eyes, he could only feel his heart aching. Suddenly, a hand touched Yemo from behind. When Third Brother turned around to look, he froze. Big Brother and Liu Duo were having fun together. But before they could take a closer look, Big Brother heard the movement. He immediately said in a serious voice, and the two of them were so scared that their hands and feet were shaking. Then Liu Duo woke up. At this moment, Moment, her hair was a little messy and she was lying on the bed without any clothes on. She had just woken up and was still a little dazed and only felt a dull pain in her lower body. However, the sudden call of Duo Air made her wake up a little. She looked up and saw that her three older brothers were standing by the bed. She was immediately shocked and sat up straight and asked with a red face why they were here and why she was lying on the bed. Lu Duo suddenly remembered her love affair with Big Brother and her face turned red. Just then a hand touched her shoulder. Big Brother said seriously Duor, I will take responsibility for everything. At this moment, Third Brother also said, The older brothers thought they could accept the fact that they had one wife and four husbands, but after this incident they realized that they couldn't do it. Every time he thought about what happened last night, he felt a sharp pain in his heart. Liu Duo, who do you want to choose in the end? When Liu Duo heard his question, she fell into deep thought. She had promised before that the five of them would never leave each other, but now they all wanted to break their oath. The older brothers said that this was impossible because we all love you very much, so we can't accept anyone else being with you. Liu Duo was very confused when she heard this and asked Ye Yang for his opinion with a worried face. But the answer she got was no different from the other brothers. At this moment, Liu Duo asked again if she were to choose one of them, what would happen to the others? Ye Lu said that no matter who you choose, the other three will not leave and will even bless the two of you. Now Liu Duo couldn't make a decision and the older brothers decided to leave for a while and wait for Liu Duo to make a decision before returning. When she saw this, she quickly reached reached out and begged them not to leave. However, Lu Duo's plea also made her wake up from her dream. Lu Duo was stunned for a moment. Thankfully, it was just a dream. Then she sat up and felt her clothes, and there was no sticky feeling on her body. Could it be that Ye Yang had helped her take a bath? 
there was no one beside her. Liu Duo couldn't help but wonder where Big Brother had gone. At this moment, Ye Yang was taking Ye Liu and Imo to the forest to punish them for peeping last night. As the Big Brother, he naturally had to deal with it strictly. Two of them lowered their heads in embarrassment and awkwardness and said that they wouldn't dare to do it again next time. Unexpectedly, Ye Yang threw out a whip and said that he wanted to punish them in a different way. Then he said solemnly, you two brothers will spank each other's butts 30 times. Furthermore, you can't go back to sleep at night. When the two of them heard this, the words, oh no, appeared on their faces. Big brother, you are really cruel. When Ye Yang heard this, he glared at them fiercely and asked if there was anything wrong. When the two of them saw this, they quickly changed their attitude and picked up the whip and started to spank each other. But as soon as Ye Yang turned and walked away, Ye Mo immediately threw the whip on the ground. Then he told Ye Liu about Liu Duo and Big Brother, and Ye Mo looked up to the sky and complained to heaven and earth. Originally, he should be happy for Big Brother, but for some reason, he felt very uncomfortable. At this moment, Second Brother Ye Liu stepped forward and gently comforted him, because Ye Liu also sympathized with Ye Mo's feelings. The reason why everyone wants to be Duo-er's only man is because they love Xiao Duo Duo, so they hope that she only has them in her heart. If this continues, I may lose Xiao Duo completely. Liu Duo tidied up her messy clothes and walked out of the room. At this moment, she was still shuddering from the dream just now. But suddenly Ye Lang hurriedly ran in front of Liu Duo and told her that her parents had been waiting for her for a long time and said that they had something to talk to you about Duo Er. At this moment, Liu Duo thought it couldn't be that the old woman called them to beg for Liu Qing. Unexpectedly, her father said that Liu Duo should not let Liu Qing go. When Liu Duo heard this, she was stunned and thought that she had misheard. Unexpectedly, it was not begging at all. She saw her mother step forward and take Liu Duo's hand and said that her father and she she had realized their mistakes. Now we are no longer living with her. Then she lowered her head and said with a look of regret, the confusion of my parents in the past few years has made you suffer a lot. As she spoke, she reached into her sleeve and took out a packet of rice cakes and said that this was the cake you liked to eat the most before. Liu Duo took the cake and was stunned because the rice cakes that Liu Duo liked to eat were gone. Later Liu Duo secretly went to the kitchen and opened the cake and then carefully picked up a piece. But when she had only taken a small bite, suddenly tears kept flowing down. The taste made by her mother made Liu Duo very moved. At this moment, she remembered her previous life. Both her father and mother celebrated her birthday with her. Liu Duo thought that she would never see her parents again in the future, and tears and snot kept pouring down. At that moment, big brother and fourth brother walked in, and when they saw this scene, they were surprised and stunned, and hurriedly stepped forward to comfort Liu Duo. Ye Lang thought that Liu Duo was missing her parents. Ye Yang gently told her that if she wanted to cry, then cry. Immediately, Liu Duo threw herself into Ye Yang's arms and and cried her eyes out. At this moment, Liu Duo began to feel worried. Will the older brothers end up sacrificing themselves? After a while, Ye Liu and Ye Mo also returned home after sleeping outside for a night. As soon as Ye Mo entered the door, he cleared his throat and called out to Ye Lang, saying that he was starving to death and to quickly find something to eat. But suddenly, an angry shout made them freeze. Liu Duo was holding breakfast in her hand at this moment and asked them angrily where they had died last night, only to hear Ye Yang open open his mouth and say that they had done something wrong and had to go and receive their punishment. Unexpectedly, Ye Lu rolled up his trousers and revealed the wound on his knee to Liu Duo and even pretended to be pitiful and said, Yesterday, I was bitten to death by mosquitoes in the bamboo forest. When Liu Duo heard this, she felt very distressed. She felt that second brother's wound had only just healed and if she wanted to punish him, then she should punish third brother. When third brother heard this, he was furious and questioned Liu Duo what did she mean by this. But Liu Duo completely ignored Ye Mo and gently helped Ye Liu to sit down on the chair and then she went to get medicine for Ye Liu. At this moment, second brother looked at third brother and said with a smirk, Little third, look how Xiao Duo Duo cares about me. We are really not the same. When Ye Mo saw this, he was so angry and grumbled at second brother to shut up. Otherwise, he would send second brother to the west. After a while, Liu Duo brought the medicine and she carefully cleaned Ye Liu's wound while Ye Mo had to apply the medicine himself. At this moment, Liu Duo asked, 
why they had been punished by Big Brother. Third Brother was hit in the heart and froze. If Lu Duo knew that they had peeked at her, then she would definitely send them to their ancestors. So the two of them laughed out loud together and said evasively that there was nothing and they wanted to bury this matter at the bottom of society. So Second Brother stepped forward and blocked Xiao Duo Duo and said that tomorrow he had to go to a neighboring village to buy tomatoes with Little Third and asked her if she wanted to go with them. When Lu Duo heard this, she was overjoyed. Up until now, she had never been to a neighboring village. Liu Duo and the others were sitting on a hay cart to the neighboring village, and Liu Duo lifted the curtain from inside the cart to look. Oh my goodness, the tomatoes on the tree are all ripe. And after a while, they arrived at Kao Zhao village. Ye Liu and Ye Mo had just gotten off the horse when they were surrounded by the village girls, and they were so fascinated by the handsome men that they lost control. But second brother and third brother did not pay any attention to these ordinary girls, but only cared about helping Liu Duo get off the cart. And then they asked Liu Duo with a smirk if she was tired and if she needed them to give her a massage. When Liu Duo heard this, her face flushed, and she hoped that second brother could be a little more serious when he was outside. Third brother stood to one side and witnessed everything, and the sea of vinegar in his heart surged once again. Suddenly, some minor characters came over and asked them if they wanted to buy tomatoes. At this moment, Ye Liu said with a smile, Today we will pay three copper coins per caddy. Everyone can start picking tomatoes now. At the same time, Liu Duo clapped her hands twice, and the villagers immediately looked towards the source of the sound. Liu Duo told everyone to make sure to keep the tomatoes fresh, and if there was any stock left, it could not be kept for more than three days. When the villagers saw such an outstanding young lady, they could not help but gossip. The village women also admired Liu Duo very much, and said that it was truly blissful to be married to the powerful Ye brothers. At this moment, an old woman came over and asked with a smile, which one of the Yi brothers, this beautiful young lady, was the wife of. When second brother heard this, he just smiled faintly and did not answer, and told the old woman to guess. The old woman thought for a while and said that she must be big brother's wife. When third brother heard this, he immediately exploded and said fiercely that it was none of her business who they were married to. She indicated that she was a matchmaker in this area and could introduce them to wives, and also said that there were many beautiful young ladies in the village who had secret crushes on them. When Liu Duo heard this, she could not stop thinking about it. Yes, now that they were powerful, and they were both so handsome, it was impossible not to worry that they would be taken away by someone else. Just as she was in a daze, second brother came over and held Liu Duo's hand tightly, and of course, he saw what she was thinking. Immediately afterwards, Ye Liu came over and thanked the matchmaker for her offer, and said that he already had someone in his heart. At the same time, third brother also came forward and took Liu Duo's other hand hand and turned his head away with a shy expression and told the matchmaker that his heart also belonged to someone now. When Liu Duo saw the two brothers express their feelings so sincerely, she felt extremely happy at this moment. But suddenly a sound came from behind her that made her shiver. It turned out that two village girls were gossiping about Liu Duo and said that she must be a reincarnated fox spirit and had monopolized two brothers. When Liu Duo heard this, she was immediately furious and shouted angrily, which startled the two girls. Liu Duo put her hands on her hips and said, that she had not monopolized them. It was their business who they liked. At the same time, third brother also stood domineeringly in front of Liu Duo and told them that if they continued to talk nonsense, he would take out his knife and kill them. When the two girls saw third brother's fierce expression, they were so scared that they froze. At the same time, Ye Liu came forward to mediate the conflict and told everyone to quickly disperse and go pick tomatoes. After that, more than 10 baskets of fresh and delicious tomatoes were brought to the yard. Ye Mo was proficient in addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and was now calculating the price for the villagers. Liu Duo was sitting alone under a tree and holding a pen and starting to draw. At that time, the mischievous second brother was standing next to her, and seeing that Liu Duo was sitting by herself, he immediately sat down next to her and asked Liu Duo what she was thinking about. When Liu Duo heard this, her face flushed, and she said that she was thinking about a new outfit for her doll. She turned to ask Ye Liu how many tomatoes he had bought, and Ye Liu said that he had bought more than 100 caddies. When Liu Duo heard this, she was overjoyed, and said that this time she would be able to make a lot of tomato juice, and that that when they got back, she would make tomato juice for everyone. At this moment, Yiliu suddenly stood up 
and told little Duo Duo not to pay attention to what other people said, because he could not lose her. Then he raised his hand and stroked Lu Duo's face and said, Can we stay together for the rest of our lives? At this moment, Lu Duo thought she herself had never paid any attention to the opinions of others. Men can have three wives and four concubines, so why should women be faithful to one husband? If in the future, they have someone else in their hearts, she herself would not force anyone and would choose to leave on her own. Just a moment ago, Liu Duo was strolling in the street with her two elder brothers, and she told them to go and buy some sugar to make tomato juice while she went to find Fang Bi to play. Unexpectedly, Ye Liu came forward and grabbed Liu Duo tightly and whispered that he wanted to go with her and that Ye Mo could go and buy the sugar by himself. But suddenly an arm grabbed Ye Liu's shirt. When Ye Liu turned his head to look, he was stunned speechless. He saw Ye Mo with a sullen face questioning Ye Liu. What right do you have to order me around? Unexpectedly, a second later, Ye Liu suddenly covered Ye Mo's mouth and said that he had something to tell him. Ye Mo wanted to struggle, but at this moment, Ye Liu whispered to Ye Mo, Dong Fang Ming is probably in that clothing store. We have to follow and keep an eye on Liu Duo, or else that young master will snatch her away. Ye Mo still felt unconvinced after listening, and said that he could also go with them to keep an eye on Liu Duo. So in order to be fair, the two of them decided to play rock, paper, scissors to decide the winner. But in the end, Ye Mo still lost and he wanted to cry, but could not shed a single tear, and could only turn around and leave in anger. Lu Duo still did not know what had happened, and only glanced at them with a little doubt. Ye Liu and Liu Duo walked into the clothing store, but as soon as Lu Duo stepped into the store, she felt a chill under her feet. When she saw the scene in front of her, she was surprised and stunned. Unexpectedly, there was a large block of ice in the store. Liu Duo did not expect that there would be something like this in ancient times. Just then, Dong Fang Ming walked out with a gentle expression on his face. When Lu Duo saw how handsome he was, she immediately rushed over and asked him where he had gotten the block of ice. Dong Feng Ming said that it was transported here from the capital. Liu Duo felt that this was too wonderful and asked him if a large block of ice like this must have cost a lot of money. Dong Feng Ming said that it was just a small matter and that he could bring her several tons of ice like this with just a word. Ye Lu saw the two of them being so intimate and immediately could not keep calm any longer. So he stepped forward and pushed the young master away and put his arms around Liu Duo. He asked her if she liked the block of ice so much and what she wanted to do with it. When Liu Duo heard this, she smiled happily. She said that she wanted to make fruit salad and that it was very suitable for summer. The two elder brothers immediately turned their heads to look at her after hearing the word and they were stunned and did not know what it was. After a while, the servants brought up a lot of fruit and finally brought up a bowl of honey. All the ingredients were ready and all that was left was the shaved ice. Lu Duo then rolled up her sleeves and prepared to let the large block of ice in front of her taste her power. She took the tool and started to pound away. But after a long time, Lu Duo had only managed to chip off a tiny bit and it was not even enough to fill a bowl. By now she was sweating profusely and Lu Duo looked at the primitive tool in her hand and thought that this would not do. Without a specialized tool for making shaved ice, she would sooner or later tire herself to death. Just then Ye Liu suddenly stepped forward and told Lu Duo to rest and that he would leave the rest to second sister. But unexpectedly, Liu Duo raised her hand and touched his face. Ye Lu was stunned and bewildered. He saw that Liu Duo's face was flushed, and she said that she did not need to rest, and that Liu Duo would wipe the sweat off second brother. And so a moment later, a bowl of steaming shaved fruit salad was completed. Dong Fang Ming was stunned when he saw the shaved ice. He had lived for so long, but this was the first time he had ever seen such a rare thing. When Liu Duo saw this, she smiled happily and told Dong Fang Ming that it was very delicious. So he scooped up a spoonful with half belief, and when he put it in his mouth, he was immediately surprised. My god, so the block of ice was so delicious. Only then did Dong Fang Ming look at Liu Duo and could not help but sigh that Liu Duo was truly a strange girl. Just then Madame Fang came out and expressed her desire to invite Liu Duo to stay for dinner. But Liu Duo remembered that Ye Mo was still outside, so she hesitated to accept Madame Fang's invitation. Ye Liu seemed to see through Liu Duo's thoughts and immediately told her that he would tell third son to go back first. 
It is okay if we come back a little late. A moment later, Madame Fang's dinner was ready. Dong Fang Ming now poured a cup of osmanthus wine and asked Ye Liu if he could drink. Ye Liu of course could drink, but Liu Duo certainly did not want to let her elder brother drink. Did she? As he spoke, he wrapped his arms around Liu Duo, but in the blink of an eye, he was kicked away by her. At this moment, Liu Duo's face was cold as she said, you can have a few drinks with him, but do not get drunk. Ye Liu obeyed her and immediately downed a cup. In the blink of an eye, it was pitch black, and the two of them were riding in a carriage back home, and Ye Liu was clinging to Liu Duo in the carriage, mumbling that the wine just now was too strong, and that his head was aching, and then he leaned his forehead on Liu Duo's shoulder and gradually fell asleep. But a moment later, Ye Liu reached out and hugged Liu Duo tightly, and then greedily inhaled the scent of her body, causing Liu Duo's face to flush. At this moment, Ye Liu was burning hot and drunk. Ye Liu whispered that he was thirsty, and that he wanted to drink milk. When Liu Duo heard this, her face flushed, and she immediately slapped Ye Liu. Liu Duo shyly protected her body, and kept scolding Ye Liu in her mouth, saying that he was so bad. Ye Liu became even more excited, and said that he just wanted to drink some milk. How could that be bad? But when Ye Liu thought about it again, it seemed as if he understood something. Ye Liu immediately pressed Lu Duo down and asked if she was thinking about him wanting to drink that. As Ye Lu spoke, he blew gently into Lu Duo's ear, causing Lu Duo to feel both shy and itchy. At this moment, the old man appeared and said, Do you want to see what happens next? If you do, then like and subscribe. And so after a while, the two of them rode in a carriage back home. But as soon as they got home, Yemo saw that Ye Lu was not sober, and he could not remain calm. Yemo then carefully helped Ye Lu into the house, and as he helped him, he said that there was no more milk in the house, and that there was no more milk for him to sober up. When Lu Duo heard this, she was stunned and thought to herself that she did not expect that milk could sober someone up. It was truly unexpected. Just then, Ye Lu smiled wickedly and said that if there was no more milk, then that was fine. He had just drunk some. When Lu Duo heard this, her face flushed again. Ye Lu winked at Lu Duo, meaning that he wanted to sleep in the same room with little Duo Duo tonight. When Lu Duo saw this, she was furious and flatly refused him. Unexpectedly, Ye Lang spoke up for Ye Lu and said that he hoped that Duo Er could agree agree to Ye Liu's request. At this moment, Liu Duo felt that she could not believe it. Ye Lang was actually saying such things, and so Liu Duo reluctantly agreed to Ye Liu's request. Ye Liu was overjoyed when he received her consent, but unexpectedly, Liu Duo took Ye Lang's hand and left, and said that Ye Liu could sleep in her room, and that she would go and sleep in Ye Lang's room. When Ye Liu saw this, he felt like crying. Liu Duo then went to Ye Lang's room to make the bed, but Ye Lang was hiding in a corner with a sullen expression on his face, and he was feeling very uncomfortable. So he asked Liu Duo why she had not gotten drunk with Ye Liu. When Liu Duo heard this, she looked at Ye Lang in disbelief and said, What are you talking about? It was only then that Ye Lang realized that he had said something wrong, and he felt as if he had been shot in the heart and began to wave his arms and legs around. Ye Lang hurriedly asked her again why she was not sleeping in her own room. When Liu Duo heard this, she laughed. She said that it had been a long time since she had been to Ye Lang's room, and then Ye Lang suddenly asked Liu Duo if something had happened between between her and her elder brothers. Because recently, Ye Liu and Ye Mo had often been whispering something behind his back. It seemed as if they were talking about her and her eldest brother, but he himself did not know anything about it, and it was as if he had been left out by everyone. When Liu Duo heard this, she was a little stunned. Could it be that Ye Liu and Ye Mo knew about her and her eldest brother? A man and a woman were doing something in the kitchen, and it turned out that Ye Liu was chopping a ripe tomato. After chopping it, he asked Liu Duo how to make it into sauce. Liu Duo was so stunned by Ye Liu's beauty that she stared at him and thought that he could not possibly know about her and Ye Yang. After her mind cleared up, she told him how to make tomato sauce. First peel and mash it, then cook it over a low heat, and finally add three caddies of white sugar, and the tomato sauce will be ready. Ye Lu gently scooped up a spoonful and fed it to Lu Du Duo to try. And when Lu Duo took a small bite, oh my god, the sweet and sour taste surprised her. But suddenly, Ye Lu boldly stepped forward and lifted Lu Duo's chin and tasted the sauce that was still on her lips. He then licked his lips, remembering the sweet taste from earlier. The tomato sauce carried Lu Duo's flavor, which made Ye Liu unable to help but be fascinated. Liu Duo could only give up, 
and thought to herself that Ye Liu was really bad. But in the blink of an eye, Ye Liu had come forward and hugged Lu Duo from behind. He said that last night he had let her run away, so why didn't she compensate him at noon? After saying this, he reached out and pinched Lu Duo's stomach, which made Lu Duo blush. Lu Duo angrily pushed Ye Liu away and said that she had to go and take the tomato sauce to Ron Er and that she did not have time to compensate him. Ye Liu listened and rubbed his aching chin and asked Lu Duo if she wanted him to go with her. Lu Duo was worried that this sly Ye Liu would tease her again, and so she ignored him and flatly refused. And so Lu Duo set off on her own. Because it was a bit sunny today, Lu Duo brought an umbrella with her to class. Even though she had covered herself with an umbrella, Lu Duo was still sweating. She was tired, but then she thought again. Ranner would definitely be very happy to eat the tomato sauce. At that time, all her suffering would be worth it. Lu Duo thought about this and happily walked along humming a song. But suddenly, the scene in front of her made her stop. In front of her was Li Chun Mai, who said that Liu Duo was really good at acting. It wasn't raining, but she was putting up an umbrella. When she saw Liu Duo looking dazed, she came forward and scolded her, and then blocked Liu Duo's way, and deliberately bumped into her, causing her to stagger. Li Chun Mai turned her head and glared at Liu Duo, and thought that if it weren't for her, then Li Chun Mai would definitely have been able to be with Yemo, and Li Chun Mai herself would not have been forced to marry Wang Xiao Shui. Unexpectedly at this moment, Lu Duo raised her right hand and slapped Li Chun Mai on the left cheek. The echo from the slap made Li Chun Mai's ears ring. At this moment, Lu Duo looked at her coldly and said, Li Chun Mai, can't you control your mouth? It seems that the slap last time still didn't make you remember deeply. When Li Chun Mai heard Liu Duo's words, she glared at her and gritted her teeth. She was so angry that she was about to explode. She decided that she wanted to fight Liu Duo to the death. At the same time, the people next door were attracted by the noise and came over to watch the excitement. When they saw the two people fighting, they rushed over to persuade them. Li Chun Mai had already been slapped by Liu Duo and had collapsed to the ground rubbing her face which was swollen and painful. Liu Duo, on the other hand, was standing there without a scratch. She warned Li Chun Mai that if she dared to do it again, then don't blame me for chasing you all the way home. Li Chun Mai was very angry when she heard this and started to scold Liu Duo again. Liu Duo saw that Li Chun Mai still wanted more, so she took the flower umbrella in her hand and waved it towards her. When Li Chun Mai saw the umbrella waving over, she was so scared that she hurriedly grabbed her skirt and ran away. Li Chun Mai secretly cursed in her heart, but in the future, she would definitely give this shrew a beating. Li Chun Mai ran for a while, and Liu Duo continued on her way, but her mood was not as happy as before because of Li Chun Mai. The flower umbrella that she had bought for 9.8 yuan was also covered in mud, and Liu Duo angrily threw the umbrella away. But suddenly there was a man's scream from behind her. Liu Duo was speechless. She didn't just throw it at someone, did she? When she turned her head to look, it was really unlucky. When the umbrella fell to the ground, it turned out to be Wang Xiaoshui. Wang Xiaoshui scratched his head and said that he was fine and that he was also planning to go to her house. Liu Duo didn't want him to meet Ye Liu, so she lied to him and said that Ye Liu was not home. Unexpectedly, Wang Xiaoshui took out a red invitation card and said that he had come to Liu Duo's house to deliver the invitation. Liu Duo took it and opened it to read it on the spot. On it was written the date of his marriage with Li Chun Mai, and he wanted to invite the whole Liu Duo family to come and drink in celebration. When Liu Duo saw that Li Chun Mai was about to marry Wang Xiaoshui, she was surprised and didn't know what to do, because she had just slapped Li Chun Mai a dozen times, and now Wang Xiaoshui wanted to invite her to celebrate. Liu Duo thought about it again and again and didn't want to go, so she returned the invitation to Wang Xiaoshui, which made Wang Xiaoshui stunned. Liu Duo said to him bluntly, I just had a fight with your wife. Do you think I will go? When Wang Xiaoshui heard this, he was shocked and opened his mouth wide. But then he asked Liu Duo if she was hurt. Liu Duo replied to Li Chun Mai that she could not hurt her. Wang Xiaoshui smiled and scratched his head when he got the answer. Then Liu Duo turned around and left without looking back. Liu Duo was still angry when she got home, and when she saw the dirty umbrella in her hand, she thought about it again and got more and more angry. At this moment, Ye Lang was coming over. Liu Duo smiled and handed the umbrella to him and asked him to use the umbrella as firewood. Ye Lang was a little stunned when he saw the umbrella and thought that the umbrella was still in good condition when he left. Why was it so broken when he came back? When Lu Duo heard Ye Lang's words, she sighed and said that when she came back, she had a fight 
with Li Chun Mai. When Ye Lang heard this, he felt that something was wrong, and he ran to tell Ye Liu and Ye Mo. When Ye Mo heard about this, he was immediately furious, and he was so angry that he took it out on the innocent table. Then he grabbed the broken umbrella and ran to open the door and rushed out. Ye Mo was about to go and settle accounts with Li Chun Mai. Ye Lu saw that the situation was starting to get out of hand and said to Ye Ling, we have to follow him and keep an eye on him. At this moment, Li Duo brought up a plate of spicy stir-fried meat, but she could not see Ye Liu or Ye Mo anywhere. Ye Ling told her that they had gone to Li Chun Mai's house. Li Duo was stunned and her eyes widened when she heard this. Right at this moment, the Li Chun Mai family was having a peaceful lunch. Suddenly from outside, Ye Mo kicked open the front door and Ye Liu followed close behind him. Wang Xiaotui was overjoyed when he saw Ye Liu. Ye Liu's beauty made his mouth water. Ye Liu was embarrassed and greeted him. On the other side, Ye Mo was glaring at Li Chun Mai and questioning her whether she had scolded his Li Duo today and also broken Li Duo's flower umbrella. Ye Mo slammed the umbrella on the table in front of Li Chun Mai and demanded that Li Chun Mai compensate him. Li Chun Mai was so scared that she shut up. But unexpectedly, her mother stood up for her. She asked Yemo why he said that Li Chun Mai bullied Li Duo and asked for evidence. She also said that they had broken the door of their house and that they should pay for it. Yemo replied coldly, The words of our Li Duo are the evidence. Oh, you dare to ask us to pay for it. As soon as she finished speaking, she rushed forward and grabbed her, shouting at her to shut up and quickly take out 15 cents to apologize to Li Duo. When the mother heard 15 cents, she panicked and broke out in a cold sweat and said that instead of giving her 15 cents, they might as well go and rob someone. Yemo told her to shut up and said that if she had to pay, she had to pay. Li Chen Mai saw that Yemo was so fierce and she huddled in a corner and cried her heart out. She didn't understand why Yemo was so protective of Li Duo and she didn't understand what was wrong with her. But just then, her husband Wang Xiaoshui pushed her hard forward, telling her to go and apologize. At this time, Wang Xiaoshui thought that although he did not know what had happened, he would definitely stand on Liu Er's side. At this moment, Liu Duo and Ye Lang ran to Li Chen Mai's house. Liu Duo told Ye Mo not to argue with them. That would only make him look petty. When Ye Lu heard this, he laughed out loud. Little Duo Duo, are you here to help out with Ye Lang? As he spoke, he kicked the shuttlecock towards Liu Duo, just in time for everyone to see how powerful he and Ye Mo were. Liu Duo was speechless again thinking to herself that this elder brother was really a flirt. But just then, Li Chun Mai's mother rushed over to Liu Duo, grabbed her by the clothes and pulled her out, and then said that Liu Duo was a slut. Liu Duo's clothes were pulled open, a large piece, and the spring scenery inside was immediately revealed, making Liu Duo feel embarrassed and ashamed. But suddenly out of nowhere a foot flew over and landed right on the old woman's most painful spot, and she was sent flying ten meters away. At this time Ye Mo said coldly, You are the slut, you dare to do something in front of me. When Ye Lu saw Ye Mo acting so decisive, he admired him so much that he wanted to kneel down and kowtow to his younger brother. Li Chun Mai rushed over to her mother, worried about her dying mother. Then Li Chun Mai turned around and questioned them, saying why did they attack a woman? But then a voice that sent chills down their spines was heard. Wang Xiaoshui said seriously, Li Chun Mai, let's get a divorce. Like mother, like daughter, I will not marry a wife like this. The two were stunned when they heard this. Li Chun Mai's mother hurriedly grabbed Wang Xiaoshui's trousers and knelt on the ground begging Wang Xiaoshui not to leave. Because Wang Xiaoshui was the grandson of the village head, she did not want him to divorce Li Chun Mai. But Wang Xiaoshui did not care and threw her hand away. As he walked away, he said that he would tell his parents what had happened today. Li Chen Mai's mother was stunned when she heard this. Then Wang Xiaoshui said again, As for the 380,000 yuan dowry, you can pay me half of it. After saying that he walked out the door and left, Lu Duo was a little surprised to see this. She did not expect Wang Xiaoshui to be so generous. Ye Liu now realized that things had gone too far and told Lu Duo to let it go. At the same time, Lu Duo also turned her head and called Ye Mo back home. Ye Mo left staring at the mother and daughter in the house, as if to say don't even think about it next time. As soon as Lu Duo and the others left, Li Chen Mai was very sad about Wang Xiaoshui leaving. Li Chen Mai's mother comforted her, saying that what's done is done. Li Chen Mai was worried 
that because of the broken engagement, it would be difficult for her to find a husband in the future. Lee Chun Mai's mother said, then there is only one way. Lee Chun Mai stopped crying immediately when she heard this. At that moment in the Ye family's house, Ye Yang was burning a fire in the house. Lu Duo took off her coat and walked into the room, asking Ye Yang if he had finished boiling the bath water. He just said that he hadn't wait a minute. Lu Duo saw how handsome her eldest brother was, and her face turned red. Lu Duo suddenly remembered that sweet night. Blood rushed to her face, and it turned red. Lu Duo thought that there must be something wrong with her. Why were her thoughts so dark? Lu Duo then quickly covered her face with her hands, but wasn't the person she had always longed for still by her side? So Lu Duo reached out her hand, and her jade-like hand landed on Ye Yang's face. Eldest brother is so handsome, but there is a scar on his face. Ye Yang remembered that since he got that scar, no child dared to look him in the eye. Ye Yang asked Lu Duo if she was not afraid of this scar. Lu Duo smiled and said no. Lu Duo only smiled once, and Ye Yang was stunned by that smile. Lu Duo reached out and stroked his handsome face and said, You got this scar because you saved my father. How could Lu Duo be afraid? As soon as she finished speaking, Lu Duo moved her face closer, and their lips met. Then, Lu Duo rested her head on Ye Yang's shoulder and listened to him whispering softly in her ear, with a warm fire burning beside them. At this moment, the two of them just wanted to stay together for all eternity. After that ambiguous moment, Lu Duo recalled the time she was kidnapped and still did not understand why there were wolves there at that time. So she asked if Ye Yang had called them. Ye Yang lowered his head and said, that was right, and then frowned as he recalled the memory of that day. Ye Yang had been hunting wolves in the mountains since he was a child, and there were 18,000 wild wolves on that mountain, and those wolves had all been tamed by him. When Lu Duo heard that Ye Yang could command wolves, her eyes lit up with admiration. Ye Yang gently stroked Lu Duo's head and said that he would take her to see them next time. Lu Duo was overjoyed to hear that she could go and see the wild wolves, and then she promised to teach him to write in exchange. The two of them then went to the study, and Liu Duo pressed her chest against his, and gently and patiently taught him how to hold a pen. He pretended to have already learned, but who would have thought that Ye Liu was secretly coming to the study, and he suddenly appeared from behind Liu Duo and put his arms around her shoulders, causing Liu Duo to blush. Ye Liu asked Liu Duo why she didn't teach him to write, and Liu Duo angrily pushed his hand away and said that there was only one pen in the house, and that she would teach him another day. Ye Liu propped his chin in his hand and said that he would sit and watch. He also said that he was smart and clever and that he could learn just by watching. Who would have known that Ye Yang would extend his hand and put the pen in front of Ye Liu's face and said that if he was so good, he should try it. Lu Duo laughed softly and said that she didn't know that eldest brother could tease people too. Ye Liu then pretended to pick up the pen, but after a long time, he still couldn't write a single word. Ye Yang saw this and told him to write quickly, and there was a hint of sarcasm in his eyes. Ye Liu smiled awkwardly and thought to himself that eldest brother was really cold. He then wrote his own name on the paper with trembling hands. Liu Duo saw Ye Liu's dog-like handwriting and laughed so hard that she couldn't close her mouth. Ye Liu could only sigh and said that ever since Liu Duo came to this house, eldest brother had changed a lot. From being an iceberg that was both cold and smelly, he now looked much more human. As Ye Liu spoke, he hugged Liu Duo tightly and said that Liu Duo must be a fairy who had descended to Earth to save them from above. Liu Duo smiled when she was praised because she really was a fairy who had descended from heaven. In the blink of an eye, it was evening. Ye Lang was now working hard to harvest the rice and the harsh sunlight made his sweat pour down. A moment later, Ye Yang and Ye Mo had loaded all the rice that Ye Lang had just harvested onto the cart and told Ye Lang that they would take it back home first. Ye Lang told his brothers to be careful on their way home. But who would have thought that as soon as his brothers left, Ye Lang would hide under the shade of a tree and open a jar of tomato sauce, which Liu Duo had left for him to quench his thirst. Ye Lang opened the lid of the tomato sauce jar and lifted it up to drink it all down. He felt so happy now. But just then, Li Chen Mai called out to Ye Lang from not far away. Li Chen Mai seemed hesitant and said that her sickle was broken and asked if she could borrow Ye Lang's. Ye Lang remembered what had happened yesterday and wanted to refuse. But then, he remembered that she had helped him sow the rice and he couldn't bring himself to say no. He reluctantly handed her the sickle. But who would have thought 
that Li Chen Mai would reach out and lightly touch Ye Lang's hand, causing Ye Lang's heart to race and his legs to tremble. At this moment, Li Chen Mai thought that Ye Lang's hand felt cool to the touch, and it was really comfortable. When Ye Lang came to his senses, he quickly shook Li Chen Mai's hand away, and the sickle fell to the ground at the same time, which made Li Chen Mai a little stunned. Ye Lang turned around and warned Li Chen Mai not to act recklessly, and that she could just take the sickle. Li Chen Mai then picked up the sickle, turned to Ye Lang and said thank you, and then left. At this moment, Li Chen Mai thought to herself, why hadn't she noticed before that the Ye family had such a lovely brother? A year later, one day, when her younger brother came home from school, her younger brother asked why Liu Duo's husbands hadn't come to see her. Liu Duo said that they had all gone to work, and that if Liu Duo hadn't been free, who would have been able to pick up her younger brother? But just then, a horse-drawn carriage came to a stop beside Liu Duo and stopped right behind the two of them, leaving the two of them wondering what was going on. It turned out that Dong Fang Ming was sitting in the horse-drawn carriage. When her younger brother saw Dong Fang Ming for the first time, he was so happy that he wanted to jump up and down. Dong Fang Ming was embarrassed when he saw this and said that he was on his way to Liu Duo's house and asked if the two of them wanted to ride back in his new horse-drawn carriage. Liu Duo blushed with embarrassment when she heard this, but because she was worried that her husbands would be jealous, she only thanked him for his kindness. But who would have thought that Dong Fang Ming would stand up and kick the threshold of the carriage and then soar thousands of meters into the air and finally land gently as if he had descended from heaven. The other two were so surprised that their jaws dropped and they thought to themselves that this must be the legendary Qinggong. As soon as Dong Fang Ming landed, he wrapped his arms around Lu Duo and said that he had something to discuss with her. He mentioned Lu Duo's fruit shaved ice and said that her tomato sauce was delicious. So he proposed a partnership. Lu Duo said that she could partner with him on the fruit shaved ice, but that she had already signed a contract with someone else for her tomato sauce. The young master said that in that case, they could sign a contract for the fruit shaved ice. And then he said that he had brought a treasure with him today that he wanted to give to her. After saying this, he reached into his clothes and pulled out a box of crayons from under his sleeve. When Lu Duo saw such a beautiful object, she immediately felt embarrassed. But Lu Duo said, that this item was too precious, and although she wanted to accept it, she was really a little hesitant. Dong Fang Ming heard this and said indifferently, once a gift is given, it cannot be taken back, not to mention that he also wanted to be friends with her. When Lu Duo heard the word friend, she suddenly fell into deep thought. If she could make this friend, then the four husbands at home might die of jealousy. But after thinking about it, she decided that it would be okay to keep her distance. So she had to thank him to show that she had agreed to accept it. Unexpectedly, Dong Fang Ming put his fan in front of Liu Duo's mouth and said that there was no need to say thank you between friends. Then he smiled and said that Liu Duo should come to his shop to play with him in the future, and he would take Liu Duo to play some interesting things. But just then, Ye Yang and Ye Mo were passing by in an ox cart. When they vaguely heard Liu Duo and Dong Fang Ming laughing and talking, the two of them immediately became tense. Ye Yang was clearly very unhappy about this, and he couldn't help but mutter a few words under his breath. Ye Yang was still as taciturn as ever, but a moment later, he grabbed the 40-meter broadsword in his hand and threw it towards Dong Fang Ming. Dong Fang Ming seemed to hear the sound, and he was so surprised that he broke out in a cold sweat, and all he heard was the sound of the sword piercing into flesh, and it was a perfect fit, cutting the blue snake on the ground into two pieces. The two of them were speechless when they saw the dead snake on the ground, and Ye Mo was relieved when he saw this. He had thought that eldest brother wanted to send Dong Fang Ming to the west. Ye Yang came over after finishing his work, and when Lu Duo saw Ye Yang approaching, she couldn't help but smile happily and ran over to hug him, and Ye Yang hugged her shoulders at the same time. Dong Fang Ming was a little stunned when he saw Ye Yang's appearance because he seemed to have seen this face somewhere before. At this time, Ye Yang bowed respectfully to Dong Fang Ming and said that he was afraid that the poisonous snake would bite someone just now. Dong Fang Ming said that it was no problem and then asked Ye Yang if he had ever been to the capital because he always felt like he had met Ye Yang somewhere before. Ye Mo felt that Dong Fang Ming was trying to curry favor with them, so he started to yell at him. Before he could yell himself hoarse, Lu Duo pinched his ear 
and pulled him back. Yamo was in so much pain that he screamed, Ouch! 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 Lu Duo warned him not to be rude to Dong Fang Ming. So after a while, this man was about to press the girl against the wall and get ready to do something. Liu Duo was stunned when she saw how handsome Dong Fang Ming was. But Ye Mo sat on the side and kept looking at the two of them, and he stared at them, making the two of them feel uncomfortable. Why did Ye Mo look at the two of them as if they were criminals? Then Liu Duo wanted to do something with Dong Fang Ming. So she went to Yemo and said in a frustrated tone, Yemo, go out for a while. Yemo was stunned and didn't understand what was going on, and he didn't know what Liu Duo wanted to do. But suddenly, Liu Duo raised one hand, and in a flash, she pressed Yemo against the wall, and Yemo instantly froze. Liu Duo continued to question him angrily, asking him why he kept staring at her like that. Yemo looked embarrassed when he heard this, and said that he was afraid that something would happen between the two of them, a man and a woman. Liu Duo asked again, do you not trust me? When Yemo heard this, he reached out and took Liu Duo's wrist and stammered that it wasn't what Liu Duo thought, but that he was just afraid that the young master would do something to Liu Duo. As soon as he finished speaking, he hugged Liu Duo into his arms. At this moment, Yemo just wanted the flow of time to stop forever, because only then could Yemo protect Liu Duo well. Liu Duo felt the warmth on Yemo's chest, and she wondered if this straight man had finally come to his senses, and that he could be so gentle. After a while, Yemo saw the look of infatuation on Liu Duo's face, and he could couldn't help but feel a little smug because he was indeed very charming. Yemo lowered his head and looked at Liu Duo tenderly, and Liu Duo saw that Yemo's soft lips were just inches away, and Liu Duo immediately felt shy. When Liu Duo came to her senses, she hurriedly pushed Yemo away, but unexpectedly, Yemo had already grabbed Liu Duo's waist tightly, and he raised her face with his hand. His eyes were filled with tenderness, and then he poured all the love that he had been holding back for so long into a kiss on Liu Duo's lips. No matter how how Liu Duo resisted, Yemo still wouldn't let her go, and he just kept holding her tightly. Then Liu Duo stopped struggling, and she stubbornly closed her eyes, as if she was enjoying this ambiguous moment. Then came a feeling of pain and a little itch, which made Liu Duo's mouth moan involuntarily. This sound made Yemo unbearable, and a warm stream of blood flowed out of his nose, and finally a bucket of blood gushed out like a waterfall. Yemo felt so ashamed that he couldn't bear it anymore, so he grabbed his pants and ran away in embarrassment. Liu Duo was still not fully awake at this time, and her face was still flushed. That evening, Liu Duo brought out some doll paintings and happily showed them to Dong Fang Ming. Dong Fang Ming opened them and looked at them, and he kept praising Liu Duo. But while the two of them were being so intimate, the three brothers had already returned home. Yimo glared at Dong Fang Ming with a fierce expression, but Yi Lang invited him to stay for dinner. Dong Fang Ming naturally saw the displeasure on Yimo's face, so he just thanked Yi Lang for his kindness. Before leaving, he wanted Ye Yang to see him off. When everyone heard this, they were as innocent as a deer, and they wondered what was going on. Then everyone went outside the room, where Dong Fang Ming had asked Ye Yang to meet him. He wanted to ask Ye Yang some private questions. Ye Yang just exhaled a word of inquiry. Dong Fang Ming asked him that, how old he was, Ye Yang said 27. He asked Ye Yang again if he had grown up in the capital, because Ye Yang's appearance looked exactly like someone he had met before. When Ye Yang heard this, he showed a vigilant expression and said a faint yes. Dong Feng Ming smiled when he heard this. Without asking any more questions, he turned and left. Ye Yang watched as the carriage gradually moved away, and he stood there lost in thought. Dong Feng Ming also had a thousand questions in his carriage that he couldn't answer. Could it be that there were really two people in the world who were so similar? At the same time, Ye Mo was in the room counting the farm tools in the house, and he couldn't help but feel strange. It's strange that there's a sickle missing. So he went to ask Ye Lang what was going on. Ye Lang felt embarrassed when he heard this, and said that he had lent the sickle to Li Chun Mai and that she hadn't returned it to him yet. As soon as Yimo heard Li Chen Mai, his anger suddenly flared up. He couldn't help but pour himself a glass of water to calm down, but it still couldn't quell the hatred in his heart. Li Chun Mai had already broken Liu Duo's umbrella, and now she wanted to steal his sickle. Yi Lang saw that Ye Mo was furious, and he hurriedly ran over to comfort his brother. And Liu Duo had also heard the conversation between the two brothers from beginning to end. Liu Duo thought that she would go to the fields with her brothers tomorrow and see what Li Chun Mai was up to. At the same time, there was a creaking sound at the door. Ye Lu walked in with a big candied gourd, and he walked into the house with a smile in his eyes. Lu Duo saw the candied gourd that she liked the most, and her face immediately turned red. Lu Duo ran towards her master like a spoiled puppy, and this scene
scene looked like a parent coaxing a child. Then Ye Lu pulled out a small one and gave it to Lu Duo, and at the same time he bent down and gave her a taste of the candied gourd that he had made himself. Lu Duo opened her cherry mouth and was about to put the candied gourd in her mouth. Ye Lu saw Lu Duo being so cute and his face immediately turned red. But little Duo Duo really didn't do anything, so how could it make his blood surge like this? And Lu Duo had only eaten one seedless candied gourd and had not yet had time to praise Ye Lu's craftsmanship. Ye Lu raised his index finger and wiped the saliva from Lu Duo's lips. Then he lifted Lu Duo's chin and said that he should give Ye Liu some praise. Lu Duo's face was also flushed by Ye Liu. While Lu Duo was still in a daze, Ye Liu lowered his body and pressed his thin lips against Lu Duo's soft lips. How about we do this and that tonight? It was about to happen when Ye Mo came in and interrupted. Ye Mo glared at Ye Liu because today was Tuesday, so it was Ye Mo's turn today. The fire in Ye Liu's heart was burning fiercely, and he didn't care about Tuesday or Saturday. So they both looked at Liu Duo at the same time and asked Liu Duo who she wanted to choose. Liu Duo had no choice but to say nothing and thought to herself, why not take both? But just then, Ye Yang came in and told Liu Duo that the hot water was ready. Liu Duo thought that brother Ye Yang had come at the right time. So she used the excuse of taking a bath to escape from the tiger's den. After a while, Lu Duo soaked in the warm and clean water. And Lu Duo, at this moment, just thinking about the feelings that the two brothers had for her, could not help but feel shy and blush. When Lu Duo finished taking a bath and walked into the room with a towel to dry her hair, she did not expect that Ye Liu had been lying on the bed waiting for a long time. Ye Liu used his infatuated and affectionate gaze to bind little Duo Duo. Lu Duo saw that Ye Liu was alone, and she couldn't help but feel strange. Why didn't Yimo come? Ye Liu seemed to see through Lu Duo's heart and asked Lu Duo if she liked all three of them. Lu Duo felt that her dark heart had been seen through, and she frankly gave Ye Liu a plastic surgery ticket, saying that she just wanted to sleep alone. Ye Liu felt wronged and aggrieved when he heard this, because he had worked hard to persuade Ye Mo so he could have such a good opportunity today. Lu Duo said that she was still on her period and was afraid that she would dirty him, so he should go back. But as soon as she finished speaking, Ye Liu reached out and grabbed Liu Duo's shoulder, and at the same time his other hand found her lower abdomen and gently massaged it because Ye Liu had heard that women would have abdominal pain during their period. Liu Duo felt the warmth in her lower abdomen, which made her blush with embarrassment, and she thought to herself that Ye Liu really knew a lot. Ye Liu hugged Liu Duo into his arms and greedily sniffed Liu Duo's fragrant hair. He lowered his voice and said that in order to understand her, he had spent a lot of effort. Liu Duo listened to Ye Liu's gentle whisper, and her heart wavered slightly. At the same time, Liu Duo felt Ye Liu's hand gently massaged massaging her, making her feel very comfortable. Lu Duo had now fallen into Ye Liu's castle of love, no longer resisted or struggled. Then Ye Liu gently stroked Lu Duo's head and told her directly that he was very possessive and that he had already put Lu Duo in his heart as his only love. Lu Duo heard Ye Liu's sincere confession and turned around to gently reach out and touch his handsome face. Ye Liu hadn't even opened his mouth yet when a soft and moist lip was pressed against his. The following is not suitable for children under 18 years old. If you want to watch it, go to the comment section and type I love you. In a flash, it was the next day, Li Chun Mai was busy bundling the rice when someone suddenly called her name, which surprised her a little. As soon as she looked up, she saw that it was Ye Lang. Li Chun Mai was overjoyed to see Ye Lang and replied to his call in a sweet voice. Liu Duo, who was standing behind Ye Lang, spoke up. Li Chun Mai, hurry up and return the sickle to Ye Lang. Li Chun Mai thought to herself, why did this shameless slut come here? Then Li Chun Mai hesitated and said to Ye Lang that she had forgotten to bring it with her when she went out, and asked Ye Lang to follow her home to get it. Ye Lang didn't feel suspicious when he heard this, and told Liu Duo to wait for him here, and that he would be back in a moment. But Liu Duo grabbed his sleeve and said, don't go with her. Ye Lang was surprised to see this, and then heard Liu Duo scold Li Chun Mai. If you borrow something from our house, you have to bring it back yourself. Don't think that Ye Lang is kind and bully him. Li Chun Mai's face turned pale from Liu Duo's aura, but then she found an excuse to cover up saying that she just thought it would be faster that way. Lu Duo saw that Li Chun Mai still dared to argue, and she opened her mouth to scold her again. Yilang gently said, 
Liu Duo don't bother with her. Li Chunmai saw Ye Lang's caring for Liu Duo and clenched her fists in anger. At this moment, Li Chunmai remembered that her mother had given her a bag of chrysanthemum tea and told her to find an opportunity to give it to Ye Lang. Wait until the rice is cooked, and Ye Lang will have no choice but to marry Li Chunmai. Today was a good opportunity to be alone with Ye Lang, but unfortunately, it was ruined by that slut Liu Duo. It seems that she will have to find another opportunity. In order to see Ye Mo every day, Li Chunmai was determined to marry into the Ye family. A few months later, in a tavern in the capital, Dong Feng Ming was having a party with his old friend Wang Luohan. Just then, a humming sound outside the door surprised the two of them. It turned out to be the innocent and lovely Wang Shuangyun, who was pushing the door and walking into the room. Wang Shuangjun took off her socks and walked into the room, and as soon as she entered, she bumped into the handsome man. Fortunately, the handsome man reacted quickly and dodged her. The handsome Dongfang Ming was sweating at this moment because she looked so ugly. Wang Shuangjun's brother, who was sitting next to her, was so angry that he was fuming when he saw his sister acting so foolishly, and he told her to sit down and behave herself. At this time, Dongfang Ming said to Wang Shuangyun's brother that he had met someone who looked very much like the Prince of Yue. Wang Luohan was very surprised when he heard this, because the twin brother of the Prince of Yue had been lost for many years, and he had turned every stone in search of him, but to no avail. Could it be the person that Dong Fang Ming was talking about? Dong Fang Ming thought for a while, and then suggested that he take him to the Yi family's house to investigate. Wang Shuangyun saw this and said coquettishly that she wanted to go too, but Dong Fang Ming pushed her away in disgust and told her to go if she wanted to, but not to bother him. In a flash, it was afternoon. Ye Mo and Ye Lang were busy washing Lu Duo's bloody clothes. There was the sound of people talking nearby, and the content of the conversation made Ye Mo not know how to react. They said that a new carriage had just arrived at the Yi family's house. The people in the carriage were all nobles. Ye Mo started to get angry when he heard this. Not that Dong Feng Ming again. Ye Lang saw Ye Mo's discontented expression, so he told him to go home and check on Liu Duo, and that he would take care of the bloody clothes. Ye Mo was so happy that he almost jumped up, and without saying another word, he ran home. Ye Lang could only shake his head at this sight, because what he had just said was just a polite gesture. But seeing Ye Mo so happy, he felt a little satisfied. At that moment, a scream came from behind him. When Ye Lang looked curiously in the direction of the sound, he saw Li Chunmai stumble over a stone and fall head over heels, and her newly washed dress fell to the ground and got dirty. Ye Lang was a humanitarian, so he went up to ask Li Chunmai if anything was wrong. When Li Chunmai saw Ye Lang approaching, she rubbed her foot and said pitifully that her foot was in great pain. It seemed that she had sprained her ankle. Li Chunmai said a few words asking Ye Lang to help her home. Ye Lang felt that this was not a good idea, because Lu Duo had warned him not to go near Li Chunmai, but she had sprained her foot like this, and he couldn't help her. Then Ye Lang had an idea. Just you wait, my clever mind. Ye Lang ran towards the woods, because he wanted to find a sturdy stick for her to use as a crutch. Li Chunmai felt a headache coming on, thinking that this Ye Lang was as slow as a snail. At this moment, Ye Lang was busy searching for a branch to make a crutch. After searching for a long time, he finally found a branch that was a bit rough. But who would have thought that at this moment, Li Chunmai was standing behind him? Ye Lang was a little confused and didn't understand why. Li Chunmai had dislocated her foot. But before Ye Lang could figure out what was going on, Li Chunmai had pushed him down on the grass and opened her mouth to kiss him. As soon as Li Chunmai pushed Ye Lang to the ground, she poured a love potion into his mouth. Ye Lang was confused and didn't know what was going on, and before he could react, the potion had already entered his mouth, and he had swallowed it. It wasn't until Ye Lang came to his senses that he slapped Li Chunmai away, and then he started coughing violently, his face turning red, and asked Li Chunmai what she had given him. But to his surprise, Li Chunmai's face also turned red, and she began to take off her thin clothes. Li Chunmai said that she was very hot, and Ye Lang was about to get as hot as she was, because we just took a love potion. When Ye Lang heard that he had just been given a love potion, his expression became serious and he said nothing. Then he turned and ran home for help. But who would have thought that Li Chunmai would reach out and stab Ye Lang and wrap her arms around him? 
The love potion he had just taken began to take effect, making Ye Lang feel weak all over. Li Chun Mai tried to charm Ye Lang by licking her fingertip and said in a coquettish voice, Ye Lang, why are you running away? What's wrong with playing with me for a while? Then she reached out and groped him, saying, That little slut Li Duo is surrounded by your brothers all day long, and it seems that she has been cold to you for a long time. Ye Lang's heart wavered when he heard this, but Li Chun Mai's hand just happened to touch his sensitive spot, causing his face to flush. But in the end, Ye Lang relied on his last shred of reason and pushed Li Chun Mai away with all his might, then ran home unsteadily. He shouted at Li Chun Mai, Don't touch me, I only want Duo Duo. But before he could run a few steps, Li Chun Mai had already caught up with him. Li Chun Mai grabbed Ye Lang by the shoulder and in her seductive voice told Ye Lang to look again and see who she was. The potion had made Ye Lang's mind cloudy and his eyes were blurred as if covered in mist. And yet he actually saw Li Chun Mai as Li Duo. In an instant, Ye Lang face flushed, and he turned around and hugged Li Chun Mai, whispering to Li Duo that he wanted to build a castle of love. At this moment, Li Chun Mai took Ye Long's hand and put her hand on his flushed face. She couldn't help but smile to herself after scheming for so many days. Ye Lang's body temperature rose rapidly, and he couldn't hold back any longer and pushed Li Chun Mai to the ground. But just as he was about to take the next step, his remaining reason made him suddenly stunned, and then he shook his head like crazy, hoping to regain some of his senses. When he opened his eyes and saw that the person in front of him was Li Chun Mai again, Ye Lang hurriedly got up from her body and at the same time pushed her away from him. In the end, he walked home unsteadily. Li Chun Mai saw him leaving and reached out to call out to him, don't go, because she had also taken the potion. And if Ye Lang didn't help her, the effects of the potion would not be released. Li Chun Mai lay on the ground in discomfort. Coincidentally, a father and son, who were on their way to gather herbs, passed by, and when they heard the woman's cries for help, they ran over to see what was going on. The foolish son got a nosebleed when he saw the scene before him. Li Chun Mai was now rolling around on the ground, flushed with heat. The father said that it seemed like heaven had eyes, and it looked like his foolish son was going to have a wife soon. The son was so happy that he jumped up and down like a monkey, and the father said, let me go and check out the goods for you first. After finishing speaking, he stretched out his sinful arm towards Li Chun Mai. As for Ye Ling at this time, he had just reached the door of the house, panting. Ye Ling used his last bit of reason to call out to Li Duo. When Li Duo came out of the door and looked, Ye Ling was already lying on the ground unconscious. Li Duo hurriedly ran over and hugged Ye Ling up, but his body was very hot at this moment. What had happened after all? Ye Lu saw Ye Ling's condition and thought for a moment about what had happened. Perhaps Ye Ling had taken the chrysanthemum medicine. Li Duo was shocked when she heard about the chrysanthemum medicine. She turned to ask Ye Liu how to solve this problem. Ye Liu told Li Duo to keep her voice down because Dong Fang Ming was upstairs talking to Ye Yang and Ye Ling's matter should not be exaggerated. After Ye Liu pondered for a while, the only person who could help Ye Ling solve the problem of the medicine was Li Duo herself. Li Duo thought for a while. She clenched her hands and made up her mind to help Ye Ling through this difficult time. Li Duo told Ye Liu to help her carry Ye Ling to her room. Ye Liu looked at Li Duo in front of him, and there was an indescribable feeling in his heart. After Ye Liu reached out and stroked Li Duo's head, he helped Ye Ling back to the room. Li Duo looked at Ye Liu's back and felt a hundred emotions in her heart. She was sure that Ye Liu was smiling on the outside, but he must be very uncomfortable in his heart. Ye Ling was put down on the bed, and his dry and hot body made him toss and turn in pain, and even scratched himself with his hands, causing blood to flow. Li Duo saw this and reached out to grab Ye Ling's hand, and sat down beside him, saying softly, don't hurt yourself. But to her surprise, Ye Ling pushed Li Duo's hand away, because he was no longer conscious, and thought that Li Duo was Li Chun Mai. Li Duo saw this and took his hand, and gently lifted it to her face, her mouth constantly saying, it's me, I'm Li Duo. Ye Lang stopped struggling when he heard this. He tried to blink his misty eyes, and regained his senses to look at the person in front of him, and finally confirmed that the woman in front of him was the one he had loved for so long. Although he had confirmed her identity, Li Duo was still worried that Ye Lang would lose control, so she pulled down a piece of curtain and used her mouth to tie a small knot, 
deciding to tie Ye Lang up with it. Ye Lang did not resist and lay obediently like a puppy. Li Duo leaned close and looked at him affectionately. Then she gently lifted Ye Lang's face and placed a kiss on his lips. The effects of the potion in Ye Lang's body began to rise like a storm again. At the same time, in the next room, Dong Fang Ming and Ye Yang were discussing something. They were trying to determine Ye Yang's identity. Except for the scar on his face, everything else was exactly like the King of Viet. But that alone was not enough to say that Ye Yang was the King of Viet's brother. Then Wang Liu Han came up with a way. He wanted Ye Yang to take off his pants and let him check. Ye Yang and Ye Mo were speechless when they heard this. Only Ye Mo stood up in time to refuse the request. He angrily questioned what they wanted. They came to find someone and wanted to take off their pants. Wang Luhan said indifferently that he was looking for someone with a birthmark on his buttocks. As soon as he finished speaking, he moved closer to Ye Mo and said that it had not been easy for him to come here. So he should just agree to take off his pants. And then he pulled out a gold bar from his sleeve and gave it to Ye Mo. But the Yi family did not lack this now. And if it fell into Ye Mo's hands, he would not be able to pass it on. But speaking of which, he seemed to remember that there was indeed a birthmark on Ye Yang's left buttock. He remembered when they were young and went swimming in the river. Ye Mo had seen the birthmark on his eldest brother's buttocks. Ye Mo thought it was a wound at the time, but he did not expect it to be in the shape of a heart. Ye Liu said that he was an idiot and told him that the mark was called a birthmark. Ye Mo could not help but break out in a cold sweat as he recalled the past. Could it be that Ye Yang was really the king's brother? But just then, Ye Yang stood up from his chair with a serious expression on his face and said that he was not the person Wang Luohan was looking for, and turned and walked away. Wang Luohan wanted to call him back and asked him if he did not want to see his family again. Not to mention that once his identity was confirmed, Ye Yang's future would definitely change. Ye Yang stopped in his tracks when he heard this, and turned to look at Wang Luohan with sharp eyes. This is my home. My family is only my three younger brothers and Duor. After saying that, he turned and left without any hesitation. Dong Fangming sighed when he saw this. If that's the case, then let's not make things difficult for her. Wang Lohan also sighed when he heard this. It wasn't until Ye Ling woke up from his coma that he realized that Li Duo was lying right next to him. Ye Ling didn't expect that just now he had done this and that with Duo Er, but he himself didn't remember anything. He only knew that he had just done that with Li Duo, the one he loved the most. Then tears kept flowing from his eyes. Li Duo woke up when she heard the sobbing, thinking that Ye Ling was crying because his hands were tied and uncomfortable, so she reached out and untied him. After that, the two of them sat on the bedside and chatted for a while. Ye Ling kept blaming himself for being useless, only because he didn't listen to Li Duo. Today, he had such a thing with Li Chun Mai. He was afraid that Li Duo would hate him now. Li Duo heard him blame himself and reached out to hold his face and placed a comforting kiss on his lips. There was no need to say much at this point. Only actions could show that she did not hate Ye Lang. Ye Lang's reason had left him at this point, and now he was just following his instincts and letting Li Duo torment him. After a few moments of seductive ambiguity, Li Duo gently said that she would never hate Ye Lang. Ye Lang was deeply moved when he heard this and reached out to hold Li Duo in his arms. He hoped that no matter what happened in the future, Li Duo would not abandon him. Li Duo heard this and intertwined her fingers with Ye Lang's, saying, I will definitely never abandon you. Ye Lang then pressed Li Duo down and at the same time gradually took off her thin clothes. Ye Lang still felt a little uncomfortable now, and the effects of the drug were unexpectedly still lingering in his body. Ye Lang hesitated and asked if they could continue. Li Duo was speechless when she heard this. She had just finished putting on her clothes, and now she was taking them off again. At the same time, in the other house, Li Chun Mai was sitting on the ground, crying her eyes out, and her mother had to crawl over and ask her what was wrong. Her body was now as broken as a rag, but Li Chun Mai was very sensitive at this time, and she would scream if anyone touched her. When she finally saw that it was her mother, Li Chun Mai burst into tears in her arms and cried out that she had been trampled on so badly that she did not want to live anymore. Li Chun Mai's mother was now filled with hatred for Ye Lang. If Ye Lang had not abandoned Li Chun Mai, then this would not have happened. At the same time, 
At the Ye family's house, Ye Mo had just learned that Li Chun Mai had drugged Ye Lang, and he was so angry that he punched a hole in the table. Then he stepped forward and grabbed the iron shovel that was leaning against the wall and ran to Li Chun Mai's house, ready to invite her to go to the Western Paradise. But as soon as he opened the door, he was so surprised that he could not close his mouth. It turned out that the mother and daughter were crying and screaming in front of their door. And not only that, they were also telling everyone about the drugging incident. The villagers who did not know the truth came to watch curiously and even cursed Di, Lang of the Yi family as a beast. Ye Yang and Ye Long heard the noise and came out to see what was going on. Ye Mo could not bear it anymore and jumped up to scold the mother and daughter, saying that they were the ones who stole and cried out. Li Wang Shi could not calm down when she heard this, saying that her Chun Mai was so innocent. How could she do such a thing? Not to mention that the victim was Li Chun Mai. She pointed at Ye Lang's face and cursed. Look at him, does he look like someone who has been drugged? Ye Lu sneered when he saw her making a fuss and told her that there was evidence that Ye Lang had drugged them. Li Wang Shi was furious and said that the people who were washing clothes by the river that day could all testify, and that before Li Chen Mai's incident, she had talked to Ye Lang. Li Duo then stood up and said something lightly, so what Li Wang Shi's anger subsided a lot when she saw Li Duo and turned around to insist that Ye Lang marry Li Chen Mai. Ye Lang could not remain calm when he heard this and flatly refused to marry her and made it clear that she had drugged him. Ye Lang was about to jump up and give Li Chun Mai two slaps, but Li Duo reached out and stopped him and looked at Ye Lang and said calmly, don't be in a hurry. Li Duo turned to look at the mother and daughter and said, you want Ye Lang to marry this vicious woman. Li Chun Mai, are you dreaming? The mother and daughter of Li Chun Mai were so scared by Li Duo's scolding that they almost fainted. They were caught off guard, but just when things were at their most intense, a voice was heard. It was the village chief and his nephew who had arrived. So the supporting characters who were eating melons and watching the show jumped in to make the script even longer. They wanted the village chief to come in and take charge of the situation. The village chief was not in a hurry and said calmly, I have heard about this drugging incident, but whatever, just bring the evidence here. Li Wang Shi's eyes widened and her lips tightened when she heard the word evidence. She did not put the village chief in her eyes at all and cursed that she had witnesses. The village chief just smiled when he heard this and said that witnesses did not mean anything. At this time, Li Duo stood up and asked the village chief to give her two days and she would find evidence to prove Yilang's innocence. Li Wangxi's nerves twitched when she heard this and said what if she could not find the evidence? Li Duo was really helpless with the mother and daughter and said to them, What's the point of you talking so much? If you can, just bring out the evidence that Ye Lang drugged your daughter. Li Wangxi had nothing left to say at this point. Then Wang Xiaotui said that during these two days, Ye Lang should stay at his house, because only in this way could Wang Xiaotui hear about Ye Lu's romantic affairs through Ye Lang. So this case of chrysanthemum tea was put on hold for a while, and everyone went home to drink milk and eat cakes. Only then did Ye Yang ask Li Duo if she had any plans for this matter. Li Duo just looked at him lightly when she heard the question and said that as long as they could find the person who sold the chrysanthemum tea to Li Chun Mai, then they could use that to convict her. It's just that this search might have to bother Mr. Dongfang again. Ye Lang felt self-reproachful and lowered his head and frowned, apologizing to everyone. I'm sorry, everyone I've caused you trouble. Ye Lang said sadly that he had been weak and sickly since he was a child and had implicated his elder brothers, and now he had done something like this. Li Duo went over to comfort him and did not allow him to think negatively. Ye Lang hugged Li Duo's hand and agreed. He looked at Li Duo and was about to cry. Ye Lang held Li Duo's hand for the last time and prepared to say goodbye. In a flash, the second day arrived, Li Duo went to the town to find Dong Feng Ming, hoping that he could contact the Ninja Mon to see if they could find information on all the nearby pharmacists. The handsome Dong Feng Ming folded his fan with a snap when he heard this and said, that's a small matter, leave it to me. Li Duo then asked Ye Yang and Ye Mo to follow Dong Feng Ming and as soon as they got the information, they would immediately go and find the person. Ye Liu, who was standing by the side, could not stand still anymore and asked Li Duo if there was anything he could do. Then he glanced at Li Duo and asked her, do you want to keep me, Ye Liu, by your side especially? Li Duo saw Ye Liu's face that wanted to reach the sky and gently reminded him to be serious and that he would go to the pier with her in a moment. Only then did Li Duo start to calculate in her mind. There were only two days left she had to act quickly. So it 
didn't take long for Dongfang Ming to arrive at the Namon and easily took the record book into his hands. But when Ye Mo opened it, he wanted to smoke from his head. This record book was even taller than him when opened. At the same time, at the pier in town, Li Duo and Ye Liu were wondering where to start their investigation. Suddenly, a porter passed by them. Li Duo was about to step forward to ask him some questions when she was bumped into by another porter, causing Li Duo to stand unsteadily in pain. Ye Liu also took the opportunity to go and support Li Duo's shoulder and gently asked her if she was okay. Li Duo saw that he was being gentle with her and lowered her head to say shyly that she was fine and that they had to seize the time now. Ye Lang had been locked up in the village chief's house for two days, but there was still no news from Li Duo. While Wang Xiaotui was kicking his feet in boredom, suddenly the door of the room burst open. Li Wang Shi stood at the door and glared fiercely at the people in the house and asked loudly where the little slut Li Duo was. You must not have found any evidence, huh? Li Chun Mai behind her was wearing a wedding dress and makeup, but she didn't say anything. Only then did Wang Xiaotui angrily retort, You two shameless people, what's the hurry? It's not been two days yet. He had just finished speaking, when Ye Lang also stood up from his chair and cried and shouted that even if he died, he would not marry Li Chun Mai, and that in this life, he would only marry Li Duo. Speaking of Li Duo, Li Duo arrived, and Li Chun Mai and her mother broke out in a cold sweat when they heard Li Duo's voice. Li Duo was rushing to the scene of the crime. When Ye Lang saw that his whole family had come to save him, he cried so much that his face was wet if they had come a little later. He might have had to spend the rest of his life with Li Chun Mai. At the same time, a man with his hands tied was kicked through the door of the village chief's house, followed by Ye Mo and Ye Yang. After being pushed in, the man could not stand still and knelt on the ground. But unfortunately, he had not seen the coffin and did not shed tears, and kept saying that he had not made any mistakes. Ye Mo, who had a little knowledge, said to him, that group of people who made the chrysanthemum tea would probably have to go to prison for more than three years. And how dare you say that you have not committed a crime? The man had only gone to school until the third grade. And how could he know about these things? And he boldly said that Ye Mo should not try to scare him. Li Duo could not bear to listen any longer and stepped forward to do it herself and scolded the man so much that he could not lift his head from the ground because Li Duo said that she knew the Namon. If you just say that you made the chrysanthemum tea, then we will give you a way out. Li Wang Shi saw that the situation was not looking good and stuttered that she did not know this man. Li Duo snorted in disdain. Do you really not know this man? Then why are there some of your personal belongings in his house? Not to mention your nude photos. Li Wang Shi had no way to deny it and broke out in a cold sweat. Li Duo then said, according to the law promulgated by the emperor, what kind of punishment will be imposed for such behavior? Ye Liu rubbed his chin and thought for a while before saying, anyone who insults or coerces a woman will be beaten with 800 strokes at the lightest and will be enlisted in the army and exiled to the frontier at the heaviest. The man who sold the chrysanthemum tea was terrified when he heard this because going to the frontier meant going to his death. So he knelt down and kowtowed like crazy and kept begging for his life. After kowtowing, he told the whole story, saying that he had indeed made some chrysanthemum tea for Xiao Qing, but only he and she had used it. And he also said that those personal belongings were all given to him by Xiao Qing voluntarily and that the adults should not punish the good people. The Xiao Qing in the mouth of the man who made the chrysanthemum tea gave Li Duo goosebumps, so the vicious woman's name is Xiao Qing. Li Chen Mai saw that her mother's reputation had been ruined and went forward to scold the man who made the medicine as if she was slapping him in the face. Li Wang Shi also said that she did not know the man kneeling on the ground. The man was so angry that his eyes were about to pop out and jumped up to grab Li Wang Shi's hand, saying that it was obvious that you seduced me at the beginning. You said that your husband was out of sight and out of mind, so you were very lonely by yourself, and you also said that your husband had not been home for more than 10 years, and that he had probably died a long time ago. So what's wrong with us having an open relationship? The brothers were so shocked by this bloody script that they couldn't bear to open their eyes. Li Duo now saw success in front of her, and she began to add salt and lemon saying that these were all your own personal opinions and that your Xiao Qing did not admit it. The man who sold the chrysanthemum tea 
was so angry that he shouted, saying that he had witnesses. Just the other day, Xiao Qing and I accidentally made some noise in the middle of the night that disturbed our neighbors. If you don't believe me, you can go and find my neighbor, Lao Wang. When Li Chen Mai heard this, her whole body trembled. She did not expect that her mother would betray her father. Li Chen Mai's father was still alive, but her mother had already gone to find someone else. Upon hearing this good news, Li Chen Mai cried and ran home. No matter how her mother called her, she did not bother to turn back. Back to the village chief's house, the old man also walked out of the room. It turned out that the village chief had always been in the next room and had heard everything that had happened here. Then, Li Duo asked the village chief how to deal with this matter, and the village chief tapped the ground with the stick he was leaning on, and then solemnly announced to everyone, Li Chen Mai's being drugged has nothing to do with Ye Lang, and then told Wang Xiao Thui to drag the man who made the medicine out into the yard and let him meet his maker, and so the matter ended satisfactorily. At this time, Li Duo reached out her hand to Ye Lang and said with a happy smile that they could go home now. When Ye Lang heard this, he took Duo Er's hand and then turned to the brother and said thank you very much. Ye Mo saw that Ye Lang was being so polite and kicked him in the leg. Now Li Duo said that this matter should be thanked to Dong Feng Ming, but Li Duo's words made Ye Mo angry. After all, he had helped. Why didn't he thank him? Ye Liu now appeared to reconcile the two, saying that it was time to celebrate. He hugged both Li Duo and Ye Lang in his arms and said, Second brother is very happy today, so I invite everyone to have a meal at the most expensive tavern. When Ye Mo heard that Ye Liu was inviting him today, he he immediately smiled and said, let's go. Ye Yang also spread his arms and hugged all his family members in his arms, and our family will always be together. Ye Lang saw that his family was so harmonious and felt that he was about to be melted by the family affection. In the blink of an eye, it was autumn, and the hibiscus flowers in the courtyard had begun to bloom. Li Duo stepped forward and picked one, and she was lost in thought in the bushes of flowers as if she was thinking about something. It was as if she had forgotten all the memories of her previous life at this moment. Just then, a hand reached out and snatched the flower and put the flower on Li Duo's head as a hair ornament. Ye Liu's appearance interrupted Li Duo's reverie and also made her blush. Ye Liu came to tell her that he had made a very delicate porcelain jar for the soy sauce and had also hired someone to make a jar of tomato sauce. Li Duo was overjoyed when she heard this because if there was a beautiful container, she could increase the price of the tomato sauce. Just thinking of the gold and silver piled up like a mountain, Li Duo was so happy that she wanted to go crazy. Then Li Duo followed Ye Liu to see the production line in the house. But just as she reached the door, she suddenly stopped. In front of her were the ladies who had just been hired, and they were gossiping about Li Chen Mai marrying the idiot. Seeing that the workers were not working, Li Duo walked over and coughed a few times. Now Li Duo seriously questioned Ye Liu whether the workers he had recruited were here to work or to gossip. Ye Liu just smiled and said that if she didn't like them, he would change them. Seeing this, the workers quickly shut up and worked. Seeing them like this, Li Duo didn't bother to say anything more. She thought to herself about the mother and daughter, although it was true that they were very shameless, but talking about people behind their backs like this was really disgusting. Li Chen Mai took the 40-meter-long javelin and teleported to Li Duo's door. Her hatred was so great that she lost her mind and was about to swing the 40-meter javelin high, preparing to reincarnate Li Duo. At the critical moment, Ye Liu rushed over to protect Li Duo. At the same time, the 30-year-old unwashed cloth shoes flew over like a spaceship and just barely grazed Li Chen Mai's cheek. Ye Mo's shoe-throwing technique was indeed well-deserved. After knocking Li Chen Mai unconscious, he turned to ask Li Duo. Li Chen Mai received a shoe from the man she loved on her cheek, and she couldn't believe that he could do such a thing to her. Li Chen Mai cried in pain, and she still didn't understand why Ye Mo was protecting Li Duo like this. She didn't understand why she had given everything to him, and he hadn't even bothered to say a word of concern. When Ye Mo heard her whining, he spat a mouthful of saliva and said that you, a vile woman, almost killed my fourth brother, and you still want me to care about you. Li Duo also indifferently continued his idea. She said that she liked Ye Mo, but in fact, it was just a desire to possess him. Now that she had married the idiot, it was all her own fault. Li Chen Mai didn't know what to do. She couldn't find anything to say. At the same time, there was a creak of a door opening outside, and it turned out to be Ye Yang and Ye Lang returning from outside. But as soon as Ye Lang saw Li Chen Mai, his body trembled slightly, and then his heart began to pound, and he couldn't help but gasp for breath. Everyone was shocked, and their faces changed color. Ye Lang's heart disease had relapsed. 
Obviously, there had been no sign of it for a long time. It wasn't until the doctor came to diagnose him that he said that Ye Lang's condition was probably due to overthinking and the appearance of Li Chun Mai had stimulated his nerves. Li Duo lowered her eyes in worry and asked the doctor what to do. Did she have to send that bitch away? At all costs. The doctor said that was also a way. But apart from this method, it would also be good to take Ye Ling out for a walk regularly. Only when his mood improved would he truly get better. After the doctor finished speaking, he made an excuse that he was too busy with work and returned. Just when the brothers were at a loss for what to do, they saw Lee Duo clap her hands twice and said that they had promised to go to the capital to play before, hadn't they? Why don't we take this opportunity to go out and play? Ye Mo was caught off guard by the unexpected invitation and his face showed five words, how could he refuse? Only after hearing Ye Yang open his mouth, as long as the whole family goes together, it doesn't matter where we go. Ye Liu approached Li Duo and agreed immediately. Ye Ling felt very embarrassed when he saw his family spending so much effort for him. Li Duo seemed to see through Ye Ling's thoughts, so she told him that this trip to the capital was not for him alone, but also because she wanted to go. Did Ye Ling want to go with Li Duo? Ye Ling Yang agreed with her immediately when he heard this. Ye Ling wanted to stay by Li Duo's side all his life. Li Duo was preparing to take the carriage to the capital. Her parents were surprised when they heard the news. At this time, Ye Lu stepped forward and patted Li Duo on the back, saying, We will take good care of her. The younger brother ran out and called for his father and mother, because the younger brother did not want to be separated from her. Li Duo gently rubbed the little guy's head. Ye Mo told Li Duo that the carriage was ready. Li Duo said goodbye to her family, and at that moment, her mother pulled her to a corner and whispered something like a secret. Li Duo was a little puzzled when she saw her being so mysterious. Unexpectedly, her mother stuffed a yellow notebook into to her hand and then whispered in Li Duo's ear. This book is full of rare things. You should take a good look at it. Li Duo took the notebook and looked at it intently. It was not until she saw the four words Secrets of the Bridal Chamber on the cover of the book that Li Duo was startled and shocked. Is this the legendary Spring Palace map? Ye Mo saw that something was wrong with Li Duo and asked her curiously what she was doing. When Li Duo saw Ye Mo, she quickly hid the book behind her back and stammered that it was nothing. Unfortunately, Li Duo's thin skin Skin had betrayed her. Yemo reached out and stroked her cheek and leaned close to her face and whispered, Li Duo, why is your face so red? Do you want to eat my candy? If you want it, just tell your brothers, and we can postpone our departure. When Li Duo heard him say this, she blushed with shame and said that it was because it was too hot that her face was red. After she finished speaking, she turned around and pushed him into the carriage. So a group of people got into the carriage and set off for the capital. Li Duo sat in the carriage and lifted the curtain, looking at her hometown where she had lived for so long, and suddenly a strange feeling arose. From behind, her younger brother cupped his hands and shouted, Sister, see you later. Brother-in-law Mo, don't bully her. When Yimo heard the little boy say that, he almost wanted to jump up and down. He obviously didn't bully Li Duo. The three brothers saw that he was being so angry, and they whispered and giggled. Li Duo was thinking at this moment, although she had to leave a familiar place for a strange place. But all her brothers were here and she felt much more at ease. Suddenly, Ye Liu came up and said, Duo Ear, the Spring Palace map on your body is showing. When Li Duo heard this, she suddenly wanted to disappear. She reached out and touched the book in her sleeve, and it was still there. Unexpectedly, she heard Ye Liu say, I didn't expect my mother to actually give you that book. And he leaned close to Li Duo's ear. Little Duo Duo, if you really want to learn, then let your brother teach you. Ye Liu kicked Li Duo while talking. Li Duo saw Ye Liu's ruffian appearance, and her face turned red and her ears burned. Ye Lang, who was sitting next to him, also heard the two of them talking. He asked Ye Liu what he wanted to teach Li Duo, and he wanted to learn too. So Ye Liu asked Li Duo Duo, when shall we practice for Ye Lang to see? When Li Duo heard him say that, she glared at him and secretly stepped on his foot. Ye Liu was so painful that he screamed. Li Duo couldn't stand Ye Liu anymore, so she went to sit with Ye Yang to avoid him. But Ye Liu was a man who never gave up, and he reached out to grab Li Duo. Ye Yang couldn't stand it anymore, and had to warn Ye Liu not to tease Li Duo anymore. But unexpectedly, Ye Liu said to Li Duo, don't let me catch you, or I will teach you a lesson. When Li Duo heard this, she covered her face with her hands and blushed. It was all because her mother had given her something, and she wanted to throw it away. In a flash, it was already dark, and the coachman said that it was too late, 
and they had to find an inn to rest. Li Duo was lying on Ye Yang's lap at this moment, and was having some wet dreams that Ye Liu was about to teach Li Duo some tricks. Li Duo's flushed face was a little flustered, but according to Ye Liu's mature appearance in the dark night that was falling, Li Duo was quickly overwhelmed by a feeling of pleasure and couldn't help but make some oh oh sounds. In a flash, she only felt the heaven and earth shaking, as if falling to the bottom of the deep sea. Li Duo's body began to soften, and her oval face was constantly sweating. After exchanging a few tricks with each other, Ye Liu looked at Li Duo and smiled and asked her how she was feeling. Li Duo's body was burning hot at this moment, so she had long since ignored everything around her. But all the things that happened here were just Li Duo's dreams. Li Duo was sleeping soundly on Ye Yang's lap at this moment. Their carriage was now standing in front of an inn. Ye Mo asked if they should wake Li Duo up. Ye Yang said no. As soon as he finished speaking, he carried Li Duo back to his room. When Ye Mo saw Ye Yang carrying Li Duo away, he pouted again. It was obvious that it was his turn on Tuesday. Li Duo's sleeping posture was very beautiful and innocent, and it accidentally made the flame in Ye Yang's heart burn. Ye Yang looked at the lovely and charming Li Duo in front of him and began to bend down and follow her breath, and finally placed a kiss on Li Duo's soft lips. But just then, a dart flew towards the two of them. But Ye Yang, who was very skilled, gently lifted Li Duo up and dodged the dart, and the dart was stuck straight into the wall. Li Duo, who had just woken up from her dream, screamed in shock, and was stunned speechless when she saw the dart. She suddenly remembered the hot scene in her dream just now, which made her small face blush instantly. When Ye Yang saw that Li Duo had woken up, he put his hand over his mouth and made a silent gesture, and told her that they were in danger now. As soon as he finished speaking, a man in black carrying a knife rushed in from the window. Li Duo was so frightened by the sight of him that she froze. Before she could react, the man in black raised his sword and slashed straight towards them. At the same time, Ye Yang also drew his sword to defend himself. But Ye Yang didn't cut the man who didn't give his name or surname. He shouted and asked who the person was. The man in black only replied with one sentence, don't ask too much. He jumped up and wanted to send Ye Yang to the underworld with his knife, only to see that Ye Yang easily blocked one of his moves. Just when Li Duo was wondering about the intentions of these assassins, then suddenly at that moment, another assassin rushed towards Li Duo, but Li Duo dodged it with just a slight movement. The assassin looked unconvinced and slashed another sword at Li Duo, but she dodged it again. No matter how the assassin danced with his sword, he didn't even scratch Li Duo, and this superb dodging skill also couldn't help but mention the credit of the brothers stalking. This time, she was able to survive thanks to Yiliu. At the critical moment, the door was pushed open, and a group of officers and soldiers rushed into the inn. The two assassins were so frightened by the sight of the officers and soldiers that they ran towards the window and disappeared. The soldiers shouted and chased after them. Li Duo was stunned by the chase. What on earth had happened? When Ye Yang asked Li Duo if anything was wrong, Dong Fang Ming and Wang Luohan also walked in and apologized for being late. So Ye Yang instinctively reached out his hand and shielded Li Duo, who was standing behind him. But who would have thought that Li Duo would ovulate at the sight of a handsome man? She jumped out and asked the two of them why they were here. Dong Fang Ming said that Ye Yang's being too handsome had been exposed, and now there were people everywhere who wanted to kill him. Dong Fang Ming felt worried, so he followed them. Ye Yang was furious when he heard this. He didn't expect that being too handsome was also a crime. It was not until later that the brothers in the next room heard the noise and ran over. But when they saw that Dong Fang Ming was also there, the three of them were immediately stunned. The next day, everyone got back on the carriage and continued on their way. When they stopped along the way, Dong Fang Ming came close to Li Duo again and pulled out a box of 66 pieces of gum from his pocket, and then Li Duo didn't care about anyone else. She just picked up the candy and put it in her mouth to chew. Unfortunately, her actions made Ye Yang and Wang Shuangyun feel dissatisfied. Li Duo felt a chill down her spine when she saw this. Finally, in order not to provoke the people anymore, she told Dong Fang Ming that she wouldn't eat anymore. And then they got back on the bumpy carriage and continued on their way. It was not until several days later that their group arrived at Yangxing City. Yangxing City was indeed very lively and cheerful, and there were also many Persian beauties. When Li Duo lifted the curtain to look at the scenery outside, she was so surprised that she couldn't close her mouth. She didn't expect that there would be such an exotic city in ancient times. Ye Liu saw that Li Duo was lost in thought, so he rushed over and put his arm around her shoulder and whispered in her ear, I heard that there are many women in this city who have multiple 
multiple husbands. He also asked Li Duo to go to the capital with him for a trip, and then they could consider this place as a place to settle down. Li Duo's brain temporarily stopped working when she heard Ye Liu's words, and her face started to burn like a piece of coal. She thought to herself that her relationship with her brothers was indeed ambiguous, but she was still not prepared to marry them. The more Li Duo thought about it, the more she felt like a slut. But if she got married, she would have to have children, and she wasn't ready for that yet. Ye Liu seemed to see through her heart, so he pretended to be pitiful like a puppy and said, Little Duo Duo, you did that with me, and now you want to shirk your responsibility and run away. Li Duo's face turned even redder when she heard Ye Liu's accusation, and then she said that she didn't do anything. Unfortunately, she couldn't even believe her own words, because she had already done that with her brothers. Ye Liu raised Li Duo's hand and wrote on her palm. Li Duo didn't understand why he did that. Ye Liu wrote four characters on her palm. Come tonight, Li Duo felt teased, and she just wanted to scream at the sky. That night, they arrived at the inn, so they decided to get off the carriage and rest for a night before continuing their journey. Dong Fang Ming said that this was the safest inn in Yangxing City, not to mention that there were also soldiers guarding it. Ye Yang, you don't have to worry about being chased and killed because you're too handsome anymore. At the same time, Ye Long suddenly proposed to Li Duo, saying that he wanted to massage Duo Er. Ye Mo was naturally not happy with that and said that he also wanted to massage her. Ye Lu then jumped in and said that Ye Mo's skills were very good and that he was just afraid that Li Duo's weak body wouldn't be able to take it. Ye Mo saw that Ye Liu was trying to ruin his good thing and glared at Ye Liu angrily. But unexpectedly, that fool Ye Lang spoke up for Ye Mo and said that Ye Mo's massage was very comfortable. As for Ye Ling, he volunteered to cook for everyone and let Ye Mo massage Li Duo. Ye Mo was so excited when he saw the delicious food, he jumped up and praised Ye Ling. So Ye Mo decided to perform well tonight and he could not let Li Duo down. So that night, Ye Mo was practicing his wet massage and acupuncture and his vigorous movements made him sweat profusely. The feeling of ecstasy at this moment really made Li Duo so happy that she wanted to faint. She screamed like crazy and her ambiguous screams made her shudder. Li Duo was so ashamed that she buried her face in the pillow. She did not expect Ye Mo to be so proficient in this and Ye Mo seemed to see through Li Duo's mind. He reached out and took her hand, and at the same time he said softly, Li Duo, are you in pain or pleasure? As soon as he finished speaking, he pressed down on that spot again and thrust into Li Duo's delicate waist. This electric shock-like feeling made Li Duo couldn't help but moan a little. It was not until a while later, when the feeling had subsided, that Ye Mo leaned down to Li Duo and whispered, if he could massage her every day in the future. Li Duo was already intoxicated by the feeling below her waist waste and she just hummed softly to agree with him. Ye Mo was secretly delighted in his heart and wondered if he should take this opportunity to ask for more. Maybe Li Duo would agree if she was happy. So Ye Mo closed his eyes and puckered his lips and moved closer to Li Duo. Unfortunately, at that moment, Ye Ling called everyone to dinner from outside the door. Li Duo immediately jumped out of bed and ran out when she heard that, causing Ye Mo's mouth to kiss the bed. Ye Mo wanted to cry but couldn't. Ye Ling, just you wait. Ye Lang saw that Ye Mo was holding his nose tightly and covered his mouth to laugh. Then the two of them went to dinner with suspicious expressions. Wang Shuangyun saw that Li Duo was late and wanted to jump up and grab her hair, but she didn't dare. Wang Luohan saw this and hurriedly told his sister to shut up. Ye Liu waved his hand and called Li Duo to sit next to him. Ye Liu told Li Duo to eat well and sleep well, and that he would take her for a walk in the city tomorrow. Ye Yang glared at Ye Liu when he heard this, causing Ye Liu to be frightened by his murderous aura. So he hurriedly changed it to our whole family will go for a walk tomorrow. Ye Liu felt a sense of sorrow in his heart, because his plan to go out with her alone had gone down the drain. Wang Shuangjun was lost in thought when she heard their conversation and turned to ask Dong Feng Ming to take her for a walk in the city tomorrow. But Dong Feng Ming pretended to be deaf and blind and just silently picked up a shrimp for her to let her taste the flavor of this restaurant. Wang Shuangyun was so happy that she almost had a nosebleed when she saw that Dong Feng Ming had picked up a shrimp for her. Then Dong Feng Ming introduced Yangxing City to everyone, saying that it was an independent self-governing area of the western regions. The strange customs here are unique. He also said that he had lived here for two years and that he would be Li Duo's tour guide tomorrow. Wang Shuangjun saw that Dong Fang Ming cared so much about Li Duo and she wanted to cry her eyes out. But Li Duo saw that her sister was feeling sad and told Dong Fang Ming 
to take her with him. Dong Fang Ming had no choice but to sigh, and reluctantly agreed. After dinner, it was already midnight. Wang Shuangjun went to Li Duo and asked her for help. She wanted Li Duo to teach her some tricks on how to make a man fall head over heels in love with her. Li Duo was embarrassed when she heard Wang Shuangyun say this and said that she didn't have any such skills. She didn't have any such skills, but Wang Shuangyun of course did not believe her words because the four brothers obeyed her and stuck to her like glue. Then Wang Shuangyun put out her five fingers and said, teach me and I will give you five million. Li Duo was a little thoughtful when she heard this because she really did not know why did they like her. Li Duo and her husbands went into a place restricted to children under 18. When he saw the cool and tight fitting dresses over there, Ye Ling suddenly felt a little embarrassed, and his face turned red like a ripe persimmon. Yimo saw Ye Ling rolling his eyes like fried peanuts, and immediately went over to see what was there. When Ye Ling saw the seductive belly-bearing dress, he gasped. He bared his teeth and roared that this dress was really too shameless. And on Yi Liu's side, he was staring at a see-through headscarf and thought that if Li Duo wore it, she would definitely look very beautiful. When that time comes, he only needs to lift Li Duo's scarf and place a kiss on her lips. It was so exciting just to think about it. While Yemo was busy swimming in his own fantasy, the waiter came out and said that today was the last day of the clearance sale and that the lords and ladies could choose and try as they wished. Yemo began to rummage through everything when he heard this, and he had never seen anything like it before. Yeliu told him that this was a Persian pipe. Smoking too much of it would lead to uncontrolled bowel movements. Yemo was enlightened when he heard him say this, and at this moment, Ye Yang was also looking at the new and strange things, but in fact, he was still glancing at Li Duo. Li Duo seemed to have something on her mind, so Ye Yang took advantage of her not paying attention and secretly rubbed her head a little. Ye Yang looked at her tenderly and said, what is Li Duo thinking about? Li Duo did not answer him, but instead asked Ye Yang what he liked about her and what kind of person Li Duo was in the eyes of his eldest brother. Ye Yang pondered for a moment when he heard the question and blurted out the word beautiful. Li Duo put her hand on her chin when she heard his answer. She she didn't expect Ye Yang to be such a lecher, but Ye Yang took her hand and said that he wasn't good at talking. He also said that Li Duo was good in every way, not only beautiful but also intelligent, strong, and gentle, and that he wanted to be with her forever. Li Duo was so embarrassed that she wanted to crawl into a hole, and she immediately covered her face with her hands, thinking to herself, Ye Yang, you really know how to flatter people, and the conversation between the two of them was clearly heard by the brothers standing nearby. Then Li Duo cleared her throat and asked them what they liked about her. Ye Lu smiled and said, when Duo quarrels with someone, she she looks very cool, and I like it when she scolds people so much that they can't even react. Li Duo's face darkened when she heard his answer, as if she were some kind of evil woman. Yimo, who was next to him, also blushed and said, Li Duo, you're not like other women, you have your own opinions. Ye Lang said that not only did Li Duo not hate him, but she also encouraged him. She was truly the kindest person in the world. Hearing the confessions of her brothers, Li Duo's heart felt warm. She smiled and thanked them. But who would have thought that the brothers Others would turn their eyes to Li Duo and stare at her and pull out the clothes they had chosen for her and want Li Duo to wear them for them tonight. Li Duo was shocked when she saw this. It turned out that the compliments just now were to lure her in, and their main purpose was to get her to wear those revealing clothes. That night in Yangxing City, Li Duo changed her clothes and lifted the curtain to walk out. The exotic, revealing outfit that Li Duo wore made her look incredibly seductive and alluring. The brothers saw the beautiful woman in front of them, and their hearts beat like drums in their chests. Yemo was even more excited, and his nose started to bleed. At that moment, the sound of music came from outside the door, and Li Duo was a little surprised when she heard it. When she curiously walked to the door to take a look, she saw that it was a man playing the guitar, and there were many children dancing to the music beside him. This peaceful scene made Li Duo feel a mix of emotions. The romantic and melodious atmosphere made Li Duo unable to resist taking her brother's hands, and then happily danced to the music in the middle of the living room. The brothers saw Li Duo so beautiful and charming that they felt like they were about to explode with happiness. The two sisters were discussing some private matters between girls, such as how to keep their beloved husbands. Li Duo then told her everything that her brother Others liked about her, without hiding anything. But Wang Shuangyun stubbornly insisted that those requirements of being intelligent and strong she could easily master. But as for the skill of cursing, 
It seemed that she couldn't do it, but for Ming Dage, Wang Shuangjun would change everything. She made up her mind to learn how to curse. After thanking Li Duo, Wang Shuangyun turned around and left. Li Duo felt that Wang Shuangyun was beyond saving, because how could one learn how to curse? Li Duo closed her eyes and thought for a while. She was very worried that Wang Shuangyun would cause trouble. So Li Duo hurriedly went to find her and returned to the mother planet. In a flash, she arrived on the street, but after calling for a long time, she couldn't find Wang Shuangyun anywhere, and she couldn't find her anywhere. Just when Li Duo was in a hurry, a loud noise attracted her attention. It turned out to be a group of people gathered together, watching the show, and eating melon seeds. So Li Duo was worried that Wang Shuangyun had caused trouble in the crowd. She hurriedly squeezed into the crowd, but in that group, there were only two beautiful girls cursing at each other. Li Duo saw that it wasn't Wang Shuangyun, and she wanted to breathe a sigh of relief. But when Li Duo listened carefully again, the girl who was cursing ah, 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 meant that she was comparing whose figure was better. When the girl opposite heard this, she didn't want to stand on the sidelines and simply stretched out her body and threw the other girl away easily. But neither of them would give in, and they were about to use some vulgar words to ask about each other's parents, grandparents, and children. Li Duo was shocked and stunned when she saw this for the first time and thought that these two girls were not afraid of losing face. Forget it, this is not important. It's better to go and find Wang Shuangyun. 